Hey, welcome everybody. In this video, we're going to build a simple retro gaming platform I've named Next Rivals. Next Rivals is mostly a desktop friendly site where you can dive into classic games. Some of the emulator systems include Arcade, Atari, Super Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo 64, PlayStation, Mega Drive, and much more. While I haven't tested every emulator and game, most of them should work on mobile devices. User facing features include a somewhat working search, dedicated mobile menu, which is hard coded, dedicated sidebar with hard coded and database menu, hard coded slider for advertising, game categories with page pagination, individual game comments, and other smallish things. On the back end, we have a basic email and password login connected to our database, dashboard that shows the total games, total categories, and it has a random placeholder, list of all games with their thumbnails, IDs, and titles. You can add a new game, update an existing one, delete an existing game, and lastly, we have a logout button. Technical specification include, for the application framework, we have Next.js 14 with the app router using JS, database queries, we have Prisma, local database SQLite, file storage AWS S3 bucket, iconography, hero icons, hashing passwords, bigrep.js, commenting system, discuss, authentication, all JS, slider, which is swiper.js, theme styles, we have Tailwind CSS, and for the retro web game emulator, we have emulator.js. The only paid thing in this tutorial is the S3 bucket, but you can always replace it with something of your own. And if you host your website locally, you could even store everything on your drive. This video is all about having fun. So sit back, enjoy and keep it chill. Disclaimer, this video is for educational purposes only. Please note that downloading or using ROMs without proper license might violate copyright laws in your country. Additionally, reselling or distributing ROMs is illegal in most countries. Always ensure that you have legal rights to use the software you download or share. Please respect the rights of game developers and publishers. Before we begin, I do want to say that if you've watched other crew tutorials with Next.js, the best way to learn is by building your own project. Pick an idea, start coding, and when you get stuck, use AI, articles, and videos to help. Break that cycle of endless learning, step away, pet that dog, take a hike, or go cycling. Real growth comes from practice and balance. Hey, welcome everybody. If you're totally new to this, you will need to have Node.js installed. And if you haven't yet, you can go to nodejs.org, download the executable and follow the installation instructions. Once you're done, go to nextjs.org. And then from here, we need to copy the create next app command. So I'm going to copy them and let's go to the folder where we want to install our project. So I'm currently under my C drive next.js and I have a couple of projects inside here and I'm going to open the terminal in here, left shift, right click and open in terminal. This is basically a shortcut that goes to this particular folder and then we can install our project. Let's open this full screen, right click and this is going to do npm create dash next dash app at latest press enter. The project name is going to be D next game platform press enter typescript no eslint no tailwind css yes source directory yes app router yes import alias no and we should be good to go okay we have successfully created our next.js application and if i go to the folder here you'll see that i have the project folder in here the next game platform let's cd to this folder using the powershell here so i'm going to copy the name and do cd and then the name of the folder now that we're inside this folder, we can open the project in Visual Studio Code or whatever editor you use. I'm going to do code column and then this is going to open Visual Studio Code. I've zoomed in a little bit just so you can see a little bit better. And now we need to run this project in development mode. So let's go back to the PowerShell and let's do npm run dev for development. As of now, this is using the latest version, which is Next.js 14.2.8, and it started a local server under the portal 3000. You can copy this or click on it using control and then open it in the browser. Okay, and we have our Next.js application working and it looks like they've changed the branding a little bit. Let's remove all of the branding and styles that we don't need. So if you go back to the project, go to source, go to app, and then from here, we need to click on page and we can start by removing the image at the top and remove everything from the home function inside the return. So everything from here and basically till this ending div, remove, and then let's create a H1 saying hello save him and 
If we go back, you should see that we're just getting hello here on the top left corner. If we go back to Visual Studio Code, let's go to the File Explorer layout.js. And from here, you will see that they've added a couple of fonts, for example, and they have added this globals.css. Let's visit the globals.css. You can go to Explorer and click on global.css. And let's remove all of the unnecessarily styling here. So I'm going to remove everything under the Tailwind imports, grab everything and remove save this and we should be good to go let's close this let's close this and now let's talk about the branding if i go to my figma file i've prepared some branding for this project so essentially we're gonna have two main fonts that come from google the for the headings we're gonna be using delta gothic one and for the body font we're gonna use inter and then i also want to extend tailwind css to have a couple of branding colors for me so i'm gonna have a primary color main color accent color and accent secondary color those two colors will also be used but i'm just gonna use the the default tailwind css colors that come from the actual css library if you wish to you can also add them as well saying this let's start by adding the font if you go back to the project and if we click on the explorer here let's go back to layout.js and open that as you can see they are now using local fonts instead of google fonts but we'll need to change this the thing that you need to know here is that they're importing the font they're setting up the font and the settings here and then they're adding it to the body so it can be used in or layout so let's change this a little bit i'm gonna remove the second font from here and i'm also gonna change this from local this, this needs to be google google press enter and then from here we need to select which fonts we want to use so in curly brackets like so we can select inter and it should pop up like this press enter we also need to select delta gothic one and we should be good to go from here let's use this as an example first of all we need to change this to inter so let's copy inter and change it and now we can name or const whatever we like so in this case i'm going to change mine to inter body font just to be very descriptive here and then we also need to grab this and replace it here where the body is we need to replace it and then it's going to be inter body font dot variable we need to do the same for the other one but let's finish with the settings first of all so for the settings let's remove the source because this is going to be uh grabbed from google font and then deployed still locally but i believe that this is done on build so if we remove the source instead we can put a subset of latin then the variable name let's change to something like body dash font and then the weight i'm going to be removing from this one here and the inter font is ready let's do the same thing for the delta gothic one so i'm going to copy this and paste it inside here and we need to change the name first of all so this is going to be let's say delta heading font and we need to replace the name from here and then this is going to be a subset of latin the variable name is going to be heading font and then i also want to change the weight so weight and then the weight is going to be 400 if you need to add more weights to this you can actually put weights and then let's see if it gives me the and then you can do it like this basically in this case let's go back to weight because i only have one and that should do the job we also need to grab the name from here and add it to the body tag inside here so delta heading font dot variable and that should do the job the next thing that you can do from here is change your metadata if you wish so i'm gonna call this next the next game platform and then i'm gonna put a true gaming platform and we can leave this okay save this the next thing that we need to do is set up those font to work in tailwind css so for the body font i want this to be global anywhere we write on the website i wanted to use this variable name and so we don't have to specify anywhere but when we have headings i want to be able to specify the font to this one let's have a look at how we can do that save this go back to the explorer and click on tailwind.config.js open this and now from here maybe on the team in fact inside the team sorry and then inside here we can put font family and we can list the fonts so this is very similar to what we need to do but instead i'm going to do something different so let's close this and inside here we're going to have display and then for the display font this is going to be the headings we need to put the variable names for the headings so in double quotes i'm going to do var and then the variable name which starts with dash dash heading dash font which i grab from here basically heading font we need to do the same thing 
for the other one so let's do that and this one is going to be called sans because i want to replace the default tailwind css font so we can have it working on the entire website in this case this is going to be variable dash body dash font and hopefully we should see some changes now let's save this and let's go and open the browser here on the right side just so we can see what's going on Unfortunately, I only have one screen, so that's why you can see all of the tabs here, but it's not a big of a deal. Let's go to the layout here, which is layout.js. And if you scroll down to the bottom, let's just do some examples. So for the H1, let's do hello, or let's do heading. And then let's put a class name of text free Excel, which is going to make it a lot bigger. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Essentially, now, if you want to use the heading font, we can do font dash display save it and now as you can see our font is fully working and now let's do the same for the paragraph so for the paragraph we don't need to specify anything instead let's do lorem ipsum is it gonna add some more here we go that should do the job so lorem ipsum and this looks like inter but just to test it out as you can see we don't have to add anything here as default it should be using inter now and just to test it to be sure i'm gonna go back to the tailwind.config.js and remove it from here just to test it out so if i re remove it as you can see the font changed on the hello here and the paragraph which is great so we need to bring that back Control z save it and the font changed which is exactly what i wanted this is a little bit of an add-on but one thing that i noticed after eight hours of coding is that the body font didn't actually work and in order to add it we just need to go to our source app global css and then inside here where we have layer base html after this we can put body and then we can add the font family like so and then we can use the variable that we created so var and then dash dash body dash font save it and now this should fix the font issue the next step would be to extend the colors so let's start with the primary main accent and accent secondary and those two we won't add because we're just gonna i'm gonna show you how we can still keep the default colors from Tailwind CSS so you can use them just in case you need them. So let's open Visual Studio Code full screen. Here where we have extend, we can remove the background and foreground because we don't need it and we can create our own ones. In order to extend the colors in Tailwind CSS and keep the default ones that come from the CSS library, you can do dot 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 and then default colors and as you can see this doesn't light up and this is because we need to import it so at the top here we can do const curly bracket colors and then default colors like so and then this is going to be equals choir and then tailwind css default theme and now we should be able to use the default colors as well we need to while adding some branded colors inside here to start with let's add our primary color so primary and then we can put the value inside here, inside the book code. So I'm going to copy the value from here and save it and put it inside here like so. And this is the first one. Second one is going to be called main. I can copy and paste the value inside here. The next one is going to be called accent. And the last one is going to be called accent secondary. Of course, these are just namings that I've come up with, but feel free to change them to suit your needs. And then the last thing that I want to do inside this file is to create a background gradient that I might end up using. And this can be quite useful to know anyway. So inside extent, but just outside colors where we have the comma here, we can put background image. And then from here, we can create a custom uh, gradient. In fact, it's uh, coming up with one here, but that's not what I, what I want. I'm going to call mine accent gradient and the gradient, I'm going to do it as linear gradient. Starting with zero degrees, RGBA is going to be 254, 137, 31, and then one. And then we have 0%, comma, and then RGBA, 254, 182, 35, and then one, and then this is going to be 100%. Close this, put comma, and we should be good to go. And we might end up using this gradient somewhere on the layout. So we'll save this. And if you go back to the website, as you can see, everything is still working fine. Make sure that you check your console login here, just in case you don't get an error too, uh, too far further in the project. It might make it difficult for you to figure out what's wrong. In order to test the colors, we can go back to the app.js here. 
Let's put the browser to the left side and I'm just going to show you how it works. For example, if you wish to change the color on the heading here, we can put text and then maybe the color can be primary. Save it and that should change the color. Obviously it didn't change much because it was already black. If we try the main one, this is also a very dark color, so it's not going to make a huge difference. But if you try the accent, maybe that should change. So accent, save it. And as you can see, the font is changing and we can also use the default colors from Tailwind CSS. So class name and then text. And then maybe we just choose one of the colors inside here, text orange, let's say 400. And as you can see, this also works, which means that we can use the colors from Tailwind CSS. And we also have all branding colors as well, which is great. Okay. Let's remove the P tag and the H1 here. These were just for demo purposes only. Save this and close everything that we don't need. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to set up our database using the Prisma ORM, which essentially is an open source database toolkit that simplifies database access in Node.js. Uh, you can easily integrate databases like Postgres, SQL, MySQL, SQLite, which we're going to use in this tutorial. And it has a really intuitive API, which reduces the need of writing raw SQL. To get started, you can go to prisma.io and click get started. I highly recommend you going through the quick start guide and they have a lot of examples for different frameworks, how you can use it. And in fact, I believe that I use both quite a bit in this tutorial. Uh, you will see some of the code will be exactly the same as on the guide here. This is where I've taken it from. So if you click on quick start from here, you should be able to see the full setup of the SQLite locally, data modeling, migration, querying, and so on. If we scroll down a little bit, there are a couple of things that we need to set up before we start. So we need to set up the Prisma command line interface, which is only for development purposes. It's going to allow us to do a lot of commands like uh, seeding the database, migrating the database, and so on. Let's copy this and let's go back to the terminal. Stop this, control and C, yes, and then right click to paste the command npm install prisma dash dash save dash dev. We also need to install the Prisma client, which is going to allow us to interact with the database and perform create, read, update, and delete operations. So this is actually going to be installed on our project, and we need to do npm install at Prisma, and we need to install the client. Press enter. And now if you go back to the project super quickly, open your package.json file. And from here, you will see that we have the Prisma client inside here. As of now, we're using 5.19.1 and we have the development one, which is here. If you have any problems in the future, if the version changes, then you could install this one and then continue with the project as well, if you wish to. Now, there are a couple of things that we need to set up in the package.json file for success. Now we need to add Prisma generate on build. and the reason that we need to add this is because this will generate the Prisma client based on the current Prisma schema. We're going to create the schema in a second, but this needs to happen on build. So we need to do Prisma generate and and next build. We also need to point out where the Prisma seed is. So for this, I'm going to do Prisma and then inside here we put it's not exactly like this. So I'm going to do it manually. So seed, this is going to be node and then prisma seed.js in this example save it and we should be good to go we don't have to do anything else in the package.json file for now let's close it and let's continue with the rest of the setup so we installed the cli and the client and the last thing that we need to do is to set up the local sq light so we can use the database locally while we're developing the project if you copy this command here and go to the powershell let's clear this up so you can see a little bit better right click mpx prisma init dash dash data source dash provider sq light press enter and this should lead us to the next step so the next step set up database url in the env file if we go back and open the explorer you will see that this might be done for you so this command already created the .env file and it set up the database URL for me, which says it in here. It also set up the Prisma folder here, which has schema.prisma. Now, the last thing that we need to do is to create the file, which is going to allow us to connect to a database. In source, we need to create a new folder called lib. And inside this folder, we're going to create a new file called prisma.ts. Now, there are examples in the official documentation, but I'm going to set up this super quickly. So let's start with importing the Prisma client from Prisma client. And then we need to do const global 
for Prisma global this as unknown and then inside here we need to set up as Prisma, Prisma client. Again, this comes from the documentation, I didn't make it up. And then we need to export const equals Prisma. equals global for Prisma dot Prisma or new Prisma client like so. And then the last thing that we need to do is if, oh, and I need to remove the equals here. And then the last thing that we need to do is if process dot TMV equals production, then global Prisma dot Prisma equals Prisma. Again, I didn't make this up. It was from the official documentation. Save this. And now we should be able to connect to a database whenever we need to. The next thing that we need to do is to create our database model. In order to do this, we can go to Prisma and then schema.prisma open this file and you should have this as default coming from prisma and we don't need to touch this but we need to create our model so essentially we're gonna have two models one for game and one for categories every game is gonna have a unique id title slug description image and so on and every category is gonna have a title slug core image and so on these also these tables are also gonna have a many to many relationship so let's start with model game for this but essentially every single record is going to have a unique ID and this is going to be an integer like so. And then because this is going to have a unique ID, we need to set at ID and then we need to set the default to be auto increment. So every time we add a record, it goes one, two, three, four, five, and so on. If you delete a record, it really doesn't matter. It's not a big deal if the numbers are not uh, aligned. The next bit that we need to is title. This is going to be a string. We need, we need a slug, which is going to be a friendly URL, string, we need a description, string, we need an image, which is going to be a string, we also need game underscore URL, which is what I'm going to use. We have to store the game somewhere, whether it's in Cloudflare or Amazon S3 bucket, we need to store the game somewhere decoupled from our project. You could technically put all of your games in Next.js, but that's going to be a problem because your project could become massive. I mean, gigabytes of data, and it's not going to be easy to deploy. That's why game URL, uh, this is going to be a string. Then we're going to have published. And this is going to be, uh, for example, if you're working on adding a game in your database, but you haven't finalized, for example, the description or the title and so on, you should be able to put uh, whether the game, you might want to hide the game just so it's only visible for the admin or inside the database. And we're going to set this to a Boolean. So it's either true or false. And then we're going to do created at, which is self-explanatory. This is going to be daytime when we create the record. And then we're going to have a default. And this is going to be now like that. The last thing that we're going to do is to link this to the categories, which we don't have yet, but this is going to be categories like so with S and then this is going to be category, which we're going to create now. So let's copy this and let's create the next model, which is going to be model category. And inside here, this is going to be exactly the same as before ID int at ID and then at the foot auto increment. And then this is going to have title string we're gonna have slug of string we're gonna have core of string and for this one core is basically gonna be the game engine for example super nintendo or uh, playstation and so on so this is what core is and then we're gonna have image which is going to be a string but we're also going to get a default value for this one and the default value is going to be called default image dot png like so and then we need to link it to the game so we're gonna do games and then games like so all right so, oops we need to remove that and save this and right click and format document and prettier is what i'm using should make it look like this it looks a lot better all right now we can work on the database seed process which is basically populating a database with initial data often used for testing like we will have now development or demo purposes. In order to create a seed, we need to go to Prisma, create a new file and we can call it seed.js like so. This is kind of like the last step, so bear with me. And we can start by including our database so we can make a connection to it and write or read data. So in this case, we can do const and in curly brackets, we can do Prisma client. 
and then this is going to be equals require prisma slash client and then we can do cons prisma equals new prisma client and i believe that uh codium is finishing some of the lines here which is amazing now just to show you super quickly if you go to the official documentation here i was looking at it earlier but essentially so seeding the data essentially the importing the client for some reason importing didn't work for me so i had to use require and then they're creating this function here which i can actually copy to save a little bit of time and paste inside here essentially when we run the seeding command is going to go through this function and then it's going to insert the data that we're going to create now for this example i'm going to show you how you can create some data in fact if you go back to the example here and we, if you scroll down here you'll see create a new user record it's simple as this if i copy this and paste it inside here you will see that if you want to seed the database if you want to insert some data you can basically just do this uh, if you had a table use in this case which we don't you can create a new record of alice which has a new record which has a value of name which is alice and email which is alice at prisma.io in my case i'm going to be adding a lot more data so i'm going to create an array of data which we can loop through and insert it into the database let me show you an example how it works and then uh, you can copy and paste the file provided in the description below to kind of like speed up the process because I don't want you to type all of this. So inside here, we're going to do const uh, categories. And this is going to be equals and then we create our object in here and then we start with the first item. So the first item is going to be exactly the same as our schema. So it's going to have ID, title, slug core image and so on so let's start with the id which is going to be set to one then we're going to have a title which is going to be arcade then we're going to have we're going to have a slug which is going to be arcade we're going to have an image which is going to be arcade pick and then we're going to have core which in this case is going to be arcade like so and we should be good to go so this is one we have one record here and if you want to add more which we will do i'm going to copy this put comma and then put id of two those ids will need to be unique otherwise it will break if you remember here we set them as auto increment and they need to be unique and now i'll just change the data for example atari 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 and then this is going to be a little bit different atari 2600 and i'm going to talk about this later on in the tutorial so this is how simple it is to create the categories so for the games it's going to be exactly the same and just to show you how this is going to work essentially we need to loop through the category and upsert the record upsert because we need to make sure that if, if there are existing records we can update them or we can create a new one so that's pretty much it so in order to do the loop we can do four and then inside here we can do const category of categories which comes from here so we're grabbing the categories and now we can loop through them so to do this we can do await prisma and this is going to be our first ever query so we are awaiting for prisma to go and grab the category and then we're gonna do upset as you can see we have update update many and upset here so we're gonna do um where if we have the id of category id so if we have an id of one or an id of two we wanna update this so we can do comma and then we're gonna do update and then inside the update we're gonna do update the title update the slug image core i think that's everything and then for the create is gonna be exactly the same so create and then we're gonna do hopefully it will do it for me as well no title yep awesome so that's gonna be it so that's gonna loop and it's gonna insert the data from here if we have more records so i'm gonna pause the video go and grab the data for the games as well because it's gonna be exactly the same and then i'm gonna paste it all right so here is the file that i've prepared for you and obviously you'll have this but basically I zoom in super quickly you have the ids in here so we have different records for the games it's exactly the same so we have game id title select image description game era published and categories and basically we're link linking to each category so essentially category one 
is going to be arcade and category two and so on. Are they all one? Oh no, they're different. Okay, I have different ones, but as you can see, instead of typing all this manually, I'm going to copy and paste it. And for the game, it's exactly the same. When we observe it, basically we are doing it through here and we actually uh, setting up the category ID as well, which is the only different part. So I'm going to copy this. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, copy and then let's paste it. So we need to basically remove everything from here and we paste it in the main. Awesome. We have both of them here and we should be good to go. Save this. And now we can try to seed the database. Let's go back to the command line. And first of all, we need to do the Prisma migrate. So we have the database tables created in our database. So we can do mpx Prisma migrate dev dash dash name. Uh, you can put the name basically, but I'm going to put it as initial commit and press enter. So this should create this first migration for us. So this creates the migration. And if you go to which one is it? If you go to the project here and if you open it, you should see this migration folder, which does the database migration. As you can see, created the table of game category and so on. And the, uh, what's it called? The, the keys, the create the indexes. So one thing that I can show you before we see the data is the Prisma Studio. Prisma Studio comes with Prisma, so you don't have to do anything else. It's already installed for you when we added Prisma. And in order to run it, we can basically do MPX Studio Prisma. And let's have a look. So, MPX Prisma Studio and press Enter. Now, this is going to open Prisma Studio, as you can see. And it actually seeded the database created at. And I actually seeded the database for me as well, which is great. But if you need to seed the database on your own, basically what you can do is close this and then you can do MPX Prisma DB and then seed. Now if you press enter, the Prisma command has been executed. If I was to change a record, let's say we change a K1 here and let's reseed it and let's see that again, MPX Prisma DB seed. Okay, everything is looking good. And if I go to the Prisma here and refresh, oh, we need to click on categories. Uh, uh, I closed it. So I need to start Prisma Studio, excuse me. And I need to view my model here, categories. And as you can see, I have the arcade one. Let me, uns let me unsee that one more time. Save, stop this, seed. And let's restart it. So studio. And now you should be able to see that the data was updated here and we have our studio working. Studio is basically, as you can see, just um, a database management tool. It basically, it will allow you to access your relations. Uh, you can filter for your data. It's pretty cool. It's obviously free as well. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a really good tool. And you can turn the dark mode from here, light mode, if you wish to or dark mode and you can use the filters from here for example if i click on filter we can do add new filter and let's say i want to find where id is equals to two for example and then here we go we have atari which is great and likewise you can use the field showing if you don't want to show 100 uh, you can maybe skip records you can see which fields you want for example you can remove some of them and add some of them which is great from here hopefully everything is going to be a lot more enjoyable or database is working we are able to create records see the data and so on okay in this stage of the development we should be able to query some data and display it on the page if we wish to now we are now it's too early to do this, but I'm going to show you just because we're working on the database. I'm going to show you how you can do a very simple query and display some data on the page just so you know how everything ties together. And one problem that we have now is that if you want to run the Prisma Studio and if you want to run your project, you're going to have to have you're going to need two tabs. So, for example, I'm going to do npm run dev to run my website and then I'm going to need another tab to run the Prisma Studio. 
So I'm going to click on a new tab here and then I'm going to do CD and then go to my website here, the folder, and then we can do MPX Prisma Studio. And now we should have both of them running in parallel. There we go. Or database is here. You don't need to run this. Your database is still going to work. But of course, it's nice to have access to your database just to see what's going on. If I close and if I close the tabs that I don't need, let's have a look super quickly at how. So we've already created some records by doing the seeding and then doing the migration. The migration actually does everything. It migrates absolutely all the data from the seed as well. And now let's have a look at how we can retrieve some data. So to retrieve user records, all you need to do is import the Prisma client, create a new Prisma client here, and then you just need to create a function, which basically you can have as a const users, for example, here, and then await Prisma users, and then the command, the, and then the query operation that you want to do. In this case, they use find many, and then you just console log the user. Let's do a very simple example with all records, and then we're going to delete this page and carry on with the tutorial. So for example, if we go to source app, and if we want to create a new page, you can create a new folder. Let's call the page test for now. And then inside this, and inside this test folder, we can create a new file called page.jsx. And then from here, we can just create a standard page. So it will be export default asynchronous function, function page, and then we return div test okay that's fine that's fine and that's fine okay so this should work now this page if i go if i save it first of all and if i go to the browser make sure that your project is running should be running in the first tab here yep everything is looking good so my pc is just a little bit slow that's all so we have hello and if i go to such test we should get test page as you can see and now let me show you how we can grab some of the data from the database, oops, like the games here. So if we go back to the test page here, and first of all, as I said before, we need to import the Prisma client. So import, and then in curly brackets, Prisma client, and then from Prisma client. And then we need to do const Prisma equals new Prisma client like so. And now we should be able to get some data. Now let's create the function that is gonna grab the data for us. So const get all games for example and then this is going to be an asynchronous function that's fine and then let's have a look const games equals await prisma game and then inside here we can do the query that we want for example if i put game which is the table name and then if we press dot from here as you can see you can do all sorts of actions for example you can count create create many create many and return delete find first record find um uh, first or throw, find many, find unique, and so on. We're actually going to be using a couple of these in the tutorial, but for now, let's do find many, like so. We can either display them on the page or we can console log them. For example, if you want to display them on the page super quickly, let's do const game await, and then we invoke this function here, get all games, and now we can use games to display them on our page. For example, I'm going to JSON prettify this, but if I put them in a paragraph, oh, it already knows what I was going to do. So json.stringify, we grab the const from here, which is called games. And then this is just going to display the games in a kind of like a stringify json -y format for us. If I save this, and if I go back to the page, it should refresh automatically. I expected it to be a little bit more prettier than this, but as you can see, we're getting the data regardless. It's a little bit hard to read, but you can see that the data is there. Maybe it needs to be wrapped in a pre-tag. Let's have a look super quickly and then we'll move on. So save this. Oh, here we go. So we are getting the records from the database now. Uh, we are getting the ID, then the title of the game, the slug, the description, the image, the game URL published, and when this was created, which is great. And these are all the records here. Of course, you can limit them and do all sorts of things, which we'll probably do later on. So that's pretty much how you retrieve data. Okay, I'm getting an error, and this is because of the... We can't have P and then pre inside. That's fine. Uh, I can remove it. But one thing that I wanted to mention is that make sure that you remove this page 
from here just delete the whole folder because this was only for testing purposes and if you have thousands of records obviously you don't want to have them uh, displayed in here like that and now we're going to move on with the layout I've already opened Figma just to have a look at what I need to do. Essentially, I'm going to create one empty global layout for a website, and then we're going to split the layouts in two. We're going to have main layout, which is going to be for all the front end pages. For example, the landing page, which is the home page, the new page, if we're going to do that popular page, and then the categories. These are going to be in a main layout. And then for the admin pages, we're going to do a separate layout just so we have the freedom to start the website however we want. So ignoring the layout here just yet, let's set up the global layout. If you go back to the website, first of all, let's get rid of that. And if you go back to the website, as you can see, it's all empty now. And we need to close the test page and let's go back to the layout.js. From here, first of all, I'm going to set up the background body. I'm going to change the background of our layout. So here I'm just going to add another class name of background and then main. Main comes from the colors that we've added earlier in this tutorial. If I save this and if I go back to Tailwind CSS config, this is where main come fr comes from. These are extended colors that we've added just so if anybody is tuning in now. And in this case, if I save this and if you go back to the website, you will see that or background has changed to the dark color, but now the text is invisible. So there are a couple of ways of changing this and I'm going to go back to the global.css here and change it globally from here. Essentially, we can do add layer and then we can choose the base layer and then inside here we can choose HTML and then we can apply a color of text dash slate dash 50 so it's not fully white text but it's very close uh this is going to be a little bit easier to read on the eyes and then we need to close this so now if i close this as well and save it if i go back to the website we should get the dark background here and everything we write in our website should have the white text and actually we can test it with the test page here which is going to render some of the records from our database and as you can see this works perfectly fine uh, let's go back and this is actually going to be done and we're actually done with the layout in here. I want to keep this as clean as possible. This is going to be the main root layout for the entire platform. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to split my main website, all of the pages that visitors are going to see and the admin ones. And in order to do this, we can group them. So for example, in app here, I can create a new folder and I can say main. These are going to be the main pages. And then later on, we're going to create, for example, admin admin is going to be created later in this video or in the next video inside the main is where we're going to be adding our pages for example we can also add the test page inside here and and everything should be working as expected nothing should change if we go to test as you can see everything is still working this is just a way of grouping pages now in this case we should be able to also move the home page so this is a home page here in fact let's say home page like so and save it and now we should be able to move it inside this main folder just so we are more organized so main i believe that these fonts were added from the next.js when we installed next.js and i actually don't need them i just didn't notice that they're here so i'm going to delete them everything should be working well now if we go back to the home page we is still working and that's cool now we can start building the front end layout so the main layout of our website which is going to be essentially this we're going to split this into i believe three different parts so we're going to have the header we're going to have a sidebar and we're going to have this main area which is going to be scrollable now on the design i don't think it's scrollable here maybe it is uh if i put it in presentation mode but um, on here basically all i want is this to scroll only and then we'll be able to see all of the categories and so on so let's start by building the layout and then we're going to build everything section by section so if i minimize this let's go to the main here and we can create a brand new layout for this specific uh, group so i'm going to create a new layout and this is going to be called layout dot js open this full screen let's close everything else and focus on this so export default function and then this is going to be main layout like so and we need to pass the children that's how layouts work return and then we need to insert basically the children is going to be the content inside here and we need to 
uh, close this. All right, this should be a very basic layout now. And if I go back, everything should be working as expected. Absolutely fine. If I remove the children, as you can see, the content is now gone. So this is what's adding the content. Let's split everything into sections, first of all, and then I'm going to make them into individual components. I think this is going to be easier. So instead of an empty React fragment here, I'm actually going to create a div and this div is going to have the class name of flex and then flex column let's choose this one i want to set the screen height to be screen so this is going to be if you saw this is going to be 100 vh vertical height of the screen and we also need to close this with a div just so it doesn't scream at us and now we can split everything into different sections for example um let's do it with a div for now or let's do it with a header for now just so you understand what we're doing. For example, we're going to have a header here and then I'm going to split everything into... So the header is going to be on top and then we're going to have the sidebar and the main content. In order to do this, I'm going to wrap everything into a div with the class name of flex and flex one and then i'm gonna put the overflow hidden so we have that scroll on the side of the screen and now inside here i'm gonna add the sidebar we're gonna do a side close the aside here and then i'm gonna wrap the actual content so i'm gonna do div class name of flex one overflow is gonna be auto background is gonna be primary and then I'm going to put some padding everywhere. So this is going to be on the main area. And then we're going to have on large screens. The padding is going to be a little bit larger. So 8, this is equals to 32 pixels. Round it. And then round it. TL is going to be top left of XL. That's going to give us a round corner on the top left corner. And that's pretty much it in here. Let's close this. And let's wrap the children in a main. So every... So all the content from the pages is going to be inserted into this main section and I'm going to wrap it into a semantic main tag and then put the children inside here. If we save this and go back to the layout super quickly, you should see that we are getting the header here at the top. We're getting a sidebar here and we're getting the home page here. And then we probably, I don't know if you can see, but we're getting the rounded corners in here, which is pretty cool. So all layout should start looking just like the design in here. Now, if you wish to insert some metadata on the pages, I'm going to show you a quick example. But if you go to the official documentation of Next.js, they have a full example of everything that you can add, uh, such as your social images, title, description, and so on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a very basic one. Const metadata and inside here is where we add the metadata so the title for example the next game platform and description this is the very basic you can do okay now we can start focusing on individual sections of our website for example the header the sidebar and the main section if we go to the design here let's start with the header for example on desktop we're gonna have the logo search bar in the middle and i'm gonna have a placeholder for you to add whatever you like on mobile which i didn't design we're gonna have the logo the search bar probably stacking and then we're gonna have a hamburger menu when you press we're gonna have a specific mobile menu popping up which the users can and it's gonna be a little bit different than this one is gonna be a simplified one i had to pause the video and export all of the graphics from here for example the logo the categories some games just so we have a few placeholders and i basically created a folder full of them if we have a look everything is nicely organized for example inside categories if i view this extra large you see that they all they all have the same design language i have the arcade atari me me n64 i have a temporary placeholder playstation sega and super mario the same for the games i have exported a few screenshots of the games and i have a placeholder as well just in case we ever need it it goes the same for the icons we only have two icons in here they export it as svgs and for the slides it looks like i only have one slide which is with these retro machines and i believe that this image came from unsplash.com i'll have to link it somewhere in the repo and then i have the logo and i have two games i probably won't be able to include the games in the github repository because that might not be legal so you're gonna have to go and find some games for the platforms that you want saying this let's grab all of this and i'm gonna include this in the github repository close this 
and let's go back to the website repository here uh folder and then where we have the prisma and the source folder we need to create another folder called public so let's create a new folder you can also do this with visual studio code let's call it public and inside the public folder is where we can add all of our files but the games they're going to be living in the cloud somewhere later on these are only for testing purposes one thing that i forgot to include is the five icons so maybe i can put it in public and save it under icons here so it's going to be five icon if you want to try but essentially we need to copy this and we need to paste it inside our source folder and then app and then the five icon will live here so replace the default one and then after a couple of refreshes, maybe you need to stop your server. It should pop up at some point. But uh, if I open it super quickly, you'll see that I've created this nice icon that is cut from my logo. Now that we have the assets, let's close this and let's focus on building the header. So if we go back to the code here, we can make every single section in here as a component. For example, let's grab the header from here and then let's create a new component. The components can live just outside the app folder. And this is really up to you how you want to structure your website. I'm going to keep it super simple here. So let's do another folder called components. And then inside this folder, we can add a new file called header dot jsx. And then we need to create a very simple component. So this is going to be sports default async function. I don't actually know whether we need as an async function just yet. Turn and then close it. So this is going to be a very basic header and we can output it inside here. And let's say header from from component and now we can insert the header inside here just like we had it before but from the component we can do import header from and then we can use the at sign slash component slash header and now we should be able to use or header using this name here so if we grab header we can open and close it like so and now this should do exactly the same thing as before but we stay a little bit more organized if I go here, you should see that we're getting header from component. And now we can do exactly the same thing for the rest. For example, the sidebar here. Let's create a new component. So I'm going to call this one sidebar. Let's do it with a capital letter. And then this is going to be called sidebar. With a capital letter again, one more time. Let's copy it and let's remove this and paste the sidebar here. And let's do a footer as well. So I'm going to copy this with Alt Shift down. Let's call it footer. And then footer. Let's grab the footer and maybe the footer can live on the main here. So footer like so. And now we need to create all of them. And if I go back to components, where are you? here they are. Maybe we can copy the header here copy everything and create a new component. The first one is going to be the sidebar.jsx and this is going to be very similar. So we're going to have export default function, async and this is going to be sidebar like so. And instead of header, we can change this to a side. And then this is going to be sidebar like so. We don't need to put sidebar from component, a side and save it. That's all good. Let's copy this one more time and let's do the footer. So one more footer.jsx. And now we paste this in here. We change the name to footer. And instead of side, we can do footer, footer, and then footer. I don't actually know what we're going to do. For the footer, we can probably finish this and not have to do anything after. So I'm just going to do a class name of text-center, text we're going to set to accent and then I'm going to do padding top of 12 and we don't have to mess around with this too much. So for the footer, I'm just going to do copyright sign. You know what? This is exactly what I want, but I don't actually want the paragraph. So I'm going to remove it. What we can do here is put this together and essentially we're going to have the copyright sign. We're going to get the current year so we don't have to do update that manually and we just get the uh, the website title save this and if we go to the website you should get that you should see the footer nicely start and i'm zoomed in quite a bit just to let you know anyways the footer is actually done now 
or header and our layout is fully working. Let's close this and open the header inside the component here. And I just noticed that we definitely don't need the asynchronous functioning here. So let's remove the async from all components here super quickly. And let's remove it from the footer. We don't need that. And let's close them and let's focus on the header. Okay, so unfortunately, the next few hours that I was recording, the sound didn't work. So I had to go back and I'm going to have to re-record everything. Saying this, the only change that I've made, I removed the Codium extension because it was kind of getting in the way. Anyways, from here, we probably don't need the metadata in this one, but uh, from here, we can concentrate on the header. And before we do that, let's just hide the sidebar. So I'm going to go to the sidebar here, control and click on it. And then I'm just going to hide it from here. So class hidden. Save it and probably need to restart. Yep. So that should be all good. Let's close this and now let's open the header, control and click on it. And let's focus on this. If we close everything else, let's remove the content from the header. And now we can start working on it. If we super quickly look at the Figma file, we're going to have three main elements, the logo, the search bar, which is going to be a form. And then for mobile, we're going to have a little hamburger menu and desktop is probably just going to be a placeholder for now. I'm not going to do anything on desktop. Saying this, I've already added the logo as SVG in the public folder and you should have access to this already. I'm going to minimize this and let's get started. Now for the header, let's give it a class name of padding X for so we get a little bit of space to the left and the right so our logo doesn't touch the edges and then i'm going to convert this into a flex box and then and give it a height of 14 which is roughly 56 pixels if i save this you will see that our header is now popping up here and i don't know if i need this but let's put shrink to zero which is gonna help with the logo potentially to shrink actually i'm not sure about this now because I changed it a little bit. Anyways, for the logo, this is going to be a normal link. And the reason that I'm not using the link from Next.js is because I want all of my pages on this website to be server-side rendered. And I don't want the website to work as a single page application because the gaming library that we're going to add later on, we might experience some problems with the library that we're going to add later on. And that's why I'm going to be using the normal link instead. There are some benefits of using the link from Next.js because you can preload pages and you can make your website feel a little bit faster saying this let's continue for the logo here we're gonna convert this into flex and items center let's give it a gap of two and we need to close this link so it doesn't break the page and now we can insert our logo and we have two methods here we can either use a normal image because we're using SVG. I don't think that it matters too much, but uh, for the people that are going to use a JPEG or a PNG, you can use the image, which has a couple of benefits, like you can optimize images for you on build. It has quite a few options. So let's do that. If you use the image though, we do need to import it. So let's do that. You can import image from Next.js like so. And now we can continue working on it. So source, just like normal, we can put the source in double quote and then slash and then that will be logo.svg for me. Let's give it an old tag of the next game game station and then for the width and the height I'm going to be very specific this comes from the SVG and I don't want any layout shift so I'm going to do 116.56 and then height is going to be 33.8 and then we need to close this this is a self-closing tag and we should be good to go here is a logo i am zoomed in a little bit that's why it looks so big but uh when i zoom out this is going to be the original size saying this there is a little bit of a problem with this if you inspect it the image from next.js automatically at loading a lazy to this image and we can actually override this by doing loading and then this is going to be eager like so and now if i was to inspect it one more time you should see that the loading is eager and the reason that you might want to do this is because when we load the page we want to get a good light cell score and basically you don't want to load the page and then the logo to start loading after because you might get some layout shift and so on so that's why you might want to do this on the visible element and we should be good to go the next element would be the search the search can be its own component so let's create that i'm going to copy this let's go to the app and then 
Let's go to source, app, and all components folder here where we have the footer and the header. I'm going to create a new file called, called search.jsx. And then we need to paste the code from here and we need to modify a little bit. So let's remove the header and let's rename this to search. And now we just need to wrap everything inside a form. And this is going to be our search. Save this and let's import it into our header. So in order to import it, you can do import search and then this is going to be at slash component slash search and now we can insert the search inside here as its own component like so which is a self-closing tag and as you can see we're getting search here we can close the header for now and focus on the search bar here as you can see it's working so for the search there are a couple of things that we're gonna have to do i will have a an icon that we need to install and the icons for this project that I'm going to be using are called Hero Icons. And go to Hero Icons. And from here, you will see that they have a couple of different options like outline icons, solid icons, mini icons, and micro icons. If you go to the documentation here, they will give you a basic usage example. And also they'll show you how to install it and how to use it in React. So we need to do this. Let's copy it and let's go to our terminal here. Let's stop everything. We The database is still running somewhere. Here it is. But let's stop this and do clear. And then let's right click and do npm install at hero icons slash react. This is going to take a couple of seconds and we should be good to go. And let's run our website under development mode and continue. Now let's go back to the browser here and so everything that we've had on our website so far has been server-side rendered. So what I'm going to do is convert the search to a client component by putting in single quotes, use client and save this. As you can see, nothing else changes. The search will still work in here. And in order to set up this for success, let's import some of the React stuff and our icon. So let's start with import react and i'm going to explain all of this here and the reason i'm importing this as well is because i want to be using the use state which is going to help us to kind of like save whatever is in the search bar and use it to query the database so that's why we're using use state i'm going to import use router use router and this is going to be from next router. This is what's going to allow us to redirect to another page. And you'll see how it works in a second. And the last thing that I'm going to do here is to add an icon. So import and the icon names. You can go to hero icons and they all have different names. And you can copy them from there basically. But mine is called magnifying glass icon. I hope I got this right from. And then this is going to be at hero icons react slash 24 and then slash outlined like that and as you can see they have solid as well i'm going to use the outline one and now we should be good to go now let's focus on the form super quickly from here when we press enter on our form we need to be able to submit it and go to another page to do this we can create a function so and this is going to be triggered on submit like that and then we can create the function we can call the function whatever you like i'm going to call mine handle search like so and then i need to create this function inside here so this is going to be const handle search and this is going to be an arrow function but we need to grab the event from the form like so and then it's going to be an arrow function and then we handle the logic here later on so let's do that let's give it a little bit of styling basically i want to insert this magnifying glass on top of everything else so i'm going to give this a class name of relative and then the flex one and then maximum width is going to be md which is 448 pixels and to center line this we can do mx auto which is margin left and right as auto that should be cool and now we can add our magnifying glass in here so we can do magnifying glass icon with the class name of position absolute and let's position the left to be 2.5 the top is going to be 2 the height is going to be 4 the width is going to be 4 and then the text is going to be white if it isn't already and this is a self-closing one like so save it and it should be here as you can see if you zoom in you will see the icon now we need to add our input it's going to have the type of search 
And now we can start with the values. I'm going to put them on another line just so it's easier to read, but we need to start with the value of this input. So the value of this input is going to be recorded with use state. And in order to do this, we need to create a use state in here. So we can call a search term, so const search term, and then set search term. And then the use state, the food value is going to be equals empty here and that's it so this is going to be the value of the input and we need to update it somehow which i'm going to show you in a second and then in order to be able to update this value we can use the set search term but we'll need to create another function so what we can do this time instead of on submit we can do another one which is on change and then this is going to be equals another function which we can call handle change like so copy this and let's create another function i'm going to copy this by control shift and up and then i'm going to replace this with the name from here and now we can do the logic in here and then the logic in here is very simple we want to grab the value from the input and then basically update the search term using this it's very easy to do because we can use the event and grab the value so it will be set search term and then we grab the event from the input and then the target value is what we need and now we need to finish the input here and give it a placeholder of equals search for game dot 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 example super mario something like that and this needs to be closed as well here we go all search is working but it looks a little bit ugly so let's improve the design for it let's add a class name and i'm gonna wait full rounded of large background of main let's reset the border let's add a little bit of border and reset the default one and then the border color is going to be the accent color from our branding and then i'm going to give it a padding left of eight and padding right of four and height of eight as well let me just so you can see this and as you can see this looks a lot better than before just so you know that if your input isn't centered you need to go to your header and just add item center here i think i um yeah i think i added it earlier but i had to re-record this so flex and item center on the header and that would make everything center line if i remove it you'll see yours is probably like this right now but that's pretty much it so save this and our form is pretty much good to go so now every time we type in the input here we are basically updating the set search term here and we can use it now in order to handle the search logic so the idea here is that when i press when i search for something and i press enter we can use the use router to go to a search page which is going to show us the result and we're going to pass the data with a url parameter so let me show you how we can do this so when we press enter on the form we need to go here and do something about it first of all i'm going to grab the event from here i'm going to say event.prevent default basically this prevents the page from refreshing but i don't know it's going to be much use in this case but let's add it anyway so now we need to use the router and in order to do this we can add it inside here let's say const router equals use router like so and now we have the router available to use i can grab it from here and i can say router.push and this is going to push us to another page which in single slanted quotes so we can add template literals we're going to push this into a search page which we haven't created yet and we're going to add a euro parameter of q for query or you can put it as s for search whatever you like q for query for short and then here is where we're going to add the value uh, that we can grab from the form by using the search term so we grab this and basically if i save this router was not mount next router was not mounted this is wrong because next router needs to be next navigation now save this okay that works so now if i type something here like let's go let's open full screen just so you can see the euro here but if i type rat and press enter this should lead us to a page of search and as you can see it's grabbing the value from the form which is 
query q equals rat if i go back one more time and do one two three press enter you will see that this changes now we can create this search page and then use this value in order to query the data from the database let's do that next so i'm gonna go back remove this and make sure that you save all this and we need to create our search page if we go back to the explorer here and then on the main this way i'm going to create my search page and then inside here we need to create page.jsx like so and we should be good to go now i'm going to build the full search page here with the database query but later on we can move it because it's just easier than switching from file to file but later on after we finish the page i'm going to show you how we can move the query to a separate file so we can decouple the logic let's start by let's start by creating the page first of all export default async and then this is going to be a function and we need to give it a name of page page we're going to grab the request later on because this is technically a get page we're going to grab the request and get the value from the search bar here and we just need to do the standard return we just need to create a div and do something like h1 search results now if we search press enter we should be able to get search results here and i'm going to zoom in just so you can see this is the very basic search page and now let's add the logic and then we'll do some of the styling later on at the top in order to make database operations we need to import prisma so import prisma client from prisma client like so and now we need to do const prisma and then equals new and then prisma client like so and now we can do database queries as we're going to use the parameter from the url if we go to the database super quickly and have a look essentially when i search for something i want to be able to use the game table and i want to be able to search by the title you can make this a little bit better if you wish to you can also add the description and the slug whatever you like but i'm going to use the title in this case let's close this and let me show you how we can do that let's create a an asynchronous function async function and then this function is going to be called something like get data we'll change it later on so get data and then we pass the parameter here which is going to be the query from the url so let's do that i'm going to put it as q and then from here we can do const game games equals await and then we grab prisma game this is a table name and then we can do different queries for example we can aggregate count create create many create many and delete and return delete delete many find first records find many and so on in this case we're gonna do find many records and then inside here we're gonna find many records where the title matches or query so we're gonna do where we select the title from our database and then inside here we do contains the query which we're going to pass in a second the last thing that we can do here is to kind of like tell this query how many records we want to bring i'm not going to do a pagination on this one i'll probably do a pagination on the games um and then we can do take of maybe 100 records for this in this case so everything is looking good here but we need to finally we need to return the game so return games so now that we have this function that it's going to grab the data for us, we need to trigger it and we need to pass the data, the URL parameter from here. In this case, Mario, Q is equals Mario. So what I'm going to do is inside here, inside the page, we can use the request const search query equals request dot search params dot Q. This is how you grab the params from the URL. And now what we can do is const games equals await. And then we trigger or get data function here. And then we pass the search query parameter like so. And we should be good to go. Now our query should work, but if you wanted to display this super quickly, we can maybe grab the games and just do, just to output some of the games, it's going to be a little bit ugly, but we can do pre. And then inside the pre tag, we can do JSON dot shrinkify and then we can add or games and then this is going to be no four and then we need to close this so hopefully now because i search for mario we're getting super mario i can't remember what other games but we have asterisk let's do asterisk and as you can see we're getting asterisk and if i search for maybe the letter a 
hopefully we're getting a lot more records as you can see now that to search is working of course we can make this look a lot better than this so maybe i can comment this for you just so you have as an example but inside here is where we're gonna do some styling here where we have the h1 let's give it a class name of font display and then text free excel and margin bottom of four that should make it a lot bigger and maybe this needs to be medium and maybe we need to do text to excel like that maybe even smaller but that should be fine that's already looking good and and also we could potentially grab the crew here just to make just to make it look cool we can do search results and we can display the query so we can do four and then search query like so and we're searching for a at the moment but if we search for rad as you can see it was, should say search for rat and if we don't have anything we might need to, you might need to do some error handling here as well but let's go to the search page we don't have anything so you could potentially do a quick if and else statement to kind of like just put uh, something like um, you need to search for something and let's move on past this another thing that we can do is add how many games we're retrieving from the database so what i'm going to do is div with the class name of text accent and then margin bottom of four and then inside here i'm going to bring in with a template literal so dollar sign games dot length like so close it and do results like so we need to close this and now if i save this we're getting 12 results which is interesting are we getting 12 results and this is because we are kind of like searching for everything in this case you might have to do a little check here if you don't get the query uh, and i actually didn't really think of this but what we can do super quickly is we can do say let games and then we can do if search query games basically this here and so if we get the parameter from the url then we can search for games instead so let's save this and now this is gonna say yeah it's because we don't have length here you can always add the question mark and that would kind of fix it but it will say undefined result so yeah we need to handle this a little bit better maybe we can do else and inside here we can do uh, games is equals an empty array let's have a look at this and we get zero results and you can do the same thing with this if this is empty maybe we can display so maybe we can do this a little bit different so we're gonna do search query question mark and then in single slanted quotes we can do search results for and then we're gonna bring the search query so i'm gonna grab this super quickly and paste it inside here or we're gonna do let's put this on another line no search query provided save this and now we're getting no search query provided and if we search for something right we're getting search results for search query which is this here um yeah and this is because the dollar sign needs to be on the outside save it and now we have search results for rat one two three and then if i remove this no search query provided and that's it totally forgot about this these are things that you have to test and improve as you go along now let's display some of the results now let's just display the results and we should be good to go with this page so i'm gonna wrap everything in an ordered list and we can loop through the games here so where we have the games we can grab this and loop through them so if we do games we can do map and then maybe we can you can either put call it a game like so or item whatever you like and then this is gonna be an arrow function like so and inside here i'm gonna add a list in react when we render elements we need every element needs to have a unique id which helps react to identify which items have changed if they do uh, it's in order to do this we can create a list and i can grab the game and every single game in our database has a unique id so one two three four five six and so on so we can use that so let's do key equals and then game dot id let's close this and inside here we can start displaying some of the data now every single game that we search for is gonna have a link to the game i'm gonna create a link a href equals and then inside here i'm gonna do this as a template literal so slash game is gonna be the page and we need to pass the game slug game dot slug which is going to be inside here so we have title and then slug this is also going to be a little bit more seo friendly and now let's style this a little bit so class name flex gap for background main 
hover, background accent, secondary, and then padding or form, and then rounded is going to be large and i think that's it now we can wrap all of the elements inside here starting with the image so i'm going to use image from next.js so we need to add this at the top somewhere around here so import image and then this is going to be from next.js and now inside here for the image we can do the source the source is going to be slash game slash and then dollar sign and game dot image and then this is going to be grabbed from the database where we have the image name here and as you can see the old jpeg uh jpeg and so on so this is what we're grabbing but this later on in probably the next tutorial when we do the admin bar this will need to be replaced so then alt is going to be the game dot title and let's give it a little bit of styling so width is going to be to six and then on large screens this is going to be width of one six and then rounded is going to be md let's give it a weight of 300 you can give it high to 300 this is going to be lazy loaded as the food um and you can add stuff like quality in here as well if you need to 50 and that would automatically optimize the images for us and let's close this if i save this hopefully at this point if we search for mario you should be able to see mario in here and now we just need to bring the title and the description so let's do that diff with the class of flex and then flex co with a gap of four and now inside here we can add the title which is going to be inside h2 and i'm going to give it a class name of text excel in this case and this is going to be game.title like so save it and now we have super mario this does not look good flex flex go gap i wonder why maybe i need to give this a gap of four yep that link needs a gap of four so we have a little bit of space between them and now the last thing here that we need to do is the paragraph which is going to have all game description save it and now we have this is a game description so if we search for something that has more records for example i'm going to search for a and as you can see we're now getting all of the records here let's open this full screen and as you can see they could do with a little bit of space in between them but you can add this to but maybe you can just add some styling on the list margin bottom of two let's have a look and that would give it a little bit of space between them and maybe you can even display them as cards next to each other we'll probably do that with the rest of the website anyway so this is what i've searched for and if i do asterisk as you can see this works rad nothing with rad nothing when this is empty and let's put a one more time which is going to bring more records if you click on the game this is going to lead you to a game route so game and then the slug name of course we are having 404 page here and maybe we can style this next this is going to be an easy one let's do right click and format document here save it and now one thing that we could do potentially is to move this query to be in another file so we separate the logic let me show you how we can do that now most of it is going to be pretty much the same and if your website is small there is no and your website is small like this one you can definitely do this on the same page it's not a big deal but at some point if your website grows and if you want to have reusable queries i'll definitely move this to another file let me show you how we can do that first of all let's go and create a new file inside or leave folder so i'm going to create a new file and maybe we can call this one game queries .js. and then inside here we're going to do the queries now from the search there are a couple of things that we can do we can cut this out because we don't need it anymore here and we're gonna add it here one time and that's it so we won't have to import prisma in every single file which is great now that we have this we can also grab the query here but we'll need to change it a little bit so let's go back here and let's add it so we'll have to modify this a little bit instead of having an asynchronous function get data here we're gonna create a function that we export so we can use it in the search here let's do export async and then this is going to be a function and we need to give it a name and the parameter so the name maybe we can get get search results and then we pass the parameters i'm gonna leave it as it is right now and then instead of doing const games we just need to return the result so i'm gonna grab this and do it inside here so return and then await prisma.game find many we do the same query here and we're pretty much done so i'm gonna remove this and save so technically we can now import this query into our search file and use it so if i was to go here and let's do and let's do import get 
search result from library game queries. And now we can grab this and just like we have here, we can just change the name from get data to get search queries and that should light up. And now we can just pass the same parameter as before and this should be exactly the same thing, but we've just separate the logic. Save this and now we're getting the problem Q is not query is not defined. This is because when we trigger the function, we're sending the query here, which is absolutely fine. But when we inside here, we're still looking for Q for the parameter. So all we need to do is we're grabbing the parameter from here. You can name it whatever you like, but all we need to do is grab this name and change it here, save it. And that should work again. And now potentially you can reuse this query anywhere you like on your website by just importing it like so, and then just doing the query like this, await, get search results, and then you pass the parameter. That's it. Everything looks a little bit messy because I'm zoomed in so much, but trust me, it's not that bad. If we click on one of the games here, this is going to lead us to the default 404 page, which we'll probably see from time to time as we're developing the website. And I'm thinking we might as well get this set up. So let's close everything. We are done with the search and let's set up the 404 page. In order to set up a 404 page, you can go to up here. Page needs to be called not found dot jsx if i save this here we go automatically it gives us an error and this is purely because we don't have anything in the file and let's create a very basic one to start with and if you wish to skip this section feel free to do that port food function call it not not found and then inside here we return we can return a html5 section like so and maybe we can just say h1 404 here we go and that could be your 404 page and you can style it the way you like. If you don't wish to follow along here, feel free to skip this section. I'm going to build it super quickly and I've already prepared a picture in the public and then page folder. Here it is. Um, I've basically downloaded an image from Unsplash and optimized it. So let's go back and let's just do some styling. So class name, it's going to be flex. I want to center align everything. So items center and then justify center like so and if i save it you will see that our 404 is here in the middle but it's not centered on the middle of the screen yet this is because our section is using the height of our h1 whatever it's inside the section this is the height of it as well and that's why technically it's centered but that's why it doesn't go in the middle so what we need to do is put this to be full screen and there are a couple of methods of doing this but i'm just going to do h and screen and this is going to give it a property of height of 100 hv which is vertical height and now if i save this is going to go in the middle and then we can add the background which is going to be a custom url here so url page not found.jpg save them and now our image should work to fit a little bit more of the image we can also do background dash cover and now should look a lot better if you go on full screen you will, it's going to look a lot better than this but let's start the rest and i'll show you how it will look on big screen as well so for the rest maybe we can wrap everything in a div with a flex element so let's do that so we're gonna have an h2 and we're gonna have a paragraph that's gonna say page not found and then we will probably have a button here but i'm gonna add that in a second so what we can do put this as flex and then flex co that should do and maybe text align center that looks better and i'm gonna give the 404 here a class name of margin bottom of four and then let's make the text a little bit bigger so text for excel medium text 5 excel large text 7 excel and then for big screens i'm gonna make sure that the text is a little bit tighter so the large screens tight and then font extra bold like so yep that looks a little bit better for the paragraph here let's give it a class name margin bottom of four maybe text large font for normal and then the text can be gray of 200 and then on large screens maybe we can make the text a little bit larger so text large like so that's looking good and the last thing that i'm going to do is create a button so a href and this is going to go to the home page like so and let's say go to, go to home page like so and that's it now we just need to style this so let's give it a class name of inline flex and then items center and then justify center like so we also need to give it a little bit of padding on the sides padding 
of x5 and padding of y8 maybe a padding of y3 text base font medium size text center if it isn't and then round it i'm gonna put a custom value of dash and then 24 24 pixels like so let's give it a background color of accent and then on focus let's do focus four like so and that should be it that should look a little bit better go to home page and if i open this full screen for you it should look something like this um the spacing can be a little bit better for sure so maybe we can do margin bottom of eight and so on i'm sure that you can make this a little bit better than i did right now but uh this was a little bit of improvisation anyway let's close this let's close this let's go back to the normal page here the home page and then in the next section we're gonna do the mobile menu in this part of the tutorial we're gonna focus on the mobile menu if we go back to the explorer open the source and then components we need to open header after the search here is where we're going to create our menu and i'm going to wrap it into a nav element so if we type menu like so we should see it here now for the desktop i don't have anything to put on so i'm just going to put a little icon as a placeholder so let's insert an icon from hero icons that we installed earlier in this tutorial so this is going to be called a cog 8 tooth icon and now we can grab it and insert it inside here it's not gonna actually do much but it's just a placeholder let's give it a width of six and a height of six let's save this and we need to self close it first of all and now we should see the cog here which is fine you could uh, wrap this into a link if you wish to uh, if you want to do something with it so we might as well just do a href and then i'm gonna put an empty link and then we can wrap this like so and now this should be a link but it doesn't really do too much so this is going to be visible on desktop and mobile but for the mobile menu itself it's going to be a little bit more complicated so i'm thinking that we split this into its own component just like the search and let's create a component called mobile nav so i'm going to call it mobile nav and close it of course we don't have this yet but uh we need to go and create one i'm gonna copy the search import here like so and just change it to mobile nav and then let's change the search here to mobile nav now we need to create this inside the component so components new file and this is going to be mobile nav.jsx now let's copy uh whoever let's copy one of the items here maybe the footer let's copy the stuff from the footer and let's paste them inside the mobile nav.jsx and now we can just edit it slightly let's remove the footer from here and instead i'm just gonna put an empty fragment like so so our menu is kind of like inside the nav here without having any more divs or anything like that let's close this uh save this file the header and let's save this file as well and now we should get an empty and now we should get an empty place here first of all rename this function to something else maybe mobile nav like so and now if i put nav like so we should see it inside here which is great uh some of the styling doesn't seem to work well here so what i'm gonna do is here uh, for the nav let's style this a little bit i'm gonna put a class name of margin margin left to be four on medium screens so we're gonna do margin left to be six this is gonna be a flex and a gap of four between the elements and then margin bottom medium screens we're gonna do gap of six so now we should have a little bit more space maybe we don't need the margin left here so much because we have the gap but yeah that should do the job yeah that's looking a little bit better now everything is nicely spaced out and we have all navigation so let's save this and let's go and focus on mobile navigation now this is also going to be a client component purely because we're gonna have some interaction here so we want to create a hamburger menu when we press and we want to kind of like pop out a menu at the top here we're gonna do single quotes use use client and now this is going to be a client component i'm going to import a couple of icons that we can use uh, for the actual navigation here and for the actual menu that's going to be inside it so we might as well import them now so let's do import and then these are going to be bars free icon so this is going to be the free bars the hamburger menu we're going to have x mark icon which is going to be a little x icon that we can click and close the navigation if we need to maybe we need to put them on 
two lines here just so you can see a little bit better and now if we put another comma we need a home icon and then the last one is going to be cube you can do whatever you like for the rest of the icons so that should be fine we are also going to be using use state to trigger the menu opening and closing so we might as well insert this now so import and then use state whoops from react like so let's tidy things up and now we can start building the menu we need to wait to record the state of our menu whether it's open or not so i'm gonna do a const and then this is gonna have is open and then set is open like so and this is gonna be equals use state and then the use state to start with is gonna be false so when it's false, it's going to be closed, closed like this. And then when it's true, it's going to be open. That's how we're going to trigger it. And we also need some, and we also need some items for the, the drop down navigation. And they're kind of like the many ways of doing this. And in this case, because we only have a couple of elements, I'm going to do this manually as a JSON file. So let's start with this const. Let's call this mobile nav items. And then this is going to be equals an array here. And then we're going to have basically all links listed in here. All links are going to have a few properties starting with name. The name is going to be, for example, home. And then we're going to have a path. The path is basically going to be the URL. So for the home, we normally put slash. And then we're going to have an icon like so. And then the icon, I'm going to be using those icons from here. So the icon is just going to be called home icon of course you can replace this with uh, jpegs svgs whatever you like and then the last thing that i'm going to do is the slug which for this item itself is going to be null because it's kind of like we don't have a slug for the home page but for the rest of the items we'll, we will have a slug so we kind of need to duplicate this a couple of times i'm going to copy and paste it here and for this second item we're going to have new games so new and this is going to go to a url of new games that we haven't created yet but this is going to be the cube icon it's just a square thing and then the select for this one is going to be new dash games let's paste one more the next one is going to be categories i think the euro for this is going to be categories the icon can be the cube icon and then for the select we can have categories whoops cube icon and then for the select we can have categories Let's copy this one and then we'll have one more. This is going to be about, about, cube icon is fine here. And then about one more, we're going to have contact, contact, and then contact like so and you can go to the hero icons and find maybe a, an envelope a little house for home oh i do have a house for home but you get the idea you can find different icons i've just made them generic here so now that we have this we can kind of like minimize it here by clicking this arrow and now you can focus on the rest first of all we need to create the button that when we click all menu opens so inside here where we have nav we can basically use the use state from here is open to check whether our button first of all has been clicked so we can replace it if we start with curly brackets and then if we check if this is false so this is going to be the default value so is open and then we can display the hamburger menu so question mark and inside here we can create a button and the reason i'm creating an actual button here is because this is better for accessibility so button let's give it a class name of on large we need to hide in so hidden so we're hiding this on large screens and then on click on click we can trigger a function here and i'm just gonna do it in line and that's gonna be basically set is open we need to update this state to true like so that's how easy it is and then we're gonna do some usability stuff as well area dash expand it so when the area is expanded on screen readers we want to say that this is false and then area control controls this is going to be mobile menu which we'll create in a second so this is what we're going to be controlling with this button we need to close this and here is a button and now i'm just going to add an icon inside here of the bars free icon so this one here let's grab it and then let's do bars free icon give it a class name of h6 
weight of six. I don't think that I need to change the font text, but uh, let's also give it area label, which is going to be called open menu like so. And we need to close this. Close this, save it, and we are getting expected. Oh yeah, we need we haven't finished the code, that's why. So we need to finish the edit button. So for the edit button, we need to do the two dots here, open like so, and we need to do basically something very similar to this. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it inside here. Save, and now this should work. Uh, here is our hamburger menu, but now we need to change this. So on our screens, this can also be hidden, that's fine. And then when we click on this, this time, we need to set it to false. So we click on this button, we set it to true. We click on the close button, we set it to false. That's how simple it is. And this needs to be set to true. Kind of like swapping everything. Uh, area controls mobile menu, that's correct. And then for this, instead of the three bars, we can put the X mark icon here. So let's just change it. And then this is going to say close menu instead. Save it. And now, technically speaking, although it's not going to do anything here, if I click on the menu, you should see that it's changing the state here and this is working. Essentially, we are almost there now. So we can now use this in order to control or drop down menu, which we can build right here. So it's going to be very similar. We put is open. If this is true, then we can do and 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 in inside here, we can display all menu. So just to show you, I mean, I don't know how well this is going to look, but drop down menu. Let's save this. And if I click on this, you will see that our drop down menu appears. But of course, it's just going to require a bit of styling to make it better. So let's start by removing this and let's go to the div, give it an ID of mobile menu because this is the area control here. This is basically for accessibility purposes for screen readers. So let's do that. And then let's give it a class name of fixed. Top is going to be, I've calculated this. I think this is the size of our navigation here, which is going to be 57 pixels. And then we're going to have height of DVH. If you're not familiar, represents the dynamic viewport height. And I believe that this was specifically useful for mobile where you have the bar 400 at the bottom, or if you have a bar on your iPhone. Anyways, then we need left zeros. So menu is aligned here to the left edge. And then we need to do the same here for the right. So right zero. Z index is going to be I mean, we can put as 50 or whatever. This is just going to put the menu above everything else on our page. And then for the background, we can call it, we can give it the main background and then padding of four or around. So if I put menu here, hopefully now if I click on the menu, you, you will see that we're getting menu. And if I click over there, it disappears. You could use uh, libraries as well to animate this or just add a little bit of CSS to animate it, but I'm going to keep it a little bit standard here. So now the next challenge is to, to grab the data from here and loop it so we can display every single item in a nice format. So let's remove the menu and this is going to be put in an unordered list like so. And let's give this a class name of background muted flex flex co margin bottom of six. And this is going to have the row of menu like so and now we need to create our lists but to create the list we're gonna loop through this through these items so mobile nav items let's grab this and inside here we can do mobile nav items dot map and then inside here we can just call it item and this is gonna be a narrow function let's tidy it up and now we can do list and every list like i explained previously has to have a unique key so this is gonna be item dot name in this case so i'm grabbing the item so this i'm grabbing the name so home new categories about contact and so on let's scroll down and that's it this is what we're going to be using for the key and then let's give it a class name of border accent and then row of none now inside the list, we're going to create a link. So when we click on the items, they can go to the actual page using the select. So let's create a link, a href, and then this is going to be equals the item path. So item dot path here. If we scroll up, you'll see that every item has a path. And I'm just thinking now whether we do need the slash here or we can just add it manually here. I mean, it doesn't matter too much anyway. And then let's give it a class name of text, large, font, medium, on hover. We want to have the background accent color like so. 
rounded is going to be medium flex gap four items center border bottom which is going to be border accent like so and then padding of y4 and padding of x6 and then we need to close this link so it doesn't break and this link also needs a row which is going to be equals of menu item like so and then the last thing that we need to do is display the icons here so the way i'm going to do this is by doing item dot icon and then class name is going to be h6 so height of six and then the width of six and then this is going to have the text of white if it doesn't already and then i'm going to add area hidden equals true like so and close this so this is how we add in the icons i'm basically doing the same thing as here basically item item and then i'm adding the icon and the icons come from here we've already set them up of course feel free to change them and the last thing that we need to bring is the actual name so item dot name and save we're not getting any errors which is a good sign and now if i i will do word wrap can i do view word wrap oh it's already word wrap i'm gonna open this full screen for in a second just for you to see or we can do this for you to see a little bit better now if i save this by the way and if we go to the website here or mobile if we click on it as you can see we're getting our menu and our menu looks a little bit broken because i've misspelled this this needs to be flex save it and now our menu should be all looking good uh when we hover over as you can see all these light up but on mobile i believe that when you press it it will kind of like light up and that's it as you can see the only different icon in here is the home and this is because i've only change the home icon from here but uh, hero icons has a lot of icons that you can choose from just go to the official documentation insert the names in here and change them to whatever you like or input svgs which i'm going to use later on in this video so this is actually our menu done if i was to save this and right click format super quickly save this let's open this full screen just so you can see it i mean no it's sorry it's it is a little bit hard to see and tailwind css makes it even worse then it is apologies for this but there is not much i can do now if you open this full screen let's have a look at what happens i'm gonna open in another tab we have our menu here but when we go a little bit larger this should disappear here we go all menu disappeared so around tablets here we're having our menu and it should work it should always be full screen and then if i go down our menu is always working Perfect. And we're not going to have another menu here purely because we're going to have the side menu, which we're going to focus on next. Okay. In this section, we're going to do the sidebar of the website. So if we go back to the project, open the Explorer and then source app, we're going to go to the main layout.js. So from here, early in this tutorial, if you remember, we created our sidebar here. And this is created as a component under the component folder and then with the name of sidebar. If I control and click on this, then we added a side and then I just hidden the div just so it doesn't get in a way. So if I was to remove this for a second and go back to the browser, you'll see that we're getting the sidebar. But now let's give it a little bit of styling and then we'll start building it. So if I go back here, and let's give it a class name of width 64, padding of four all around. Then I'm gonna hide it. So it's gonna be hidden until I show it on large screens and then I display it as basically flex like so. And then this is gonna be set to flex call. Now, if we save this and go to the browser, you will see that we're getting our sidebar here. If I go back and remove this, now there are a couple of ways that we can do this. But I was thinking that if you make the menu its own component, it's going to be a little bit easier. If we quickly jump to the design here, you will see that we have potentially two menus. One is home, new and most popular. And these can be written manually in a JSON format. And that's absolutely fine. But these will need to come from the database. So every time you add a new category, I want to be able to have this come from the database. And also we can maybe insert a number of how many arcade games we have or Nintendo or PlayStation. So let's do that. So we're going to have to create a query for this. And if you remember in the tutorial, we put our queries inside lib and then game queries. So we can do something very similar to this and potentially could be reusable at some point. But for now, let's just move everything to the bottom here and let's create a new one. So maybe we can call this one get category menu. 
category menu like so we don't need params here and then this is going to be a little bit different so let's take off everything and then instead of the game we need to go to the category table and grab everything from here because these have those two tables have relationship we can definitely grab how many titles we have in the game for example if i scroll to the bottom here you will see our relationship. So if I click on this, you will see that this game is specifically in arcade and I can tick more. And basically, however many games we have in this specific category, we can uh, have a little number. So let's do this in here. We need to change this to category. And then inside here, we need to grab the number of games and I'm going to do this by doing include games. And this is going to be set to like so and say that should be it and now we can grab this and insert it into our sidebar so when we visit the page it's gonna grab the data straight away so we're gonna do import and then the function name here get category menu from and then this is gonna be at lib and then slash game queries like so and we're good to go now to run this function we can come here and we can and we can create a const const category menu and then this is going to be equals await and then get category menu like so. And this is a function. And this is highlighted because we have export default, but we don't have async here. So we need to add async to make this function asynchronous. And now potentially we should be able to see the data just for testing purposes. I'm going to do the same thing that we've done earlier in this tutorial. So pre and then inside here, I'm going to display json.stringify and then it's going to be the data that we're getting and then no and four and that should go back to the website you should see that we're getting the items in here and it's a little bit hard to read but anyways we're getting the kate the slug the core the images so everything from the category here we are getting which is amazing we can use this and then we're actually getting the games as well which is kind of like hard to see but we can use this to advantage to list how many games we have let's remove this and now let's create another component which is going to be our site by navigation so let's create a new component and we're going to call a sites bar nav like so and then we're going to pass the category menu from here and it's just going to be equals category menu like so so we get the data from the database and we could potentially do it inside the sidebar menu but i'm going to do this as a client component as well and now we need to create it so if i copy the name super quickly go to components and let's create a new component called sidebar nav.jsx let's do the default stuff here let's close everything else and let's do the default stuff here so export default function we call it sidebar nav and then inside here we're going to grab the categories which i'm passing through here so we're grabbing the categories menu like so inside here we can do return and then display something for now just as for testing so this is going to be sidebar nav here and let's just see whether this works super quickly so sidebar nav is not defined uh sidebar nav yeah it's not because we need to import it so let's go here and do import sidebar nav from and then add slash components slash sidebar nav like so and now if we go back it should work we have all sidebar nav in here and we can start adding some of the details so if we go back and concentrate on the sidebar nav only here we need to convert this into a client component so at the top here we just put use client and that's it let's insert some of the icons that we're going to use as well so import home icon from hero icons react for 24 outline and i'm gonna do one more the cube one cube icon and we should be good to go and then i'm also gonna import use path name for the navigation which i'm gonna show you how we can use in a second uh this is gonna help us with if we click on a link here for example we're at the home i want to be able to highlight it so that's why we're gonna use the use path name so import and then in curly bracket use path name like so and then from next navigation and this is what's going to help us determine whether a link is active or not so in order to test this super quickly before we go any further we can do const active segment and this is going to be equals the use path name from here and now we can maybe console log it just to test this out console the log and i'm going to do active segment 
and then we can do the active segment in here with comma. So if I save this and if I go to the browser, so we refresh and obviously we're on the home page. So if I go to console, because this is a client component, we need to go to the console here by right click inspect. And you can see that we're getting slash. If let's see if this works, if I go to home, uh, yeah, it won't work because we're going to the uh, 404 page. So I don't know search. We do have search. So Super Mario, let's do that. Here we go. We're getting searching here, which is absolutely fine. So let's go back and let's remove this. All right, now let's create our top menu here, which we can add items manually. So let's do const main menu items. And then this is going to be equals. We're going to create an array. And then inside here, we're going to do a name of home, comma, icon is going to be the home icon that we insert from the hero icons. Then we're going to have the friendly slug like so, which for home is just slash. And now we need to do this for the other links. Um, I'm going to copy this and paste it here. So we're going to do one more, let's say new. And then we're going to do cube icon icon and so on and slug is going to be slash new games and i'm just going to leave those two so we can minimize this here and now we can start building our menu on the top of our menu here we're going to have a little title of menu and categories let's do that so inside here let's create a div with the class name of text accent and then this is going to have the text of XS, which is around 12 pixels, quite small. And then this is going to be margin bottom and the margin bottom of two. And in fact, we can put this on another, on one line and say menu. And now if we go here, we'll see our little menu. And then for the actual menu, we're going to wrap everything in an order list. And then this an order list is going to have the class name of background muted. Flex, flex is going to be column gap around the items of two and margin bottom of six for the list here for the list here we actually need to loop the items so i'm gonna wrap everything into a map so main menu items dot map and then inside here we can say items or item for singular and then i to get the number and then we can do arrow function whoops open close like so and then inside here we can create a link so a href which is going to be equals the item dot slug and we're going to have a class name of text dash small tracking wide flex we're going to have a gap of two items center padding of one and padding of two i do want to use the active class segment so i can highlight the items that we're currently on and in order to do this we're gonna to have to convert this class name to a template literal instead so let's remove the double quotes and put put the curly brackets in here and put single quotes instead and now what we can do after the padding on the x on the left and right we can do dollar sign curly bracket and inside here we can do the logic which is going to be if we get active segment so if the current url that we're on is equals the home page for example or new games we want to be able to oops we want to be able to highlight it so equals 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 and this is going to be dollar sign curly brackets and then item dot select to compare it we can do the check here with question mark and then we can put an active class so active background dash primary and then round it of medium like so and then if it's not active we can do a class of inactive hover background primary hover background primary like so and then round it md and we need to close this so curly bracket oh here it is sorry we don't need to do this we've got it here so we can close it like that and now we need to close this link and then inside the link we can display an icon we're gonna grab the icon by doing item dot icon which is gonna come from here basically the icon name so item dot icon class name is gonna be size of six and then text is going to be accent like so self close this and then the last thing that we need to do is bring up the item name like so and let's have a look at what we get save this go back to the browser and as you can see we're getting 
uh, menu and we're getting the two lists. So I don't think that this is going to work if we go on new because we don't actually have this page yet and it's just going to go to 404. But trust me that this is going to work later on. As you can see, it's already working on the home. He knows that we're in the home page. So this is highlighted for us, which is great. And if we go down to mobile, they should hide and everything. Perfect. Let's build the rest now. So for the rest, we can grab the data from the actual sidebar. So if we go back to the sidebar super quickly, we basically created a function called get category menu that grabs all the items from the database. And then we're using this to insert it into the sidebar nav into here. So we can now use this. So if you copy it, we can now use it from here. So I can grab it and now we can use this data to loop for it in kind of like the same manner as here. So what I'm going to do is pretty much do something similar like we've done at the top. Let me do a right click and format super quickly. And now after the URL, we can create another one here. We're going to do div with the class name of text accent. And then this is going to be text excess margin bottom of two. And then this is going to say categories. Like so. If we go here, we have categories. And now let's do something similar like before. We're going to do an unordered list here. And then this unordered list is going to have a class name of background muted, flex, flex, co, gap of two, margin bottom of six. And then inside here, we're going to do the standard loop. So I'm going to grab the category menu, basically, category menu, and then map. And then we're going to do item. This can be a narrow function like so. And then inside here we do, we create a list. This list will need to have a key. And then for the, I'm just going to say item dot ID, which comes from the database here. So basically these IDs. And then inside here, we're going to have all link, which is going to have href. And this href is going to go to in curly bracket, single slanted quotes, slash category slash and then the item dot slug like so and then we need to add a class name to make it pretty and then this is going to be very similar like before in fact i wonder whether we can copy this let's copy this and i can modify it so copy paste here and let me just have a look super quickly so active segment in this case is going to be category slash sorry this needs to be slash category so when we click on any of those categories, it's obviously going to go to a to a route of category and then the select. So that's why we need to do the category here. Everything else should be fine. Then we need to close this. We need to close the link like so. And we need to do exactly the same thing as before. But this time we're going to do div with a class name. And then inside here, we're going to do curly bracket and then category icon, which I'm going to create in a second for you. And then we're going to do dollar sign item dot select. I'll show you what this means in a second. Let's just bring the item title. And then we can do the length of how many items we have. So span, I'm going to do a class name of text accent. And then inside here, we can do in brackets, we can do item question mark dot games question mark dot length like so, and save. Hopefully we won't get any errors if we go back. And as you can see, everything is working except all numbers here. So let me super quickly have a look and I've probably spelled this wrong. Length, save it. And if you go back, you should see that everything is popping out here. We're getting the menus. If I hover over them on the bottom left corner, you should see that the slugs are changing, which is awesome. But one thing that is missing is the icons. Potentially, there are a couple of ways of adding the icons. You could potentially go to categories and have another field of like icon. And then maybe you can go to hero icons and just put the name kind of like the way we've done here. If you can imagine this will be your database, you have icon and then you just insert the name from hero icons. But if you want to use custom icons, like I have in here, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. Essentially, inside here, we have a custom class name that I've created category icon, and then we add in the slug. So if I was to inspect this super quickly, 
for example, a Kate, you will see that this has somewhere, this has category icon and then a Kate. Now I can use this class name to add a custom icon of whatever I like using CSS. But let me show you. Let me grab this super quickly and let me show you how we can do this. If we go back to a project and open the global CSS, we might as well do it here. So under or source app global CSS, open this and we can add some CSS in here. So this is going to be, let's say, sorry about the category icons and inside here we can do category icon and then we can do the styling. So every icon is going to have the width of 24 pixels, is going to have the height of 24 pixels. We're going to have a background repeat of no repeat. I don't want the icons to repeat because they're going to be added as background. And then we're going to do background image is going to be set to the center. And then we're going to put a default icon. So background image for every single icon that exists, we're going to do URL. And then inside here, we can add an icon by doing single quotes, icons, and then the icon is going to be called default SVG. And now if we go to the folder here, we are inside or application, public, and then icons. And this is where I've exported those two icons. So if I put, if I click on the default one, and if I zoom in, you see that I've basically added this nice joystick and, and you can add whatever you like. And then I have one for Kate just to show you how we can change them. So let's do that. If I go back from here. Now we can use the different names for every single category has a different class name. This one would be so category arcade, so category, um, category Atari, and so on. So we can use these. Let me show you what I mean. So inside here, we can do and when we have category icon and next to it we have arcade on the same div, we can change the background image. So inside here, we can do background image and then we can do URL and then we can change the icon by doing slash icons and then slash arcade, for, for example, and then dot SVG. And I think he added a dot for some reason. Whoops, oh, we need to remove it. And now if I save this and if I go back, you should see that the icon changed, but for some reason it doesn't seem center aligned. So we might need to fix this a little bit. Instead of background image, this is actually background position. Excuse me, um, sorry about that, save it. And now this should look better. And this is how we can actually change all of the icons. Obviously I've just used one icon and I've just changed the color, but essentially you can go here, add more icons, give it the class names and so on. Just to show you how we can create the rest, I would basically copy this a couple of times. So one, two, three, and I'll change this to, for example, Atari. I'll change this to MEME 2003. And then I'll change this one to Ness, for example. Let's give him a little bit of space, change the image from here. I don't have any other ones. And then save it. And now if I go back, you should see that all of the ones that I targeted have changed icons, which is great. And that's, and that's pretty much it. And I think that this is going to be good enough for the sidebar. Let me show you one more time here. If we go down to mobile, the sidebar hides, we get in the menu, which is a totally different menu. If we go to the console super quickly, and if I have a look at the arrow here, it says warning each child in the list should have a unique key prop. So where we have or sidebar nav, it says that in or unordered list, we don't have a key. If I go back to the code super quickly, uh, when I have a look at this, and basically we did add a key, but this doesn't actually exist. I think I've got it wrong because I was thinking that it was coming from the database, but essentially this is why I added the I originally. So this is going to replace the key for us and it's just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. And now if I go back, the error should be gone. We don't get it anymore, which is a good thing. Saying this, I think we're done with the sidebar and let's move on. In this part of the video, we're going to focus on building our hero slider. Let's go back to the Visual Studio Code project. And then let's open Explorer, inside source, app, and then where we have our main, we have page and layout. Page is essentially our homepage and layout is what's wrapping everything around it. So essentially all of our pages are going to be wrapped in this main. And then this is where the content goes. Just to recap, and now we can close this. And if I say homepage123, for example, save it. And if I go back to the website, you will see that this is where the homepage content goes and this is where we can start creating our hero slider 
categories and so on. Now I am zoomed in a little bit, so I'm going to zoom out. And then let's go back to the project and instead of wrapping this into an H1, let's remove it and let's wrap everything into an empty segment. So we have all slider here and then it's basically going to be just wrapped in this main tag, which is cool. For this slider specifically, we're going to hard code the data, but for the next one here where we have the categories, I'm going to show you an example, which is going to be slightly different. So we have a bit of both. Let's create all hero slider as a component first of all. So let's go back. And inside components, because we're going to have multiple sliders, I'm thinking that we create a new folder called sliders. And then inside here is where we're going to create the component. The first one is going to be called hero slider.jsx. And now we need to copy and paste, let's say the footer, let's copy this and paste it inside here. So we need to change the function here to hero slider. And then let's remove this and let's just wrap everything into a div. And this is going to be your hero slider like so. Now we need to insert this hero slider into our homepage. So let's import it at the top here. Import hero slider from at slash components slash sliders slash hero slider. And now we can grab this and put it on our homepage here just like that. And we can save it. If you go back to the website super quickly, and you should see hero slider like let's go back and now we can close everything and focus on the hero slider in order to create our hero slider today i'm going to be using this amazing library called swiper.js but essentially this is a super powerful modern touch friendly and accessibility friendly slider one thing that i would suggest is for you to go to swiper.js have a look at the documentation have a look at what's possible and have a look at some of the demos for example if you go here under resources and demos you will see some of the amazing demos that they've done like this is a very basic one you can just swipe you have one with navigation and these are basically plugins. The navigation is considered as a plugin. The pagination here is considered as a plugin and so on. Basically you have a lot of cool stuff. You have a lot of cool effects. If I go to effects fade, uh, you'll be able to see that this fades. This is like a cube effect. We have some other effects here, which are great and so on. One thing that you can do is to go to those demos, click on react here and they will actually give you the code for it. And you can kind of like mix and match between whatever you want to develop. And you can also change the styling very easily and so on. I'm going to show you pretty much everything that you need to know. So if we go back to the homepage and click get started, we need to copy this command here. Let's open the terminal, close this for a sec. And then clear this and let's do right click npm install swiper. Now that this is installed, let's do npm run dev and our website should be back and running here. Let's refresh here. It takes a while for me, for my PC, but here we go. It's refreshed and we can go back. Now this slider is going to be a client components. So let's go at the top and let's do use client. Okay. We need to import or swiper. So import swiper and then we need to import swiper slide. And then this is imported from swiper slash react. And we also need to import some of the plugins like the navigation, pagination and scroll bar. So import navigation, pagination, scroll bar, and then A11Y, which is a community for making the web more accessible. And then this is going to be from swiper slash modules like so. And we also need to import some base styling for the swiper. So import swiper CSS. We also need to import one for the navigation. So import swiper slash CSS slash navigation. We need to do the same for the pagination. And now we can start using it. If we save this and if you go back to the browser, no errors here, which is great. And to start using it, you can basically grab the slider and need to wrap everything inside it. So if I do sl swiper here and if I grab the swiper slide, this is where all slides will go. So, oops. So swiper slide and then we can do slide one. Let's put it on one line here. And if I copy this, this can be slide two. And this is going to be a very basic usage. If I go back, you'll be able to see that we have slide one and potentially if I grab it, you should be able to see that I can already slide as you can see. Now, let me show you how we can add some of the modules for this to work. So let's make some space here 
under the swiper and we can basically do modules and then the modules are going to be the navigation so we can grab them in brackets here navigation pagination scroll bar whoops scroll bar like so and then the a11 y like so and and that's it if i save this and go back to the browser we don't see anything yet that's fine and this is because we need to also add them inside here so so for each side we can actually make a little bit of space kind of like padding i'm gonna give it a little bit of space between these options are available in the documentation by the way 50 and this is going to be slides per view because we only have one slide per view here like on this example here we have one slide per view but on the bottom example here we have six slides per view which in, which i'm going to show you later so slide per view is one then we need to add the navigation make sure that these are small letters by the way and then we need the pagination and everything pretty much here has some sort of options that you can look into the documentation but for the pagination for example we can make this clickable so clickable and set it to true and then we can do one more and this is going to be the scroll bar and the scroll bar can be set to draggable set to true that's more or less the base stuff if i save it let's have a look at what we get as you can see we're getting the handles here so if i click on them they should already work it's a little bit hard to see maybe i can zoom in but they should already work if you click on them they do work and i get the bullet points here and if i click on them they also work as you can see and i can drag the slides which is great so slide is working but it does need a little bit of styling which we're going to do next okay first of all here we can give it a class name and then we can set the height on small screens and above to be a custom height of 340 pixels the height on medium screens is going to be so height 480 pixels the width is going to be full margin bottom of six we're going to give it rounded corners of large i'm going to give it a border and a border color of of accent secondary here and then for the background i'm just going to use the main color of our branding and save if we go back now we should see the slider starting to look a little bit better and if i put this on mobile let's have a look it should go down and now we should get a little bit smaller here here we go and you can adjust it further if you wish to now one thing that is really cool about the swiper js is that it has a lot of css variables that we can overwrite for example as default you're getting the bullet points to be blue you're getting the arrows to be blue and you can have a look at the variables inside the documentation but also if you inspect your elements and for example let's grab the arrow here which is the more visible one and if you have a look for example this arrow specifically has a font size of swiper navigation size so you can change this to whatever you like and you should be able to find some of the other root css variables around here for example here we go root swiper theme color if i was to double click and change this to red as you can see everything changes so this is how we can control some of the elements inside swiper and make it look the way we want so let's close this and i'm going to show you some of the settings that we're going to change now i'm actually going to do them right here on this specific swiper but you should be able to also override them on the global website under your css where is it where is it under your global css here if you wish to let's start with this one here let's close the page as well and let's do it in here we can do style and then inside here with double curly brackets we can start listing the styles that we want to overwrite like i showed you let's start with the pagination color so dash dash swiper dash pagination dash color it's gonna be column and then inside here we can write the color ff b a zero eight which might be a whitish color we'll see in a second you might as well let's have a look oh this is the uh, yellow color so as you can see this already changed now we can copy this hold shift and down and then do swiper pagination dash bullet inactive dash color and then when a bullet is inactive this is going to be one two three four five six nines we're going to do swiper pagination bullet inactive opacity and then the opacity here is going to be one i don't want it to be opaque then the bullet size we can change from here so bullet size and this is going to be 0.6 m let's save this and let's have a look yep 
it's a little bit bigger than before i think now we can we can also do a little bit of a gap i don't think that you can see them yet can't really see this one here but when we have an image hopefully it will stick out let's give him a little bit of a gap swipe on pagination bullet and then this is going to be horizontal gap and this is going to be six pixels between them and now we can change the theme color so swiper theme color and this is going to be white one two three f's three f's here we're going to change the swiper navigation size so so these are basically the navigation here so we're going to do swiper navigation size and this this is going to be 24 pixels and then the last one here is going to be swiper navigation sides offset which is kind of like left and right padding pretty much and this is going to be 30 pixels on each side if i save this you should see that this is already looking a little bit more presentable the arrows are looking good and everything is working i think when we add a background color the secondary bullet point here will stick out a little bit more saying this let's go back and let's have a look at all slides so i did say earlier that this is gonna be hard coded right let's remove the second slide here and maybe we can copy paste later and let's make some space so for the slide here we're gonna give it a class name and we're gonna give it a background image which you can find inside the public folder and then slide and i've only got one image that will probably position to the right but you can add some more and we're going to grab this actually let's add the name it's going to be a class name and i believe that instead of single quotes we're going to have to go with double quotes here because we will need to add single quotes inside so we're going to do background url and then inside here we can do the single quotes otherwise it's going to break and make, and then we can do slash slide slash slide one dot jpeg and now to make this a little bit better we can do background no repeat background to the right padding of 20 and then items center in the middle and then we can say slide one save it okay this is already looking much better now we can do this free arcade games subheading the heading the paragraph and the button so let's go back and let's create them so i'm gonna wrap everything into a div that we can kind of like position in the middle div with the class name of max width of free excel which is seven six eight pixels and then inside here we can do a div with the class name of text accent text is going to be small margin bottom of two and this is going to be uppercase so let's do free okay games and now we can do another one here this is going to be our h1 this is going to have a class name of font display which is our headings font text is going to be for excel and then on large screens we're going to set it to text 6 excel to be much bigger and then we're going to do margin bottom of 4 let's put a heading of play retro games for free save this let's make another one this is going to be our paragraph and this paragraph is going to have a class name of margin bottom six max width is going to be a little bit smaller to make it look a little bit more presentable so one four one eight pixels and then we're going to do relieve the classics dive into our collection of retro games and enjoy them for free start playing start playing now something like that and then we're gonna have our button here which is gonna be a link to a specific game so a href and then you can either set this manually to whatever you like uh maybe you can do i don't exactly know what the euro is gonna be maybe maybe you can do game and then the actual euro like super mario or we can just leave it as empty for now because i don't know what's gonna be inside here we're gonna say play mario like that and now let's style this button so this is going to be a class name of text small background accent gradient which i added earlier in this tutorial i can show it to you gradient padding of y three and then padding of x six rounded excel border and then uppercase and then we need to change the border color so border border yellow dash 400 from the tailwind tss classes save this let's go back 
And as you can see, this looks a little bit better. The gradient doesn't seem to be working. Um, let me have a look. Background, accent, gradient. How strange. One sec, let me have a look. The wind here says accent gradient. Um, I wonder if I messed up the gradient in here. Um, oh, yeah, it's RGBA. Save this. And here we go. All gradient is now working. Uh, and I'm not sure whether this is good for accessibility. It looks uh, maybe the color needs to be turned into black. But I'll leave this to you to mess around. And maybe this needs to push the button a little bit more and so on. Saying this, we this is already looking pretty cool. But now if you wanted to add more slides, you can either loop through them. You can either loop this through the database, which I'm going to show you in the next section when we do the categories. Or if you're going to do it manually, or with a JSON file, you can just copy this, paste it here, and let's say, just so we have a difference, this is gonna be slide two. Slide number two, like so, and if we go back, now we have the navigation here, now we have slide two, and as you can see, we have a little bit of a problem with the alignment here. Now, I did have a problem with this, uh, and essentially, when you put display flex on on this, let's let's try flex let's have a look it doesn't seem to work so what i had to do is instead of putting flex here i had to actually overwrite it i had to overwrite it manually by going to the slide here specifically and doing style let's put another line here so style and then in double quotes we can do display and then we can do flex like so let me try this and as you can see this is now in the middle and now I'm going to have to copy just this to the other slide here. And save it. Save it. Go back. And we should have them both in the middle, which is great. And if you add more, you'll have more bullets. And maybe this bullet color needs to be changed in this case. That's all working well. If I go to mobile here, you will see that it's all scaling down. And it's looking good. Saying this, let's move on to the next step. In this part of the tutorial, we're going to recreate the categories that will come from the database. So let's minimize everything. Let's go back to the project. And from here, we need to go back and open our home page, which is under source app and then page here where we have hero slider. So right underneath here is where we can create another component called category slider and then build stuff from there. So if I go back to the component, and let's create a new one and we can call this one category slider and in fact we can build it in the sliders here so let's create a new one here category slider.jsx and that's it okay we could copy the footer and paste the code in here and let's just rename stuff to category slider and then i'm just gonna wrap everything into a div like so and now we need to import this into our main page so just like we have the hero we do import category slider and then this is going to be from sliders category slider like so and now we should be able to insert it inside here and save it if i go back we should be able to see our hero slider and now the category slider is appearing inside here which is great let's tidy things up here and let's close the page and let's go to the category slider. So we're going to build everything from scratch here. And if you didn't watch the previous section, essentially you will need to go to swiper.js.com and install Swiper by doing npm install Swiper. Once you're done, close this and let's go back to the project and we'll start from the top. So this is going to be very familiar if you've done the previous step. This is going to be a use client component once again because of the slider. And then we need to import pretty much everything like before from the hero slider here. So in fact, I'm going to go to the top here and import everything from here, copy, and then let's paste it. So we need the swiper, the swiper slide from swiper react. We need the navigation, pagination, scroll bar, and a 11 y from Swiper modules. Then we need the CSS for the Swiper navigation and pagination. That's more or less it. We're also going to have an icon, a Chevron icon from Hero Icons that we installed earlier in this tutorial. So I'm going to do import, and then this is going to be 
chevron right icon that we can use and this comes from 24 outline that's correct like so and now we can start building the slider and then we'll deal with the data later that rhymes let's go here and do margin bottom of six on the whole wrapper of the slider and then we're gonna have a little bit of a heading for the and then we're gonna have a heading for this section so i'm gonna create a div with the class name of flex and then justify between because i want to move the kind of like the heading to the left and then the navigation to the right this is going to have a gap of four just in case they get close to each other and now we can close this div and inside here we can add or h2 which is going to be categories the h2 is going to have a class name of font display margin bottom of four items center and then we're going to have our chevron, which is this one here. And I'm going to wrap this and this is going to be a link. So a href equals, and then we do slash category. And then for this, the class name is going to be text, small, font, medium, and hover. We want to underline it and then underline offset. I want to set to four. And then this link, we need to close here and we're going to say, view all categories basically and then i want the chevron icon here so i'm going to do chevron right icon with the class name of height four width of four and this is going to be in line block and then text dash accent like so make sure that you close this make sure that you self close this like so and the ring and everything is looking good except this this needs to be wrapped in a div by the looks of it and now we should have a clear heading section so categories and then we have the view all button here as you can see this should also work well on mobile unless your heading is super long then there will be a gap between them let me just show you oh i can't go down anymore here but yeah as you can see it works pretty well now for the swiper we could potentially go back and go to the hero slider here and copy most of the stuff from here let's copy that to save a little bit of time and essentially we're going to do it right after this div this is our heading div so we're going to do it right here and we are and we are grabbing the swiper and then inside the swiper we need the swiper slides but let's have a look at this first make sure that you open the swiper and close it and this is where we're going to have the slides but let me have a look at this first of all we have the navigation we don't need the pagination in this case scroll bar is fine and a 11 y is fine for the space between them which is this gap here kind of like a padding we're gonna change this to 20 slides per view is gonna be six because we have six of them we're gonna have the navigation we don't need the pagination scroll bar is gonna be draggable to true that's fine the stars are gonna be fine um maybe i should have moved those to the global css and the root to override them so we don't have to duplicate ourselves but that's fine here not a big deal and then for this one we are also going to bring breakpoints so we need to do it here breakpoints and then the breakpoints i'm going to create separately you could create them inside here but i'm going to create them separately so this is a little bit cleaner and i'm going to call it breakpoints now to create the breakpoints separately to make this a little bit more responsive for mobile tablet and desktop and so on we can create a here so we can set const breakpoints and then we can do equals and then we can do different breakpoints so 320 we're gonna do so slides per view we can have only three then when we go up we're gonna have let me copy this we're gonna have 640 pixels and above we're gonna have four slides and i'm gonna do one more and this is gonna be seven six eight and above we're gonna have six slides if I save this we don't have any slides just yet as you can see it's kind of like looking odd and i probably need to remove some of the styling but that's cool let's go back here and let's remove the styling we don't need it save this and now let's add a couple of slides in between the swiper here i'm going to do a right click and format and then inside here we need to grab basically the swiper slide and start inserting them in here so i'm going to do one just for this example in fact let's do slide one and let's copy it one more time and then because this is going to come from the database i'll have to change it anyway so let's go back and as you can see we have categories slide one slide two 
and then they're gonna stack up here. Now, if you go back to the project folder, somewhere we should have category, and then if I go view extra large, you'll see that I've exported those earlier in the tutorial. So you should have them in your folder and you also have a placeholder image just in case you don't have an image for one of the categories that you might be working on. Anyway, let's go back and let's have a look. Now we need to grab the data from the database and basically, and that's going to create each individual slide. Now, in order to do this, because this is a client component, one way would be to create an API and then fetch the data from the API, but then your API will be exposed and it's a little bit more work. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the main page here, which is or main page or home page in this case and i'm going to do the query here so let's do import to start with we need to do the query let's go back to let's go back to lib and then gain queries and inside here i'm going to do a new one i'm going to copy this one maybe save it so let's rename this to get game categories like so copy this just so we have a remove this inside here and essentially what we want to do is go to prisma and get all the categories from our database using the find many that's pretty much it right click format this document and save it copy the names from here go back to the page and let's import that specific query so import in curly brackets we can do get game categories and then this is going to be from at slash lib slash game queries and now we should be able to use it i can grab this and this is going to be export the default asynchronous function like so and then we can do const all categories equals and we do await and then get game categories inside here and now we should have the data in order to pass the data to the game category here, we can grab the cons from here and just do something like this. So you can do, let's rename it as categories. And then we can just put it as all categories like so. So now we should be able to grab this data inside all category slider. In order to do this, you can put it inside here and you basically put in curly brackets categories and now the data should be available in here so what we can do just for testing purposes or you can console log it to be fair you can do pre and then json dot stringify and then inside here we put categories and then we put no and then four and then that should be it save this and now you will see that we're getting the categories arcade atari this one here that nintendo super nintendo and so on awesome um you could limit them if you wish to but this should be fine let's remove this in fact i'm just gonna remove it we need to loop through the category so i'm gonna scroll down here and then just do a map so in curly brackets categories dot map and then inside here we're gonna do item and then we're gonna do i this is gonna be an arrow function like so and then inside here we can wrap everything into the slide swipe slide let me grab it so swipe a slide each swipe a slide will need to have a key i've explained this multiple times in the tutorial now and now this is gonna have a class of group and then inside here is where we're going to add in each individual slide. So each slide is going to be a link. So a href. And this link is going to go straight to in single slanted quotes category slash dollar sign and then item dot slug, which comes from the database. We need to close that link. And this is going to have a class name of group. And now inside the link, we're going to have a div with the class name of overflow hidden. And this is because I want to put rounded corners on the images. So we're going to do rounded, large, and then border, accent, secondary, and then border is going to be margin bottom of two. And now we can insert the image which at some point will need to be replaced that will come from maybe the s3 bucket 
but for now this is absolutely fine and we're going to use the and we're going to use the next image so image with capital letters and we need to also import this make sure that you do that at the top here so import image from next image so now we can use it so image source in single slightly quotes category and then dollar sign and then the image and then the item dot image make sure that we close this by the way save it and if you go back to uh, our database here you will see that uh, we have this image basically each one has a k.jpg and so on and these are going to come from here as of now so that's it uh, the next bit would be the width is going to be 300 the height is going to be 300 the alt is going to come from the database so maybe we can do curly bracket and then dollar sign item dot title is it title one sec yeah that's fine so we can just do this excuse me and then for the styling we're going to do class name of w width full height full object cover for the image transition it's going to be transform to have some animation the duration of the animation is going to be uh, 300 milliseconds we're going to do group hover group hover uh, this is why i added the group cast name here by the way so everything is animated and then we can do for the animation just scale dash one or five and I think that's pretty much it. And now we just need to grab the title. I'm going to put it in an H1 here. And we can just do item dot title. And we can do one more paragraph. And then this is going to be item dot description. Like so. And save. If we go back, hopefully there won't be any errors. Uh, let me zoom out so as you can see this comes from the database the styling does not seem right let me fix this super quick oh this is because i've wrapped this i've wrapped everything in this div which has the border that's why it looks a little bit odd so the this just needs to wrap the image and then we have the title and description on their own after that but they're still in the link and now if we save this and go back as you will see this look a lot better so now if i hover over every element this should uh, animate which is cool and if we scroll we should get seven elements because that's how many we have in the database if i was to uh, let's say change arcade here so let's find in the database so this is the title let's arcade one two three and somewhere we need to click save and if i refresh super quickly arcade one two three which is pretty cool and just to show you let me zoom out 200 percent and just to show you this is how it should look like but also if i go down on mobile we should have three elements here to start with they were scrollable then we should go to four elements as you can see and then it will go back to six elements and so on and these are the breakpoints that we added pretty much here if you don't like them you can adjust them and change the design to suit your need but this is pretty much done if i right click and format it save it just make sure that you hover over the elements and have a look at the links they will look great of course we need to create the page after this uh, which is fine so if i click on it it's just going to give us 404 so category atari which is fine and then we can maybe display the uh, games from atari and so on in this part of the video we're going to build the categories on our homepage. so essentially we want to list we want to list a specific category and then list the games within that category to get started let's have a look at the database first of all so i'm under the category table and as you can see every single category has an id title and so on now i was thinking of querying every single category by id because the id will never change but sometimes you might end up changing the title to something else like I have here one two three so I'm gonna update this and so on so let's have a look at how we can do this as a separate component let's go back to Visual Studio Code and let's jump into our components folder here and let's create a new one I'm gonna call it game category 
as we're going to be displaying as we're going to be displaying the categories individually and then this is going to be jsx like so and let's copy this from the footer and paste it here right so let's change this a little bit so game category and then let's remove this and just wrap everything into a section like so and then all category is going to be here by id save it now we need to go into our home page which is going to be under source app and then in the main we have our home page so into here we need to import this component import and then game category and let's move this so we're a little bit more organized here under the other two components and now we can grab the game category and insert it after our slider here so game category and close if we save this and save this also we should be able to go to our website and if i zoom out a little bit if i scroll down you will see that we have our newly created component here category by id let's start by doing the query and then maybe we can display the query on the pages so we can see what we're working with and then we can do the design stuff later so essentially when i select a category from the database let's say a kate i also want to bring the games with it so we're basically selecting a kate and then we want to query all the games that have category selected as a kate in this case i think in the yeah we have eight in this case and then we have four in nintendo 64 so maybe we can use nintendo 64 as another example let's go back to the website here and let's go back here and let's create another query so we need to go to lib game queries and in order to do this you can simply hold control and click on the folder here and that would bring us to the queries so i'm going to make some space here for our new query and let's create it right here so let's start by doing export async function and then we need to put the name the name is going to be get games by category and i don't know whether to put category id let's do category id as a parameter i'm just going to put category id so we are basically going to pass a number from one two three four and depending on the number we put we're going to get a different category let's go back and then here we need to do return await and then we can do prisma dot category dot find unique and then inside here our query is going to be a little bit more complex than the rest but we're going to do where we have the id of the category id that we're passing and then we want to do select the title And the reason I want to select the title is because above all games, we're going to have the specific title of the category, for example, a Kate. And I want to be able to grab this easily. So there are a couple of ways of doing this, but I think this is, this might be the best way. Sorry. So this is going to be select. And then inside here, we're going to select the title to true. And then I want to bring the games of this category. So we're going to do games and then inside here we do where and i'm going to put a where close i want to bring all the games where they're actually published so if you go back here to the database let's say you add in a new game today but you haven't uh, come up with the description or the thumbnail and you don't want to publish it yet you could set the publish to false and then that won't display on the front end of the website so people won't be able to play it so that's why i'm doing the where query and we can do published equals uh sorry set to true like so and that's it now let's test our query i'm going to grab the name and we need to go to the page here this is where we're going to query it and then let's create it under all categories here we're going to do another one const and i'm going to do category and then this is going to be equals await and then we await for the get games by category id and then we start the function like so but we also need to import this now we've already imported this get games categories from lib game queries so essentially instead of duplicating this and adding one more here what we can do is just put a comma and select the other one as well and now we have both of them here technically speaking now if we grab category 
And if I wanted to display super quickly, just for testing purposes, I mean, we can, you know what, let's just pass, let's just pass the object straight away into the component. So I'm going to do category, and then this is going to be equals in curly brackets category. You can name this whatever you like, but now the data should be available in this component. So if we go to this component, let's grab the category, go to this component here of game category, we should be able to pass the data by inserting it here in curly brackets like so. So let's test this. I'm going to put, uh, let's do pre and then, oops, and then we can do curly bracket JSON dot stringify. And then inside here, we can put our category and no, and then two like so. And hopefully that would display in a kind of like a nice JSON format. So let's go back. Let's go back to the website. And we're getting find unique is undefined. Okay. Prisma category find unique. Okay. And the reason for this is let's have a look super quickly. We probably didn't pass an ID. So yeah, category uh, get gains by ID. We haven't got, we haven't passed an ID here. So essentially we do need to select one and let's select the first one here, which was, if I remember, arcade. Okay. Let's select that one. So we need to select one. Here we go. Save. And now let's see whether this fixes the issue. Yep. Okay. So we've selected the arcade and as you can see, we're getting the title here, which is very easy for us to grab and use for heading. And then we have the games from this specific category, starting with uh, Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, Asterix, Disney's, Hercules, and so on. Perfect. This is exactly what I want. And now we can just make a loop and then display them in a nicely manner. Now you can do exactly the same thing just to show you. If I was to change the ID to two, it's going to grab the next category, which is Atari. And unfortunately, I don't have any games here. But I did mention that Nintendo 64 has some games, so this is going to be 5. So if you put 5 instead, just for testing purposes, let's do 5, save it, and now we should get Nintendo 64, and then we have the games, which is perfect. Let's finish this, and I'm going to talk about maybe more efficient way if you're going to display multiple categories, you don't want to do multiple queries. So you might end up uh, doing this a couple of times, change this to arcade and then putting it to one and that can definitely work and then you change this to nintendo and change the id and that can definitely work but you'll probably end up doing a couple of queries which might not be a big deal anyway anyways we'll come back to this in a second so let's go back super quickly and focus on this i'm going to go back to one because it has the most games so now if we concentrate on the game category component we can make it look a little bit better so let's start with the top here and i'm gonna create kind of like the heading of the section so let's create a div with the class name of flex and then justify between and then we're going to have a gap of four between the two items. The two items here are going to be the heading, so H2. And this is going to be a class name font display. Because it's a heading margin bottom of four. And then items center. So in order to grab our heading, we can actually use the category and then the title. Category dot title. And then hopefully, I wish I didn't delete the pre-tag. But hopefully we should be getting okay now as you can see perfect and now we can do a link to view all and i'm gonna add a chevron icon for this so let's go at the top here import and this is gonna be chevron right chevron right icon like so from here icons react 24 outline that's perfect let's grab it and now inside here we can create a link a a a href and then this link could be we might need to do it like this so it's going to be in single slanted quote category slash and then we can bring the category uh title oh in this case we might need to bring the slug as well yeah i think that's a problem one sec yeah, I think we're going to have to bring the slug as well. Apologies for this because the title uh, will work, but the title won't work. So where we have select, we might need to bring slug as well. And now we should have the slug available to us. So I'm going to do 
uh, dollar sign category and then slack like so this is gonna have a class name of text small font medium hover is gonna be underline and then the underline offset is gonna be set to four and then inside the link I'm just gonna say a view oh and then we need a little bit of space here and then we need to bring the chevron icon like so and then this is gonna have a class name of height four weight of four inline block like so and then text accent let's self-close this and save it let's go back and then you'll see that we have view all with a little chevron i wonder whether this it looks like it needs to be aligned a little bit better, but I'll leave this to you. It doesn't look too bad. That's fine. And if we hover over, you will see that the slug is also working here on the left corner, which is great. So we did manage to bring the slug. And now we can loop through the categories. Let's wrap them into a div with the class name of grid and then grid calls of two on small screens, on medium screens, and up we're going to do grid dash calls of three elements and then on large screens i'm gonna do grid calls of four and then a little bit of gap between all of them and we close inside here we can do our loop we can we can grab the categories and then we need to go into the games so games and then we need to map them so inside here we can do you can even do game or item let's do game and then we can do an arrow function and then inside here we need to loop through the games so let's do a link because we need when you click on a game to go to the specific game so you can play so href and this is going to be in curly bracket and single quotes slash game slash and then dollar sign and then game dot slug and then we do need that looks good we do need a unique key for each element that i've explained multiple times in the tutorial game dot id i'm gonna do and then this is gonna be a group the reason i added a group here is because of the hover effect that we might do later on so let's close the h tag here and inside here we need to bring some of the elements like the image so i'm gonna do a div with the class name of overflow hidden hidden and this is because i want to make the corners rounded large and then i'm going to do a little border and then border accent color accent secondary in this case and then margin bottom of two we can close this we can bring our image and then this can be from the next.js image i'm going to do image which will allow you to optimize the images if you haven't and we do need to include the image at the top here so import uh, image from next.js so image and then let's do source the source is going to be in single slander code game slash dollar sign curly brackets game dot image we're going to do the width of 3000 the height of 3000 the old of uh what will be the old for this one second um if I go to game, oh yeah, we don't have a friendly old tag, but uh, we can use the title. That's fine. And uh, just to show you, maybe you can do a quality here. And then if we set this to 80, uh, this will basically optimize the images for us, which is great. I did a thing that I've already optimized them manually, but you can do stuff like this if you want to mess around. And then let's give it a class name of width full. Height needs to be full object cover transition is going to be transform and then duration for all animation is going to be 300 milliseconds and then we're going to do group dash hover and then scale to 105 and i think that's it so if i put this on another line for you to see a little bit better we need to close the image now we can grab the category title which we use here at the top as well this is just nice to have i'm going to grab this and then we can do a paragraph and then this paragraph can have a class name of text small and then text accent and now we can put the category title for each game i mean you already we kind of already know but i think it adds a little bit of 
kind of like design to it. And now we can put the title finally here, H1, and this is going to have a class name of font medium to make it a little bit bigger, like so. And then this is going to be game.title. Save it. Let's go back. And now you will see that we have the games here, but all our teams are a little bit broken. Maybe this needs to be displayed as flex one second. So it would be flex justified between. Uh, and I believe this is because we wrapped everything in this div. Okay. So basically we have section and then this is the heading here. Like so. And then we have then the categories listed here, if that makes sense, into the second div. And that's why it's probably broken. Save it. Let's go back. And now we should see that we have a Kate and everything should be working. One more thing that I've noticed here is the border. Uh, so let me fix this super quickly. Again, I think I've done exactly the same thing as before. Where this needs to be wrapping only the image because I don't want the border on the to wrap the text here. So that's it. Sorry about that. Save it. Let's go back. And now, as you can see, everything is looking a lot better. And everything is dynamic here. So this comes from the database. Uh, all of these come from the database, of course. So technically speaking, if I was to go to the page here, and let's say we queried, I believe it was five, the one with most games, and saved it. If we go back, you should see that we're getting Nintendo 64. And we only have a couple of games in here, uh, which leads me to a good point, actually. If we go back to one, I never actually... Okay, I never limited this to display only four or eight games. So let's do that as well. I forgot about this because once you add more games, they're going to keep on going. All right, let's go back to the game crew here and sort this out. And we need to do inside games. We need to do the query here. So we need to limit it. So comma and then take, take, and then we put the number. Let's put two for now just to test it out. And if I go back, we should only get two records and now maybe we can limit it to eight here and that would be fine now okay that's absolutely fine and as i said earlier in the tutorial you could potentially go to your to your page here your home page and do different ones so let's say nintendo uh let's put five and then i can do exactly the same here uh the same component but put, put different data we're grabbing the nintendo data here and save it. So now we have a Kate here and we need to push it a little bit. We need to push uh, the whole container here a little bit because they're close together. And then we have Nintendo 64, as you can see, working absolutely fine. Now this is fine, but the problem here is that you're potentially doing multiple queries here. And if you need to do this a couple of times, obviously you might not wanna do that. Um, and there is a way of doing that, but I wonder how to show you. So I'm going to remove this and let's just make a little bit of space between the section here. I'm going to do margin bottom of four. Maybe that'll do the job for now. I'm going to save this and I'm not going to ruin what we've done already. Instead, I'm just going to show you a very basic example of what you can do. And I'll leave this here. Let's say we want to select multiple categories in one query. You will do something like this. Const selected categories, selected category IDs. And then inside here, you'll put the IDs that you want to select. So let's say one, two, and five in this example. And, and these are the only categories that we want to fetch. And then you do another query very similar to this. So you do, let's do cons multiple categories like so. And then this is going to be equals a weight. And then you do your multiple categories. For example, let's do get games by selected categories. And then we can pass the categories inside here like so. And that's it. Now you'd have to create this function here. So let's grab it, save this by the way, go to game queries, and maybe we can create it around here. And you would do something like export and then async function. And then the name would be get games by selected categories. You put the parameter here 
which can be simply categories like so now you can do a, a very similar and now the query might look a little bit different but we need to do return and then await and then prisma dot category dot find many and then inside here we can start with where we put id in and then maybe we can put instead of categories we put we can put category ids like so copy we'll put the categories ids in here that we want to fetch and then we put games we grab the sum published is set to true and then after we're here we want to select title to true i think we also want to select the slug to true we want games games in this case sorry where they're published true and then we need to go after the where we need to select and now we need to select uh, pretty much everything from the game that we need so the id can be set to true the title oops the title can be set to true Select description, image, game underscore URL, and then created that true. And now that should be our query. So if I was to save this, let's hope, hopefully, we won't have any errors uh select categories is not defined yep that's correct we need to go to the page here and we need to insert it inside here so we insert in the function and now we can actually use it so if i was to grab the multiple categories and let's put them let's save this super quickly uh invocation ids are undefined okay so the id is undefined uh undefined so select category by ids and then category by IDs. I think this needs to be gone. The curly brackets, let's me check one more time. So we have in one, two, three, five. Yep. Prisma category invocation. Published, created that category. Okay. I think publish category and create uh, categories. Um, you know what? Let's remove them. Okay. And that seems to work. That's fine. Great that we don't have this in here. Or do we? Okay, this is created that is not working. And um, this is a little bit strange. And I believe. And it looks like I've made a spelling mistake, which is so annoying. But uh, I'll try to uh, point this in the video so you can change it straight away. But created that is misspelled. We have to go to the to the schema prisma here and yeah, change this. Add and now we can migrate the database. Oh, that's annoying. So let's save this and let's do. Prisma migrate dev dash dash name in it and let's hope that this fixes it for us. You're about to drop the column created that, that's yes. And now if I do Prisma, MPX Prisma Studio, if I go back, oops, you already opened it, we have created that. Okay, these mistakes happen, no worries. Now this should hopefully work. You created that, save this query, refresh, and get category menu. Let's go back. That doesn't sound right, so let's stop the server super quickly. Uh, not this one, no. 
prism uh, this one here let's stop it super quickly this one here let's stop it super quickly that doesn't seem right sometimes these things happen and now yep so these things happen from time to time sometimes you just need to stop and start the server and as you can see it's all working now sorry about that and let's right click and format this document so i don't know where i was but to wrap things up basically we can go to the page here and let's just display this and then, uh, just to show you what's happening basically uh, and i'm gonna do in pre so pre and then we can do json.stringify and then we put the stuff from the database no and then two and then close it okay now this is one query that we're getting essentially three different categories so if you go back you will see that we're getting a Kate and if I scroll down a little bit we're getting Nintendo 64 and so on that's two. Oh, this is because we don't have any games in the other ones but this is how you can do one query and get more games and then you have to kind of like modify your um, you have to modify your component here a little bit you could potentially grab the multiple games in here and then do multiple games categories and then maybe select the first object let's have a look and that would also work and now if i was to do let me remove this if i was to do one more we can select the second object that is in there and that would also work and so on um, you can further modify this but just as an example i'm going to leave this those two here and i want to leave my old one like so and remove it okay sorry about this the spelling mistake put me off a little bit but uh this should be good to go and now we can move on to the next part to make the database calls concurrently so uh, essentially here we are getting all the categories but we have to wait and then we can run the next query here and this can be bad because if this one takes longer then it's going to block everything else and in order to fix this what we can do is run them concurrently instead using promise all so i'm gonna comment this just so you have the example but essentially all you need to do is const and then inside brackets you can get the all categories here and then you can grab the category and then this is going to be equals await promise all dot all like so and then inside brackets one more time we'll do the first function get game categories so we'll do that and then we'll do the second one here let's grab with the one inside like that and then we just and then we just close this and actually this just needs to be a comma sorry about that and that's it so now this should work just like before but they're gonna run concurrently in this part of the video we're gonna create the game page so essentially if you scroll down here we have a couple of games and let's say we clicked on street fighter this should lead us to a page where we can actually play the game and if you have a look at the euro here we have game and then we have the slug so i'm gonna use the slug in order to create the database if you go to the database super quickly you will see that if i was to query this specific game street fighter based slug then we should be able to get all the other data in order to insert the game and make it playable on the screen so let's do that next Let's go back and let's create the game page and i'm going to show you how we can create the slug page as well so if we go back to a project open the explorer let's minimize everything and let's go to source app main and then from here we need to create our game page so game and then inside the game in order to make the slug work we need to create one more folder and then in brackets we can just put something like slug and now this is going to create the page for us. Let's create the page file inside the slug. Make sure that it's inside here. So page.jsx. And now we can do the default export. Let's remove this. So export default async and then function page. And then inside here, we're going to grab the parameters. And now we can return now we can just do an empty div for now and let's just say that we have 
game page here. And now let's save it. If I go back to the browser, this automatically refreshed and that's why we're now getting game page. Let's go back to home and let's click on another game. For example, let's click on Cadillacs and dinosaurs. And as you can see, this also works. And now we can query the database by using the slug. In order to grab the slug, we can go back and here where we have the parameters, this is how we can actually grab the parameters from the page. So if I was to console log parameters, whoops, params like so, then let's save this. Let's go to the page, refresh, and let's go to the terminal here. And now you should see that we're getting slug, Cadillacs and dinosaurs. So now we can use this to our advantage to grab the slug and create the database. Let's have a look at how we can do that. We'll need to create a new query first of all. If we go back to the explorer and then lib and then game queries, let's make a lot of space and let's focus on the new query inside here. So let's do export async and then this is going to be function and we can call our function get game by slug like so and then inside here we can pass the slug which i'll show you in a second and then let's do the query so return await prisma dot and we need to query the game table and now we can find a unique record so find unique and then inside here we can do the query so we're going to do where and then we're going to do curly bracket slug this equals the slug that we pass from the URL. That's it. And now we can also include the category. So let's do include. And then this is going to be categories and then set to true. And that's it. That's how simple our query can be. Save it and let's insert this into our game.jsx. So at the top here, we're going to do import curly bracket get game by slug and we can import this from at slash lib game queries and that's it and now we can use it so inside here we can say const game equals await and then get game by slug like so and we need to pass the parameters so in order to pass just the slug we can grab params and then you can do dot slug because if you remember here we have the slug so we can grab it like that and that's more or less it here now let's make sure that uh, everything is working and if you go to the page we're getting this weird error which says error invalid prisma game not find unique invocation now the problem here is that if i go to the database the problem here is that the id is unique and we can uh, query using them but the slug isn't which is my mistake early in this tutorial and if I go to the prisma and if you go to schema.prisma we need to set the slug to be unique because we can't really have two identical slugs anyway so in order to do this we can do at unique then we'll need to update the schema so I can go back to my database here and then I can do Let's close this, let's clear it, and then let's do double up and we'll do npx, npx prisma migrate dev. You can put the name and I'm just gonna leave it as it is and in it. Now let's see what this comes up with. And then it's gonna say warning for current data source, a unique constraint covering the column slug on the table game will be added. If there are existing duplicate values, this will fail, which, which is fair enough. And now we need to press yes. And that's it. If we go back, let's go here. And if we go back to the browser, um, now let's try to refresh. Okay. Sometimes when this happens, all I have to do is to go back here to where we are running the development environment, stop this, stop the process and rerun it. And that should fix the problem. So here we go, starting. It's gonna, now I can refresh. Hopefully, it should work. Okay, and it's now working. We can query the database. Now, let's display the data on the page super quickly. So, I'm going to remove this and then let's remove this. And if you wish to display the data on the page here, 
we can do the standard trick with pre or you can console log it we might as well console log it this time let's just do console.log and then we'll do game like so save it and if i go to the console you will see that we are getting the game with id of one the title of cadillacs and dinosaurs this is one of my favorite retro games by the way the slurk is here and basically we have everything that we need plus the category which is pretty cool and now we can use all this data in order to make the game run and let's go back and let's just build a little bit of the page before we get started with the interesting stuff but uh, in this situation there are a couple of ways we can build this page we can actually build it with um, on server side only or you can do or you can do it with use client i'm probably going to build it with use client and have it as a separate component but maybe i can show you the server example as well super quickly so let's do that first of all i'm going to create a little navigation on top of everything so i'm going to do nav and then this is going to have the class name of rounded md width full and then margin bottom of four let's close this and then this is going to have ol which is order list and then this is going to have a class of list rest list reset and then flex we're going to make some breadcrumbs so list and then inside here we put a link href and then this one is going to be our home so we can put slash here and just put home like so now let's duplicate this two more times maybe one two and this one is going to be and this one actually it's not going to be a link this one is going to be a span let's close it and then this plan is just going to have a slash kind of like a separator and then we can do class of text dash gray dash 500 and then mx of two okay then we can bring the game category title so inside here let's do this with curly bracket single slanted quotes and then we can do in fact we don't need this we can just do game dot categories select the first object and then question mark and then just because if it doesn't exist we don't want to get an error and then we'll do title like so let me just test this to see where it works okay we're getting home and home that's fine so essentially we just need to change this to the title let's copy it and paste it here but this will need to have a slash okay so my okay so we have a cade which is good but this link won't work like that oh no it seems to work so we have game and then slash arcade all right let's leave as it is that might just work and then i'm gonna do one more list here let's copy this one here let's copy this list here paste it and now inside here we're just gonna bring the game title so game dot title like so and save if we go back it looks like there is a little bit of space in here let's just fix that let's remove the mx2 and now we should have home arcade which is the uh, which is the category of this game and then the game title let's go to another one super quickly home let's go to street fighter and then we have arcade street fighter now let's talk about the game emulator that i'm going to be using the game emulator that i'm going to be using is called emulator js if you go to emulatorjs.org from here you can click get started and you can have a look at how you can use it now i'm going to show you pretty much everything that you need to know about it but the most important bit from here that you need to know is the course if you go to course from here you'll be able to see some of the cores that you'll be able to use and i'm not familiar with all of them but for example nes games snes games um meme -ME 2003 arcade psx psx so there is a lot that you can use atari you can use sega you can use you can use all of these cores but make sure that when you add a core that you download a game specific for that core and let's say cadillacs and dinosaurs and if you go to category you see that i've used the category arcade here and the core i've set to arcade so the core needs to match exactly the same thing as they say in here so as you can see i've used i've used arcade here so the food arcade core and that's why i've used arcade and then you see atari 2600 meme -ME, 2003 snes so this is very important and then you need to download the zip files 
for those specific cores, otherwise your game will not work. So saying this, saying this, let's go to get started. The way I'm going to be using it is pretty much the way they've done it here. Maybe we can do one on server side like this. And then I'm going to show you how you can do one on the client side as well. The thing that we need to find is the CDN, which I cannot see. Home, open on GitHub maybe. And then from here, CDN, here we go. Okay, so here is the CDN. If I click on it, we should be able to see cdnemulated.js.org version and then data. I've already got a version for this, so I'm going to show you. All right, let's go back and let's build on this. Inside here um, is where we're going to insert the game emulator. And let's create a new component. So I'm going to go to component. Let's give it a name of game emulator dot jsx and now we can insert it into our game dot jsx here so let's do import game emulator from at slash components slash game emulator like so and now we can use it copy it and we can do it here game emulator like so and then since this is going to be a client component i don't want to create an api i'm just going to pass the data from here so game we can do we can do game here and then in curly brackets we pass the game data and now i can grab this save it and then let's go to our game emulator in here and let's build it super quickly so this is going to be a client component so use client and then let's import use effects import react and then in curly brackets we can do use effect from react like so and that's it and now this is going to help us to insert some of the data for example if you go one more time to the official documentation if we click on get started and if you click on get started one more time here if you have a look uh, if you scroll down this is essentially what we need to rebuild but the issue here is that if we click on react or single page application if you have a look at this to embed within react or single page application the only way is to embed an iframe into your page and run this emulator within that iframe. You cannot run directly on your page because this will break single page applications. And this is why I was avoiding using link from Next.js because it will break. And that's why I, I will show you how I managed to do it. This was a little bit tricky, but essentially we need to use kind of like this code to get started. We essentially need to insert these, this script and we need to insert the CDN to load it into this div. So I'll show you how we can do that. If we go back, let's uh, continue. So let's do export default and then function. And then this is going to be game emulator. And then inside here, we can grab the game data, which we've passed from here, from the database. So now inside here, we can just do return. And then we can return a div for now. So from here, we're going to do some magic and insert the script. Let's do use effect. And then we need to do a arrow function. And now we can use window dot. And now if you have a look at the documentation here, we need to grab the EJS player, EJS core and game URL and so on. I'll show you. So window EJS underscore player equals and then in quotes, we put hashtag game. Close this and now we can put window dot ejs underscore game url and then equals and then this is going to be the url of the actual game so in this case i'm going to put single slanted quotes slash and then dollar sign to bring a variable and this is going to be game dot game underscore url from our database so this is where essentially our game is going to come from for example if we go back here to the database you will see that currently i've stored this game under dino.zip and as of now, I've got it in my public folder and then game. And then inside here, I've got it inside here, as you can see, Dino.zip and Mario.zip. Essentially, this will need to be moved to the cloud because otherwise your next application will become too big. But for testing purposes, this is the easiest way to get it done. So let's go back and let's do window.ejs underscore core and then equals slanted quotes dollar sign game dot category categories zero dot core 
So that's why I included the categories inside the game query here. If you remember super quickly, sorry for jumping so much, but essentially included this and maybe I can, and maybe I can show you earlier. Essentially we have the categories in here and we can use the core from the category, which is in this case, okay, this is very important. And now we have a little bit more left to do. So window dot EJS underscore path to data equals and then we add the cdn which is https slash slash cdn dot emulator js.org slash stable slash data slash okay we have that and now we need to insert this script onto the page const script equals document dot create element and then we create the element of script on the page. And now we can use the script dot source to put the actual source of the script. So we're going to do the source of the script. So we're going to do, so we need to grab this and inside double quotes, we need to do this, but we need to also add loader dot JS. And then we can put this script to be asynchronous. So script dot async equals to true like so. And let's close this as well. And now we can do document dot body dot append child to append it on the page. And then we append the actual script from here. And now we need to put comma and then curly brackets for use effect here. And I believe that's more or less it. So now let's format or document here a little bit. I'm going to give this a class name or background name, and then let's do it as flex justify center. And then this is going to be rounded dash XL. And now inside here, we can do div with the style of double curly bracket with I'm going to set to 640 from the documentation pixels. And then I'm going to set the height to 480, 480 pixels, and then max width is going to be set to 100% to make it responsive. And let's close this div. And then inside here, we're going to create the final div with the ID of game. And now we have closed this div. This should look very familiar to the actual documentation here. Uh, I don't know where it is. Here we go. This should look very familiar to the actual documentation. And if you go to our website, we should see our first game actually working. Let's refresh. As you can see, it says start game, which is awesome. And now if I click start game, it's going to say downloading core, and then it should run in a second. Now, to be completely honest, uh, I don't know too much about this, but you can put it full screen and you can play it with your keyboard. I believe that it also works with uh, touch controls as well. You can change the controls from here. There is a lot to it, but I don't know everything about it. If that makes sense, you can actually export and save files, import and save files. This is absolutely amazing. It's just an amazing project. So give it a like. And we do have one more game, which is Mario. So let's go back to home and let's go back to... Where's Mario? I actually can't see Mario because it's in another uh, category probably. So I don't know what it is. Category, it's going to be Nintendo. All right, we might as well just copy the select super quickly. Super Mario and try it. So I'm going to click on this one, game, and then let's put this one here. And now we have game Nintendo 64, Super Mario, and then the game should start playing. And just to show you, let's go down to mobile. As you can see, this is fully responsive. I don't know how well you'll be able to play on mobile, but uh, it seems to work anyway. So this was a way of doing it by using a use client component, but I'm going to copy and paste super quickly, just so you have an example of how you might be able to do it by using it on the server side. So essentially you would recreate this page here. Let's uh, navigate, let's do that. So essentially you would recreate this page here. You might as well copy it. Oh, you know what? I'm just gonna create a new page and this won't work, but it's just gonna, I'm just gonna copy and paste it for you. So I'm gonna do page server example. 
index.js6. Now I'm going to copy and paste the code for you just so you can see it. Paste in here and it's going to be very similar. I, I'm pretty sure that I did test this and it worked, but it's going to be very similar to what we done earlier. And essentially we're going to do exactly the same thing as before with the div. But in this case, we use the script from Next.js to insert the emulator and to insert the loader will be exactly the same thing. So I'm going to put this in the GitHub repository so you have it and if you want to experiment and now we can save this and focus on the next bit. In this part of the website, I wanted to show you how we can change the metadata of our pages. So this is going to come dynamically from the database. And for example, let's pick up the single game here and let's have a look at how we can change it. If you go to the official documentation and look for metadata from here, you'll be able to see how you can do it with static metadata and dynamic metadata. Since all data comes from the database, we're going to need to do the dynamic one. And then if you have a look at here, we're going to have to create this generate metadata function, pass the parameters from the URL so we can query the database and then insert the title, maybe open graph, description and so on. There is a lot of options. I'm only going to do maybe title and description, but you'll get the idea of how to do it. And essentially the output will be something like something like this. It's going to generate the metadata. I think there is a better example here. So here we go. Title is going to generate the this title on the website. And then uh, if you have a look more down here, you'll be able to see. Yeah, here we go. I think this is a better example actually where we have the title the OG title here and the OG description here. Let's do that super quickly. I'm going to go back to the website and let's go back to the game.jsx inside or game slug and then page.jsx. So from here, we need to create a new function and this is going to be called export async function and then generate metadata. And then inside here, we put the params just like before we grab the parameters from the URL here. So Cadillacs and dinosaurs in this case, so we can do params. And now in curly brackets, basically we can do exactly the same query. So copy it, paste inside here. We can do const game equals await get game by slug params dot slug. Let me space this out. And now we can grab the title from the database by doing const title equals and then game dot title like so and and then maybe we can add something to this title to make it a little bit better so we can do maybe with a space here dash the next game platform or if we don't get the title we can put something for as default so maybe the next game platform retro game something like that and now we just need to return this title so we're going to do return and then inside here, we'll put the title and that's pretty much it. If I save this and if I go back to the website here, you will see that we now have Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. And this is because this is the title for the game. If you look at the database here and we can do exactly the same thing with the description, uh, with an image and so on. So for the description, you will do something similar. I'm going to all shift and down this to copy it and I'm going to do description. And then you can do game dot description, or you can put like a default description here. So maybe like description, but obviously don't put that, but I'm just going to put it as default, change this to something else. Maybe discover the best, maybe let's do the best free retro games or something like that. And that would do the job. And now we can grab the description with a comma here and with a comma here, we can add it. And technically speaking, if I was to go to the website and if we do control and U or command and U, then you should be able to see the description. If we do control and F description, it's all in one line here, but as you can see, this is the game description and this comes from the database here, which is going to be, where is it? This is the game description. If let's change it to, let's say Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. So let's do play Cadillacs and Dinosaurs for free or something like this. But this is actually, if I save this record and if I go back and refresh this, you will see that he says play Cadillacs and Dinosaurs for free. Obviously this description was designed to be displayed on the cards, maybe underneath here, or maybe under the cards here, but what you can do in the future, you can potentially create more fields 
specific for SEO purposes. For example, this image was specifically created for the thumbnails here, but you could create an image for Twitter, for example, for social media, for example. I don't know where they are in here, but but here we go. If you do open graph, you could create a specific image with a specific size and insert it like that and so on. Now let's move on to the next section. In this part of the video, we're going to set up the commenting system. Every single game on all platform will have its comment box. And for this, I'm going to be using a platform called discuss.com. You might have already used it or seen it before on many websites. And if we go here under pricing super quickly, you will see that they do have a basic version, which I'm going to be using for this specific website. Now, the problem with the basic version is that they do add some sort of ads, I believe, on it. And also, you don't really own your comments. I'm sure that they're going to be using them for marketing purposes and basically kind of like data harvesting, which isn't great. But at the same time, it's an easy way to have really nice commenting section. So if you wish to do this, follow along and if not you can skip this section for the people that want to build this make sure that you sign up and then go to your site admin from here we need to create a new site so click here on your site and then new from here let's choose organization radis dev organization for me the website name is going to be the next game form I don't know, v2 or whatever and then this is going to give you a unique url that you can use but also you will be able to add your custom URL from here. Now for the category, let's choose games and then create site. This will lead us to select a plan, scroll down and select the basic plan from here. Now the platform that we need to use is going to be React. Click on React. And now we need to install Discuss React. Let's copy this, go to the terminal, close everything here and do, let's clear this and do right click npm install dash 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 save discuss dash react. Now let's do npm run dev and let this start. I'm going to go back to my website. And if we go back to source, app, game, slurk, and then page.jsx, we're going to be inserting or comment just after the game emulator. So basically here, let's put comment, save them, make sure that it pops up here. And this is where we're going to create a new component. So to create a new component, go to component, create a new file, and let's call it discuss dot JSX. Inside here, we can convert this into a client component. So use client. We need to import the package that we just installed. So let's go back and import it like so. And now we need to do export default function, and then we can call it discuss. We're going to pass a couple of properties in a second, but before we do that, let's finish everything else. So return and then inside here, we're going to put the component of discuss embedded, but I'm just going to copy the one from the documentation here like so and paste it. Right click format document. And then from here, the first thing that I'm going to do is change this to EN for English. You can go to the documentation and have a look at your language. And let's remove this. And then from here, if we have a look, we have a short name for a website, but we also have a config. This is what's going to create the unique commenting sections for each individual game. So every single game will have, will have a URL, unique ID and a title that we can pass through the database. Let's do that. Save this. Let's go back to game.jsx where we are getting the data from the database. So await get games by slug. We can use this to input the data into our component. So let's insert our component, import discuss from add components slash discuss like so. We can grab it and replace the comments here. So discuss, make sure that you close it. And then inside here, we're going to pass the parameters from the database. So let's grab game and we need to pass URL. And this is going to be game.slug. But because this is only giving us the slug, we kind of need to import the, the full URL of our website. And now there are a couple of ways of doing this. We could have centralized in our .env file. So let's go to our .env. And then inside here, we can do next underscore website underscore URL. And then we can put all URL. So HTTPS and then your website.com something like that save it and we can grab this and then we can insert it inside here so i'm going to do in single slanted quotes dollar sign curly bracket process 
env and then the variable name which is next underscore website url and now we can put the full url which it will be game and then the slug which i can grab from the database by doing dollar sign curly brackets game dot slug perfect so that's going to pass the url then we're going to have the identifier and this is going to be the id of the game so we can just do game.id from our database and the last thing that we need is the title so title is going to be an easy one game.title from our database one more time and save this now we need to get those elements and bring them inside here so we're going to have euro identifier and then title and then title like so and now we can use them so grab this remove everything from here we put our own url we put the identifier of this specific game and then the title of this specific game as well and save everything should be fine here we could potentially wrap this in a suspense so if this takes a little time to load you could create a nice loading screen but uh, i'm gonna do a very basic version of it so let's do import suspense from react whoops remove this and now we can grab suspense and the basic usage would be to wrap our commenting system here so suspense and then we can do fallback and then inside here you can make a nice component that loads or you can just simply do a paragraph saying loading game dot 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 and now close this and wrap the suspense like that right click format and this should work save this save this save your env go back to the website here and refresh okay and now if you get this error you probably need to install prop types so if we copy this and put it in google and search for it you will see prop types here and we probably need to install this as well so let's grab it from here go to a terminal here and let's do clear npm install dash dash save prop dash types press enter npm run dev and now that this is compiling let's go back and we should get our website working so sometimes this does take a few a moment to load initially but once um, once it's all done you will see that it's working now you will see that it's all working now and it's looking pretty good actually the only thing that we'll probably need to do is add a little bit of margin here but that's absolutely fine you can always do that maybe class name here margin bottom or four or something like that and that should do the job that didn't seem to work at all but uh maybe we do it on the actual components or something or maybe we even wrap it but um how do we do it let's let's do it div and then i'm just gonna wrap in a div maybe and then let's give it a class name or margin bottom eight let's see if this works okay no now this needs to be margin top now of eight let's see if this works uh yeah that seems to work so i'm sure you can figure this out but as you can see this looks pretty good now you can upvote this specific game let's try it so i've upvoted this specific game but if we go to another one let, let's say we go to let's say we go to this one here unfortunately i don't think there will be a game here but if we go here you will see that we don't have the upvote for this game which means that every single game will have its unique commenting system and by the way this is under localhost so don't worry if things don't work correctly with the commenting system but once you set it up on your uh, custom domain name and you deploy your website it should be all good to go and now we can move on to the next section the next thing that we're going to do is the page for the categories essentially we do have a couple of categories here but you might also want to display them on a specific page where you can view all of them so if we go to view all here you will see that we're going to category and then we have 404 because we haven't created this page let's go back to our website here let's go back to visual studio code explorer source app main and then here we're gonna create a new folder called category and then inside this folder we're gonna create a new page called page.jsx this should be fairly simple let's start by creating our page so export default async function and then this is gonna be called page 
we're not going to pass any parameters in here and we just need to return something to start with so return and then inside here a diff for now and then this is going to be categories save them make sure that this works here we go we have categories and now we can list them so this is going to be fairly simple we need to we need to import the we already have a query that imports categories and let's go to our lib and then game queries and then from here i probably need to type this up and from here i'm going to do right click and format because everything is a little bit messy but essentially we could reuse this get game categories here unless you want to do something special for the home page where you can limit it uh, that would be fine or you can create one function that does both if you don't provide a number maybe you don't limit it and so on so let's get this one from here and let's import it and let's do import get game categories from and then this is going to be at lib slash game queries like so and now we should be able to use it grab this and inside here we can do const categories equals await and then get game categories like so and we should be able to display them i've already showed you that how this works and how you can test this you can even console log if to speed up the process so console.log and then just do categories save this make sure that you go to the page here make sure that it's refreshed and then if you go to the server you should see your categories like this and you can loop through them let's go to the bottom and let's build this page super quickly let's remove this super quickly and then inside the div let's start by creating a nice title of h1 this is going to have the class name of font display text free excel margin bottom of four and it's going to say categories like so then we're going to have a div with the class name of grid and then grid calls of two on medium screens and above we're going to have grid calls of four on large screens and above we're going to have grid calls of five and then on extra large screens we're going to have grid calls of six and then we're going to do gap of four and then margin bottom of six like so and then we need to close this div and inside here is where we're going to loop through a list so let's do categories dot map and then inside here we can do game arrow function open close like so and inside here we can create a link so a href and this is going to link to a specific category which we're going to do later on so in curly brackets we're going to do single slightly quotes slash category slash then dollar sign game dot slug like so the key for this is going to be the game.id and then the class name is going to be group because i want to do the hover animation and let's make sure that we close the link and inside here is where we're going to have all details so div with the class name of overflow hidden rounded large border accent secondary and then border close this and then inside here we can add the image so img and then on a new line i'm going to do source equals in curly brackets single quotes dot category slash and then dollar sign game dot image like so width is going to be equals three thousand height is going to be equals three thousand you can do alt uh maybe for the alt we can do uh the title so game dot title like so and then i'm going to do a class name of w full height full object cover transition transform duration is going to be 300 group and let's do group dash hover and then scale to 105 and make sure that you close the image this is a self-closing tag here and then outside this div we're gonna create an h1 which is gonna have the game dot title and then we're gonna have a paragraph which is gonna have the game dot uh, description save them make sure you tidy things up save one more time go back and now we have our categories and if we check the responsiveness you will see that on 
tiny screens we have two on slightly bigger screens we then get whoop that's pretty big maybe maybe we can maybe we can put another query to start to kicking in earlier but then we have four and then so on that's not too bad and i'm going to consider this one as finished so essentially if you click on arcade this should go to category slash arcade and if we click on it you will see that it goes here but we don't have this page yet and we need to create this next so let's go here under category let's create a new folder and i'm gonna call this folder with bracket slug that's how it works in next.js and now inside here we need to do something very similar so i'm gonna do page.jsx and then we need to create our function to start with so export default async function call it page we will grab the parameters later so i'm gonna put them in curly brackets params save this let's build from here so return and then we can just return an empty div for now and this is gonna be category games like so save it let's go back and now you should see category games here so if i click on any of these say super nintendo you should see category games in here which means that our page is working and we can start building it now in this part we're going to look into the game categories so if we have a look at the categories here let's say we click on arcade and then this is going to lead us to category arcade inside here we want to list some of the arcade categories which is fairly easy to do but just to make it more interesting and to show you how we can do a simple pagination i'm going to do that now so let's go back to visual studio code let's go to the explorer and let's go to let's minimize everything let's go to source app main category and then slug inside here and we have the page to start with let's do the database query which is going to be a little bit more complicated so i'm going to go to explorer and then lib and then game queries let's make some space so we can focus on the new one that we're creating and then maybe we can call this one get games by category so I'm going to copy this one actually, paste it inside here. We have export async function and I'm going to do get games by category. And then here we're going to pass the category slug. And then the page is going to be equals one as default. So essentially all pagination is going to work by pages. If you're on the first page, you want to display 20 records, for example, then if we go on the second page, we want to this the next 20 page and so on but as default this is always going to be one and then inside here we need to do const skip equals page minus one and then times the items per items underscore per page like so and then we can put the items per page either here or we can pass them through the actual page i'm going to do them here now just so it's all together so i'm going to do const items per page is equals 20. now let's do the query and i want to get the games and also the total count so i can display it and we can do const games and then total count and this is going to be equals a weight promise all and then inside here brackets and then we can start with the first query which is going to be prisma dot game dot find many and then inside here we can say where categories sum where the slug is equals to the category slug which will pass from the actual page <clears throat> and then on the third curly bracket here just after where we can do skip and then skip is basically going to do this formula where it skips the page so if as i mentioned earlier let's say we're on the second page and it's going to give us the second row of pages so this is what skip is going to do and then we're going to do the last one which is going to be take and then this is going to take the items per page here 
and now we need to do our second query which is going to grab the uh, total count so let's do prisma dot game dot count and then inside here with curly bracket we're going to do where categories sum and then slug and then category slug like so and that's it both of our queries are done it will look like this and we just need to now do the total pages formula so let's do it around here so we can do const total pages equals math dot selly and then if you hover over this you see that this returns the smallest integer greater than or equal to its numeric argument so from here we need to put total count and then divided by the items per page and you'll see how this is going to help us a little bit later on with the pagination and the last thing that we need to do is return and we need to return the games is it games yeah games from here total count total total pages and we're gonna pass current page which is just gonna be equals the current page that we grab from here so whatever this is this is going to be our current page and that's going to help us quite a bit we do need to wrap these in curly brackets otherwise this won't work and that's looking much better now and our query is done if we save this right click and format it then let's grab the get games by category name copy it and let's go to make sure you save it and let's go to the category and the slug here page.jsx and now let's import it so import get games by category like so and then this is going to be from at lib game queries and now we should be able to use this inside here by doing const and then we can even get all of the elements that we're returning from here by doing games for example total pages current page and then this is going to be equals await and then get games by category like so and we need to pass inside this function the parameter slug so params let's grab this slug basically we're just grabbing the parameter from the euro which has the slug on and then the last thing that we're going to do here is the uh, page we also need to pass the page but we haven't created this so i'm going to create it around here so we're going to do const page equals pass int and this is how we're going to grab the current page so we're going to not only use params but we are also going to use the search param so let's do search search params and hopefully this will give us the uh, page number so I'm going to do search params dot page and then if we don't get a number we can default this or two one like so and now we're basically passing the number here and this goes to the query here as you can see and everything is looking good if we save this make sure that everything is working you're not getting any errors and everything is looking good here for me and let's start using some of this data to create the layout so everything is going to be wrapped in a div here no worries but uh, let's start with an h1 and then let's give this h1 a class name or font display text dash free xl margin bottom of four and let's capitalize it like so and this is going to say params dot slug so now if i save this let's go back and we should get a kate if you're under a kate if you go under tarry you should get a tarry and so on that's perfect let's go back and then here i'm gonna do a breadcrumb navigation so let's do nav the nav is gonna have a class name of rounded md width full and then margin bottom of four if you see something that is repeating quite a few times on the pages you could convert it into a component and pass some of the data for it here we need to do all an ordered list and then this is going to be a class of list reset flex and then we're going to have 
the list inside here and then the list is gonna have a link href and the link for the home page is gonna be just slash so home then we're gonna have one more link which is gonna be a separator so we're gonna do span and then this span is gonna have a class name of text dash gray of 500 and then mx2 which is margin left and right of two and then this is just going to be a slash like so save it let's go back and as you can see our breadcrumbs are starting to look better um let's do one more list so list and then this is going to be a class name of text gray 500 and then capitalize and then here we're going to do the param slug one more time slug and now let's have a look at how this looks like that's not too bad so we have home and arcade arcade is not clickable because we are on it but if we click on home we go to the home page and so on so let's click on arcade one more time just so we're here let me zoom in and then let's go back and let's uh, display some of the games so this is going to be very familiar one more time let's make some space here and then let's do it around here so i'm going to do div with the class name of grid and then grid calls dash two on medium screens and above we're gonna have grid dash calls three on large screens we're gonna have grid calls dash four and then on super large screens on extra large screens we're gonna have grid dash calls dash five and then gap between them is gonna be four maybe i should have done it with flexbox and it would have been a little bit simpler I'm not so sure, but this gives you the but this gives you the flexibility to choose whatever you want on specific screen. Anyway, so that's not too bad. And then inside here, we can start with the length of the games. So let's do games dot length, and then if the length is equals zero, then we can put question mark. And in brackets here, we can do paragraph of no result. But if we do get result. That's the column and then inside here we can display them games dot map and then inside here we can do game this is going to be a narrow function like so and now we can start looping through them so a href this is going to be in curly bracket and then sl single slanted quotes slash game slash dollar sign game dot slug we need to give it a key so key equals game dot id the class name is going to be group so i can do the animation on them and then we just wrap everything in, into this link so from here we're going to do a div with the class name of overflow hidden rounded dot large and border accent secondary and then we put the border margin bottom of two and close this div inside this div we're gonna add the image so img and then this is gonna have a source let's do it like this source equals curly brackets and then in single slant quotes game and then slash dollar sign game dot image and then from here we're gonna do the width of 300 the height of 300 and then what is gonna be i don't know maybe the game dot title and then the last thing that I'm going to do is put a class name of width form, height form, object cover, and then transition dash transform. Duration is going to be 300 milliseconds group hover. It's going to be scale to 105. And I think that's it. So close this. Oops, this is a self closing image tag. So let's remove this one. And then let's just close it here like so the div that is wrapping it is closing it and then after this div we're going to do h1 and then inside here we're going to do a class name of font medium and then this is going to take the game title like so save it okay so we have the arcade here and uh earlier i disabled the icons by the way just because uh the font wasn't working so i was trying to debug it but i've just added them back Anyway, so arcade is working here and uh, if we click on Nintendo, which is the only one that has four games, we should be able to see Nintendo 64 here and that's more or less it here. So if we go to a Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, you'll see that the game is working. I've already liked it. The comments are working. 
and the next bit would be to create the actual pagination so let's go back to arcade and let's create the pagination although we do not have that many records maybe we can do the pagination with less records just for testing purposes so let's do that this is going to be a little bit confusing but just after we load the games here let me just make sure that we wrap everything in this div and then this is going to be our pagination here so pagination make sure you save this and yeah we have the pagination here let's build it there so this is going to be a little bit confusing but hopefully you'll get it we're querying 20 items on individual page so when we have more than 20 items we're going to have more pages so we can do total pages if this is bigger than one then we can do and 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 display or pagination here to start with let's create a div with the class name of flex flex and then justify center and then margin top can be eight here let's close it make sure that you close the div as well okay inside this div we're going to create a nav and then this nav is going to have inline flex and then round it and this is going to have some shadow like so make sure that you close the nav like so and then inside the nav we're gonna do current page if current page is bigger than one bigger than one and and inside here we can do a link so a href and then this is gonna be equals curly brackets then slash category slash and then we're gonna do dollar sign curly brackets for arms slug and then we're gonna attach a parameter to this url called page which is going to be equals curly bracket and then whoops dollar sign curly bracket and then current page minus one like so let's give it some style uh, that's looking good let's give it some styling so class name of px3 py to round it l is going to be medium and then we're going to have border border is going to be reset to gray background is going to be set to white and then the text is going to be set to small font medium text is going to be set to gray of 500 like so and then on hover we can set it to background gray of 50 and i think that's going to be okay for the styling and then this is going to be our previous link so we can just do previous and say make sure that you don't have any errors and you shouldn't get the previous if your current if your url looks like this you shouldn't get the previous because we are not on the next page just yet the next bit will be to kind of like loop through the available pages but well, this is gonna look something like this in curly bracket and then uh bracket we're gonna do dot 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 array dot 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 array like so and then inside here we can put the total pages dot keys dot map and now we can map through the page numbers like so and then this is going to be a narrow function and then inside here we can basically loop through them and make them links so a href and then inside here we can do curly bracket single quotes uh, slash category slash dollar sign params dot slug and then again we're going to do question mark page equals and then this is going to grab the page num plus one this is going to also need a key because we're looping through them so we're going to do key equals and then the key is just going to be the page number plus one that's fine and then i'm going to give it a little bit of styling so this is going to have uh depending whether we're on this page i want to change the styling to uh, kind of like blue or gray so let's do it with curly brackets and then in single quotes we're going to do px for three but in y of two border and then border gray of 300 background white text small font medium and then we're gonna do the rest in a dollar sign curly brackets and then inside here on another line i'm gonna do if we're on the current page so equals 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 the num page number plus one then we want to display let's say question mark and then we want to change the 
styling so we're gonna say text indigo indigo of 600 and then background dash indigo it's gonna be 50 or we're gonna do text dash gray of 500 and then the hover is gonna be background gray of 50 and that's looking good and then here we can just display the page number inside the link so page number plus one and then we need to close the link as well so this is a self-closing tag did i do something wrong we need to close the link here sorry about that so let's do it around here and that looks much better save it let's go back make sure that there is no errors and we're not getting pagination just yet i'll show you why and the last thing that we need to do here is uh the next button so we've done the previous but let's do the next one so let's do current page and then if the current page is smaller than the total pages then we're gonna do and and brackets we need to do a href and then in curly brackets here we need to do single slant request slash category slash dollar sign parameter param sorry slug and then this is gonna have question mark page as parameter and then we're gonna do dollar sign and then the current page plus one like so and then this needs to have a class name of px3 padding of two rounded of r dash medium border and then border gray of 300 and then background white text small font medium text dash gray of 500 and then let's do it on another line here let's put this one on another line as well and then the last thing that we're going to do is hover background gray of 50 close this and then inside the link we can just do next like so and we close the nav and everything and that's it save it let's go back no errors which is a good sign but purely because we don't have enough records you can either go back to the database and add more but i'm not gonna do that so instead i'm gonna go back to the query here so let's go to the top here and find the query get gains by slug i'm gonna do control click on it and here where we have 20 i'm gonna do maybe four let's have a look save it and let's have a look now so we're getting array map is not a function its return value is not return. okay let's have a look at this super quickly so if we go to category and have a look at this array yeah so basically okay so i've put so i've started with a bracket and i've put the bracket here but the bracket needs to be just after keys instead and i think that's what's breaking it so save this let's go back and now you should see all pagination it looks a little bit ugly i think you'll need uh, maybe around the corners on the one here but as you can see it's actually here and now if we go to the second page let's say this is gonna say arcade question mark and it's gonna add this page parameter of two and then this is how it's gonna bring the next uh in this case four records and so on and if i click on previous it should go to one like so if we go to next that works previous works two works one works and as you can see all pagination works but uh, i will just need a little bit of styling on it and the last thing that i wanted to do here is to put this to 20 when we don't have enough records as you can see we don't have a pagination which is a good thing in this part of the video i'm going to show you how we can create a dynamic sitemap for our platform here so let's jump back into the visual studio code open the explorer and then under source app where we have the not found and the layout this is where we need to create a new file called sitemap.js and then from here we're gonna have to create a query to grab all the games so let's jump back into lib game queries and maybe let's copy one that is kind of like tiny and we can modify uh this one here will be fine let's make some space and basically i want to get all games get all games like so and that would do the job so from here we do return await prisma game and then find many and that's it this is gonna be fine now we need to grab this and insert it let's format this save it and then let's insert it into the sitemap so import 
get all games from and this is going to be in single sign codes add slash lib slash game queries and now we can use this to uh, loop through them in a nice format so essentially first of all let's do export default async function and then this function needs to be called sitemap we're not going to pass any parameters here so i'm going to leave it and then from here we need to do our database query so maybe we can do games so const games equals and then await get all games here like so and now we can loop through them by doing const items maybe equals games dot map and then here we're gonna do item for each individual game bracket curly bracket and now we need to loop through them in a nice friendly format so we're gonna have the url and the URL is going to be uh, in single sign quotes, dollar sign, curly brackets, process dot env dot next underscore website URL. URL. This comes from our dot env file here, next website URL. Let me close it. Make sure that I spell correctly. And then slash game. And then the game select. So dollar sign and item dot select like so that's fine then we can do comma and then last modified and then for this we're going to do item dot and then let's have a look super quickly at the database because because i don't remember created that is what i'm gonna use but we do not have updated that so maybe you can add this as well if you need to so i'm going to do last modified item dot created that add and then if you want to yeah created that that should be fine and then the change frequency is up to you i'm gonna set mine to monthly as the games won't be updated so often we need to put comma here so this doesn't get underlined and then the last thing that i'm gonna do is put one more comma and put the priority to 0 0.6 and that's it again this is really up to you how you want to do it um, see what's best for you and your platform but then the last thing that we need to do is return everything and what i like to do is for a couple of pages i like to return them manually for example in a curly bracket i would do something like euro and then i'll do the euro in here let's say https my website dot com and this is going to be let's say the home page so i'm going to do uh, last modified let's copy it from here and then I'm going to do new date. So it's always been up to date. And then the change frequency I'm going to do here daily. Again, this is really up to you how you want to do it. And then the priority, I'm going to change it to be one. And now I can do exactly the same thing for other pages like the about page, the contact page and whatever you have. So you could potentially just do it manually like about and so on. And then maybe you can put uh, weekly here. And then that would be fine. Okay, the last thing that we need to do is grab the items from here and attach them to those two. So essentially, we're going to do a comma here. And then we're basically adding a few more by doing items like so. Right click format just so we have the whole thing here. Save it. And now we should have a sitemap. If I go back to the website, if we go on the sitemap and this is something that I was working on, I think. So sitemap.xml and this should be generated automatically for us, as you can see. And the last thing that I want to show you here super quickly is how you can deal with the uh, caching. For example, as default, these are all cached. Obviously, under development, every time you refresh, the data will refresh as well. But when you build your website, this will be generated and it won't update unless you revalidate the actual page. To revalidate the actual page is super easy. All you need to do is export const revalidate. And then here you put the um, how often do you want to revalidate? And for example, if I'm going to put mine as one hour like so, so one hour. And if I save this, this will still work. Obviously, we need to build the project. And then after one hour, if something changes in the database, this will revalidate and show you the latest data and so on. The thing here, if you have a look super quickly, is that we're getting the website URL and then we're getting the 
uh, game and then the actual um, the actual game uh, full URL here, which is going to be good for SEO purposes. It will let search engines know where your games are. So if I was to copy this, well, because we're currently in the local host, I could have potentially have a uh, .env local and have this as local host, but it doesn't really matter too much anyway. Uh, that should be fine. And I think that's going to be more or less everything for our little platform here. If I come up with some bugs and fixes, maybe I'll add them just after this bit, or maybe I can stitch them up when it makes sense. Um, it's not an easy thing to do. It takes a lot of time and effort. That's why I had to cut some corners with the design and a couple of other bits. And uh, if you want to mess around with uh, the caching for the page, so one thing that I would suggest you look into is the unstable cache. Here we go. So under caching data with RM and database, you can actually use this to cache your database. So get post and stable cache, and then you do your database query, and then you can revalidate it whenever you want here. So essentially you'll need to replace some of the queries if you want to cache some of them. If you go to game queries, you can come here and replace some of them with the unstable cache. It seems to be working. I've used it uh, before some projects. And if you're struggling with this, just ask uh, any AI and it will help you sort it out for you. And I think that's more or less it. If we use link or pages might have been a little bit faster on uh, a load because it would have prefetched them. But because of the actual, uh, but because of the actual, the way the emulator works, we can't really use it otherwise. Uh, you'll probably hear the game still playing in the background if you go to another page. And so on test it and have a look. Maybe you can find a fix for it. That's going to be everything from this tutorial. If you liked it, consider liking this video. It would help a lot. Consider subscribing to my channel and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. That's everything for me. Bye. In this section of the video, we're going to focus on the admin route. So let's jump into Visual Studio Code and open the source folder app and then admin. From here, if you click on layout.jsx and open this, you will see that we started with some metadata. We created this file earlier in this tutorial and we started with some metadata for the title and description. And essentially at some point I did rename the website to Next Rivals, but it's not a big deal. I'm just going to keep it as it is. So Next Game Station and then maybe dash admin here. Save it for the main layout here. Essentially, all of our routes that are going to be created for the admin runs, like the login, the dashboard, will be inserted into this section using children. So essentially, all of our pages will be rendered inside here. Now you can put this as whatever you like. I can change it to a div, like so, and that would be absolutely fine. Everything will be wrapped in a div. Let's close this and let's create our first route under admin, which is going to be our login route. So login, and then inside here, we create a page.jsx like so, and then we need to do the export, default, async, and then function, page like so, and then inside here, and then we return. And I'm just gonna return an HTML5 section, like so, and then we can say login page. Save them, let's go back to the browser and go to localhost of port 3000 slash login. Press enter and here it is, our login page working. When we create the login form and once you authenticate, we can redirect to a dashboard page and instead of getting a 404 page when we redirect, we might as well create that dashboard page now. So let's copy this and let's go to the admin here, new folder dashboard. And then inside here, we create page.jsx and we paste the code and we just say dashboard. That would do for now, just so it doesn't go to 404 instead. Close this, close this, and just make sure that the dashboard works as well. So dashboard, and you should get dashboard here. Let's go back to the login, and let's focus on our authentication now. For the authentication, today I'm going to be using auth.js, and this is a free and open source library. And to get started, just click on the button Get Started here, and I'm going to be using the latest version as of today, which is next dash auth at 5.0.0 and currently they're on beta. Now, one thing that I would strongly suggest is that you go to the official documentation here and while you follow the video, follow the installation guide with me purely because uh, after the beta, if they change something, 
then the documentation will be obviously up to date. Well, when I publish the video, once it's published, it's published, I can't really do anything about it. Saying this, let's select our framework here, which is Next.js, and then let's start by following the installation guide. First thing that we need to do is to install Next off at beta. Let's copy the code here. Let's go back to PowerShell and let's close this. Let's clear everything by Control and L and let's paste the command by doing right click, which is npm install next dash off at beta. Once this is installed, do npm run dev. So we have our project working and let's go back and see what we need to do next. The next step would be to set up our environment variable and this is mandatory and it needs to be called off secret. So this is a random value used by the library to encrypt tokens and email verification hashes. So one way of creating this is by doing the command npx of secret and the other way is to do it manually. So I'm going to copy this and since we already have the .env file, I'm going to go and open it inside here and then we can tidy things up a little bit. We don't really need those comments. We don't really need the quotes here and then we can change our website URL to localhost of 3000 like so and now we can put our new variable name of auth underscore secret. So here is where you put your secret phrase. So your, your secret phrase like so and save. I'm going to keep as it is, but make sure that you do something more secretive than this and save it and close it. Let's go back. And then if you scroll down a little bit more, we at step three. Next, we need to create the of dot js config and object. This is where you can control the behavior of the library and specific custom authentication logic adapters etc what they mean is that uh, inside this of.js file you could set up instead of credentials which is what we're going to do you could set up any of those providers here like azure ad uh, there is discord you have dropbox you have facebook you have github you have google and so on there is a lot of options in here and they will give you the code while when we configure the credentials, we're going to have to write most of the code ourselves. Regardless, let's scroll down a little bit. And we need to start by creating a new auth.js in our case file in the root of our app. So let's go back, open Explorer, minimize this uh, source app. And then inside here, we create a new file auth.js. Let's go and copy the code from here. Copy, paste, save. Let's go back. And now we need to create a round handler under app API auth next of and then we need to create a file of route.js an easy way of creating those three folders here because we've already got the app folder so we can grab this here go back to visual studio code and inside the app here we can create a new folder and if you paste this this is going to create three folders for us instead of creating them manually basically and now inside the last folder here we can create our route.js file and that's it Let's go back and let's copy this. So I'm going to copy it and paste it. One thing that you need to notice here is that we're importing handlers from the or file, which we just created here. But all file is located in the source app. So in this case, we won't be able to find it here. So we need to put app slash and then the file will be here. So off. So let's remove this comment. And once you put this, your get and post should light up, which means that they are available now. Save them and let's go back. And now add optional middleware to keep the sessions alive. This will update the session expiry every time it's called. Now we will create a middleware later on, but if I was to create it now, it's probably going to break our application. So I'm going to leave it and I'm going to create it later on when we start protecting our route. Final step here, set up the authentication method. So we just need to go to authentication. And from here, under authentication, we need to click on credentials and we need to follow this guide. Let's go down and make sure that you're on Next.js. And then this code will go into our auth.js file. So let's copy this, let's go back and go back to auth.js and paste the full code in here, replacing the current one. So, so let's start from the top because from here they've put some dummy code for us that if we save, we'll break our application. They're importing the next auth from here and they're importing the credentials, which is absolutely fine. But then here they're saying you need to set up your own logic for dealing with plain text password strings. Be careful. So we're going to have to remove this because we're going to set up on logic later. And then if you have a look at credentials, I mean, I'm going to show you how this works in a second. But for now, let's remove the comments to make some space. 
and let's focus on the auto writes. So essentially when we submit a login form, this is where we're going to do the logic. We're going to have to hash the password. We're going to have to go to the database, check for the email. And if there is an email, we're going to have to check for the hash password and then return the user. In this case, we're going to remove the dummy code from here because otherwise it's just going to break our application and we can save this. One thing that I wanted to show you super quickly before we continue is that if you go to the website, make sure that everything is working, obviously. But if you go to the website, we should have a login route created for us. So under API slash auth slash sign in, press enter, and you should be able to have this login page for us. Now, of course, we're going to create a custom one just so we can style it the way we want. For some people, that might be absolutely fine. And one thing that I want to show you is how you can control this. So if you go back to or auth.js file, you can control this form from here. So essentially where we have email, I can change this to username and save it. If I go back, I'll probably need to refresh this and now email becomes username as you can see. And I'm going to show you some other options super quickly. If I go to the documentation, let's open a new tab here just so we don't lose this. And let's search for credentials. And then credentials custom message. Here we go. Credentials configuration is what I want. If you click on this, you will see an example here where we have username and you can change the label to username. You have label of password and a type of password. If I was to copy this super quickly just to show you and paste in here. So now we'll have the username. Let's put as username one, two, three, save it. Let's go back to the website and refresh. As you can see, now we have username one, two, three, password. And once you submit this, this is actually going to submit the form and it's going to do all the checks inside here. So at the moment, we're just going to return no, and it's not really going to do much. Let's uh, go back to the default, whatever it was, email and password, and we can leave it the way it is. Now we're not finished here. Let's go back to the official documentation. Let's close this because we don't need it. And if you scroll down a little bit more under credentials, they kindly gave us a signing form which we can use. Later on, I'm going to show you how we can style this and make it nice. But to simplify the process, let's start basic and use the most basic form we can have. They essentially are saying that if you wish to make this reusable, you can create it as a component and you can call it sign in. But I'm just going to have one page where you can sign in for the admin. So I'm going to just copy this, go to a login. So this is going to be in the admin login and then page.jsx. And at the top here, we can put import sign in from and then app slash or don't forget this. And now we should be good to go. Let's go back and copy the form from here and let's paste it instead of the login page here we can replace this and right click format and here we go we have a very basic form now the important bit about this form is that it has an action which sends all the form data to the signing function and here it sends all of the data so essentially we have two inputs which is first one is name email second one is name password so these two values will be sent into this function and this function is literally here in the of.js file and we should be able to access the data using credentials. So for example, if I go to the of.js here, we can grab the credentials just as an example here. We can create a object of user. So let user, this is going to be equals name, rat, and then this is going to be email of, um, we now we need to create the email. Okay, we can get the email from credentials. So let's remove this and we can do const email equals credentials dot email like so and we should be able to get the value and now we can do the same for the password so let's do all shift down and then change this to password and password and now if i grab the email from here i can replace it and let's say we wanted to show the password as well just as an example we can do password in here and we can console log this console dot log of user like so and now if we save this hopefully if we save the form as well let's go back to our page super quickly we need to go to slash login and you should be able to see our login page now if we start typing you can't really see anything and this is because we need to change the css super quickly so where we have input we can do class name equals and then text dash black for now and then the same here class name equals text dash black okay that should do the job 
okay now we can start typing that's fine and for the password maybe we can remove it put it as text just so we can see what we are typing here let's do right click and inspect this and let's go to network and from here i wanted to show you what's gonna happen so when you submit an email so admin at admin.com and then password as password one two three and when i submit this this is gonna make a request to this login as you can see here and it says post at the moment we see we have a static host or free three or three which we're gonna fix in a second but one thing that i wanted to show you is that this is gonna do a post and it's gonna post the data and if i go to the command line here you will see that we have the object of name rad email and then the password which is great so now we have access from our form inside this file which is great the next thing that i wanted to do is to set up a few checks in the form super quickly so we have it ready and then we'll look into the database so from here i wanted to change this a little bit so i'm gonna grab this and instead of sending the full form data i'm gonna send everything separately i'm gonna do let email equals form data dot get and then we can get the email and then i'm gonna do the same for the password so let password form data dot get password and now we can wrap everything into a try catch in here and we can put our function in here but i'm gonna do as a const so const result equals and then we put whoops await sign in which comes from here from the old file and now instead of sending the whole form data i'm gonna send them individually and do some other options so inside here curly brackets instead remove this and now we can send some other options the first option that i wanted to send is the redirect so let's do redirect and this is going to be set to false now if you don't set this to false essentially you need to create a redirect to like this to and then you can put for example dashboard but for some reason this redirect never worked for me i don't know whether it's the beta version or i'm doing something wrong i have a fix for this anyways so if you put redirect as false and then we can pass the email and then we can grab it from here basically so email and then we pass the password and then password so now the password in the email will be still available but instead of sending the full form data we just select them from here and then we send them manually one by one which is fine the next thing that i wanted to check is now if we get the result so if result question mark so if this exists then error we can return an error and then result dot error like so and then that's going to be it for the try and now inside the catch here we can do so catch error so this is going to be return and then we're just going to return error error message dot message and then or we're going to return an unknown error occurred like so save this and all form should be good to go if you save this you should be able to still send the data i'm gonna resend it one two three four five six send it and let's remove this super quickly go back here and you should still see the data coming through as one as password one two three four five six there was actually a story about i believe it was either instagram or facebook where they were saving they were saving all of the passwords in plain text in their logs purely because somebody left a console log like this and yeah so all of the passwords were basically in plain text and you can read about this vulnerability somewhere on the internet if you wish to but uh, it's an interesting story saying this so login is fine what i wanted to do instead of this redirect i'm going to use the next redirect so let's go up here at the top and do import redirect and this is going to be from next slash navigation and now we can use this so copy it and we can use it here at the bottom so we can just do redirect and then we redirect to the page that we want which is dashboard like so awesome save this and let's go back to all.js and now we need to figure out the rest here okay the next step would be to set up our database so we can store our users if we close all of this super quickly and actually we need that let's open the old.js okay if we 
close up everything super quickly, minimize everything. And if you go to Prisma, and then if you go to schema.prisma, we'll need to create a new model. So far we have game and we have category. If I go to the database super quickly, you will see that we have category and game. If I refresh, that's all we have and we need one for users. So let's go back and let's create one just like these. So inside here, let's zoom in one more time. We're going to create a user model user. And then this is going to have an ID. This ID, this ID is going to be integer at ID. And then the default behavior of this is going to be auto increment like so. We're going to have a name for user. This can be a string and it can be optional. Then we're going to have an email. This can be a string. But this time the email needs to be unique because we don't want another user with the same email. And also I'm going to be querying the user table via the email. So that's why we need to have a unique like so. And then we have the password, which is string. And then we have the row, which is string. And we actually don't need this question mark on the email. The row can be optional here. And then we're going to have created that which is going to be date time. And then for the date time, we're going to have a default value, which is going to be the now. So when we create a record, it's going to use the date and time right now. And I'm going to do update that as well, just in case you ever update your user. So all model is now created and we need to migrate it to the database. So let's go to the command line here. Maybe we can go to the Prisma here. Maybe we can go to Prisma here and let's close this and let's do MPX Prisma migrate dev and then we can put name as maybe user in this case and press enter. This will create the user migration for us now and if we restart the Prisma and one trick that I wanted to show you is this MPX Prisma Studio portal 555 dash dash browser none. So basically this is not going to keep opening Prisma in a new tab and uh, the way I found about this is by doing npx prisma and then dash dash help. And then from here, I believe that I went to prisma studio. So npx prisma studio dash dash help. And this gave me the command that I'm going to be using. Here we go, prisma studio. And this is not going to open. No, sorry, it's this one here. And this is not going to open prisma in new tabs every single time. So I'm going to do mpx prisma studio dash dash port 5555 dash dash browser none and we should be able to go back and if i refresh this we should be able to see our user here but we don't have any data yet so let's go back to our project let's close the prisma schema and let's go to prisma and then seed let's make sure that we see the one user and the reason i'm doing this is because if somebody decides to download the project and install it Basically, I want to have a default admin user that they can use. And we've already done this with the categories here where we set different categories. Whoops. And we've inserted different games in here, but we kind of like looped through them in here. So this time is going to be a lot more simple than this. And one thing that I need to mention is that you need to do this inside the asynchronous function. So inside here, maybe just the for loop here. So I'm going to make some space and right there inside here. So before we start the seed, we're actually gonna need to hash the password somehow. And for hashing the password, I'm gonna be using bcrypt.js. I did try to use bcrypt, but it didn't seem to work with the latest of JS version. So in this case, bcrypt.js worked really well. And as you can see, it has just over 2 million weekly downloads, which is a huge number. And yeah, so let's use this. Let's copy it. Let's go back to the PowerShell here. And let's install this. So control L to remove everything. Right click npm i bcrypt js. Now that this is installed, let's do npm run dev. And we need to go here at the top and require it. So const bcrypt equals require. And then we require bcrypt js like so. And now we should be able to use it. Let's grab it and let's go here. And to hash the password, we can create a const password equals await and then here we're going to do bcrypt.hash this is the function that we use and we need to put the phrase that and we need to put the password that we want to hash in this case i'm going to leave it as password 
and then we need to put the round of hash in and I'm going to put this as 12, but basically here the higher number increases security, but also increases the time that it takes to hash the password. And so a lower number is faster to load, but less secure. 10 is a decent balance between security and performance for most applications, but 12 is more secure and commonly used in prediction systems. And 14 is highly recommended for sensitive application, but it might be a slower longing process. So let's leave it as 12 and let's create our user now. So const user equals await prisma and then dot user. This is the user table. And now we're going to do upsert. Upsert is basically going to check whether we do have a record and we need to, whether we need to update it or if you don't have a record, we need to create a new one. So we're going to do curly brackets and then inside here we're going to do where email is we can put the email now to make it a little bit easier i'm gonna put the email here so cons email equals and then admin at admin.com for example and i'm gonna copy this and put the email in here because we can reuse it twice in a sec and now comma we're gonna do update and then and then the update stays empty like so and now the last thing that we need to do is to create this if we don't have a record so create and then we can do curly bracket name just like we have in our prisma schema here we're gonna have the name email password and row so let's do that so name is gonna be admin the email is gonna be set to the email here and then we're gonna have the password which is gonna be the hash password that we're getting from bcrypt here and then we have the row which is gonna be admin for the rest, for the created that and updated that and the ID, they are automatically generated so we don't have to do anything. If you wish to, we can console log this in here, but after this, maybe you can remove it. So console.log user, just so we can see whether this has been created or not. Save this and now we can see this data to our database. If I was to go to my database now, and if I was to refresh the user, as you can see, we have no records. So let's go back to our PowerShell here. Let's close this and let's do control and L to remove this. MPX Prisma DB seed. Press enter and this should seed the new information for us. And as you can see, this console logged ID of one, name of admin, email of admin, and the password, as you can see, is no longer password, but it's actually hashed with the 12 runs that we put. Then we have the row of admin and then the created that is literally the time and date right now and update is, is the same. So now if I do, let's rerun Prisma Studio and let's go back to Prisma Studio and if I refresh, hopefully we should see our username here. As you can see, it has the ID of one, the name, the email, password and so on. Let's go back, remove this, save it and close. Now let's go back to the explorer and go back to source app and then auth.js because we need to handle the authentication. Now we're going to handle the authentication here under this authorize function. And as I showed you earlier, we've already got the email and password from the form. So now we can just do the logic. This is not going to be very pretty. And if you go to the documentation here, you'll be able to see that you can validate the data with Zot, but I'm going to skip this section and just do a very basic form for us. Let's go back and let's click on here and let's check. And the first thing that I'm going to do is make sure that you check whether we have an email and password provided. So if exclamation mark email, so if you don't get an email or we don't get a password, we want to either console log or throw an error or display a message on the form. But I'm just going to do throw new error and then please provide email and password save them and now if we don't provide an email and password let's go to the website and let's click sign in we should get a massive error under here here we go we just got the error and then if you read the off error in here it's gonna say error and then please provide email and password which is exactly what we want so you can submit this to the back end now and let's do the rest. The next bit would be to go to the database and see whether we have a user with the email provided. I'm going to copy this and do const user equals await prisma 
dot user dot find unique and then inside here we're going to do the query which is going to be where and we just check for the email like so now one thing that we need to do here is remove this user because it's breaking and also the other thing is that we don't have prisma included in our file we can go back to the explorer go to lib game queries and we can copy them from here so import the prisma client and the prisma and we create a new prisma client from here so copy those two and put them inside here you could do the query in another separate file if you wish to but it's just a little bit easier for now to do it in here so make sure that you add these and now prisma should be lighting up like so which means that we have prisma and hopefully we can access the user table now the next check we can do is to see whether we get the user so i'm going to do if we don't get user then we're going to throw another error i'm going to copy this and throw invalid user like so save the next thing that we need to do is check for the password so when we are creating the database we're going to get the password from here but the password is hash so there is no way of us understanding this password and we need to compare it to the one from the form so you press the form the password comes from the form and we need to compare it to the hash password in order to do this we need to import another function from bcrypt here at the top so import and this one is called compare from and then we do bcrypt js like so so let's grab the compare and here where we have console log, let's remove this and we can do const is password valid equals await and then compare and then inside here we compare the two password so we compare the one from the form we put it like sorry we compare one from the form we copy it and then we compare one from the database so user and then so comma and then we put user dot password this is the database one and now we can check whether this is true or false so if those two passwords do not match obviously we want to create some sort of a message or an error so i'm going to do if if password is not valid so is password valid we're going to do throw new error and then inside here we're going to do invalid password like so and the last thing that we need to do is if we go past all of this we need to return the user like it says here return user object with their profile data instead of returning the whole user object i'm going to do it manually so i'm going to remove this and i'm going to do id so i want to return the id of the user so user from the database id and then the name so user dot name and then the last thing is going to be email and then this is going to be the user dot email like so awesome let's save this let's go back here and let's see what's going on let's refresh and we've already checked now when we don't submit email and password we get an error now if we submit the wrong now we have the right username here sorry the right email here from our database but let's put the wrong password so so let's do password one two three which is wrong so we can put sign in and this should say if he hasn't already this should say invalid password which is great and now let's do the last bit which is the correct password which is just password so let's click sign in and now this redirects us to the dashboard now one thing that i wanted to show you is that if we go back to the form super quickly and let's go to so uh admin login form let's not redirect for a second let's comment this out and let's go back to the login page if you right click inspect and go to application and then cookies and then under a local host of 3000 you will see free cookies created from the OFJS library so this is actually the session cookie which we can use to authorize all users if you have this you can check for it and then you can just say okay you have access to the admin panel and this is valid for a month uh, of course you can change the expiry uh, but there is an option somewhere you can read in the documentation if you wish to change it to less or more so one thing that i want to show you is that if i delete this manually and if i refresh the website you will see if i refresh the website we don't get anything 
And if I put one, two, three, sign in, nothing happens. But if I put the correct password and press sign in, now we are getting the authentication here, the session token, which means that we've successfully authenticated. And that's why I then redirect to the dashboard. Another thing that we can do here super quickly is if you go to the login JSX, we can actually output the user if you wanted to see it. And we'll have a look at the protecting route in a second. But essentially, we need to import this file here. So we can do import. And you can import this anywhere pretty much off from app off. And now if we grab this and here we can do const session equals await and then off like so. If you wanted to uh, show your user somewhere, maybe we can put it inside here above our form. We can say... Uh, let's do a div with the class name of margin bottom just to push everything for margin top of 10 and then I'm gonna say in curly bracket json dot stringify and then we're gonna stringify the session um, question mark so to check whether it exists otherwise in my error and then at user like so save this go back and here you should be able to see your admin and your email address like so if I was to delete this and refresh, it's gone. If I was to log in with password, it should be here. But um, it should be here if you refresh, but we didn't revalidate the form or anything like that. That's why you need to refresh. All right, the next thing that we can do is I can show you how you can log out if you wish to. So if you go to the credentials here, let's go to session management and then sign in and sign out. From here, I've already showed you how you can use the signing function. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you can actually do this as a use server or you can do it as a client. They have an example here as well, if you wish to. Oh yeah, here is the redirect, which doesn't seem to work for me. Who knows? Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but it just never seems to work. Maybe it works with the uh, different providers. Who knows? Anyways, for the sign out, for example, we can do something very similar. If we scroll down here on the next JS, we can grab the sign out from all.js. So let's grab it. So we need to put it by the sign in with comma. We have the sign out now. And now we can copy this little form from here and paste it maybe around here. And this is just gonna say sign out, save this. And if I go back to the website, are we signed in now? Yep, we're signed in. If I click on sign out, we will be able to see that this deleted the session for us and we are signed out, which is pretty cool. Saying this, I am probably gonna comment this out and you know where to get it from anyway and then right click to format this document let's have a look at what we need to do next the next bit would be to once we log in to redirect to the dashboard page and to protect the route first of all let's redirect uh, we do have the redirect here uh, this is set to false that's fine let's just check it out quickly admin password sign in and we go to the dashboard now let's have a look at how we can protect the dashboard if you go under session management and then protecting route there are actually various ways that you can do this i use this session to get and display the user in fact i use this example here to show the user on the page but you can actually use this to kind of like throw people out so you can just say if you don't have the session then don't authenticate me so i can literally copy this in the dashboard page just as an example but don't know this so let's just put it here and i can just say from app of and then this is gonna be we grab we grab those two we put them in here and it's gonna say not authenticated like that or we grab the pre and then we save it so at the moment in the dashboard we're getting the user because we are authenticated but if I was to sign out, which I'm going to do from here. So let's go to application and then let's just delete this and refresh. So I'm going to sign out technically. And as you can see, you're not authenticated. Therefore, you cannot see the content. So this is one easy way of doing it. And the next way would be API route. So you can protect API routes, which we do not have. And then middleware. Middleware is what we're going to be using in order to protect multiple routes. So I want to protect the, the whole dashboard and everything underneath. So what I mean by this, let's create this middleware file. Uh, let's grab it and let's go back to the Explorer. 
and then this needs to be created on the source. So new file and then middleware.js like so. Let's minimize this just so you can see. And here it is. Let's open this middleware.js. Let's go back and let's have a look. First of all, we need to import the auth. So let's copy this. And because we are not using TS, we need to remove this. We need to put the correct folder up slash auth and then define authorized callback in your TS file. Okay, let's do that. So I'm going to grab this, go back to the auth.js. And then here, just after this bracket and comma, we can put the callback, save it. And now if you go back to the next step, which is the middleware. So we import the middleware here, which is fine. And then we need to do this. Paste it in the middleware. And I believe that there is one more thing that we need to do. And here it is. This is the regex to match multiple routes and you can any gate is this a word i'm not sure certain routes in order to protect all remaining routes the following example avoid retaining the middleware on paths such as favicon or static images we do need this copy and paste it inside here now for the matcher here we can actually set which route we want to protect so in our case i want to protect everything under the dashboard so what you can do is put another matcher. So with comma here, you put matcher. And then you put in brackets like so the route. So dashboard. And then you can actually put this and this is only going to do it for the dashboard. But if you wish to match everything inside the dashboard, so all the other pages, you can put slash column path and then star for everything. Save this. Make sure that you go back to your website. Uh, middleware must export middleware as default function okay so export default or request if you get any errors from this file here make sure that you restart uh, I've got loads let's have a look if you get this, the middleware source middleware must export middleware uh, a default function. Make sure that you just restart the server and then you should be good to go. Let me uh, let me save this one more time. Everything is looking good. Okay, so now if we go to inspect and application, we are not currently logged in. So if I go to dashboard, oh, one thing that I forgot is that in the dashboard, we forgot this code as well. So let's remove this code because we're doing it with the middleware. Sorry about that. It's just an example. Save it and then remove this because we it's going to break. So, okay. So we have the dashboard. Let's do dashboard one more time. Okay. Now it seems to work. All right. So if you're getting a problem, make sure that you just resave this file, refresh your, uh, refresh your page. I haven't changed anything here. Um, and it just seems to work now. So I don't even know how to replicate this error anymore. Maybe just rerun this and refresh. And if you go to the dashboard, you will see that we are getting redirected to the login, which means that our middleware is now working. The other thing that we can check is whether this is going to transfer us to the dashboard and whether we can stay in there. So we're going to do admin at admin.com and then password and then click sign in. And we are now at the dashboard, which means that we are logged in and this is great. So login is finally done. And we can focus on styling the page super quickly and we can go back to the login here if you wish to style the page make it look nice continue otherwise just skip so what i'm gonna do here is close pretty much everything that we don't need and just leave the login here i wonder whether to leave this for the example and just comment it out here like so it might be in a way but we'll create a new one essentially we have a section i'm gonna remove this as well and everything is going to be wrapped into this section here. Let's go around here. So unfortunately, I can't minimize this, but let's start from here and then we can figure it out. So let's go with class name equals and then we do background dark and that's it. Then inside here. So so inside here, we're going to create a div that's going to wrap everything and it's going to be in the middle of the page. So div class name of flex flex call and then items dash center justify center padding to the x-axis six padding to the y 24 screen height screen then i'm going to do 
margin left and right of auto. Inside here, we can insert a link from Next.js. So let's do import link like so. And I'm going to grab it and paste it inside here. So, so link like so. And then href equals and then hashtag. And the class name for this link is going to be flex item center. margin bottom six text to excel font semi bold text gray of 900 dark and that's it and then we're gonna have an image here so image press enter make sure that this is inserted at the top here if it isn't so import image from next.js image maybe i should have put this at the bottom so we don't scroll so much one sec excuse me for this i'm just trying to have the code here as an example Maybe we just need to put it under here and that's going to be better for us to go up and down here we go so image and then this is going to have a class name of margin to right to height of auto the source for the image is going to be equal slash logo dot svg width it's going to be in curly brackets 212 height is going to be 35 and then the old is going to be next rivals like so and now we need to close the image which is a self-closing tag like so and save it let's have a look at our login page looking cool i am zoomed in quite a bit and now we can create another div which is going to wrap our form we do it here div with a class name of width full background is going to be white rounded large shadow and then medium screens margin top of zero small screens max width of md and that's it and then inside here we're going to create another div with the class name of padding of six all the way around where our form is going to be and then space y of four on medium screens and above we're going to do space y of six and then on small screens we should have put first is going to be padding of eight actually so let's move this to the back here so like that close this div and now we're going to create our heading which is going to be in an h1 tag and this h1 tag is going to have the class name of text excel font bold leading tight tracking tight text gray 900 and then medium screens is going to have text to excel like so and now inside this h1 we're going to do sign in to your account save this and let's have a look how it looks okay sign into your account and now we need to create our form in here and in fact i can copy most of the stuff from our form from here where we start the form and maybe we can just copy it from here so where we start the form so from form we close it here and we kind of like close the form wrapping everything format this i'm gonna zoom out a little bit just so you can see but essentially we start the form and we finish the form and now inside here we need to create our input and so on so i'm going to create a div first of all with the class name let me zoom in div first of all and then this div is going to have the first input okay, let's create a label for the first input so label html4 and this is going to be for the email and then the class name for this is going to be block margin bottom of two text small font medium and then text gray of 900 like so close this and this label is literally gonna say your email and now we need to create our input which is gonna be here so for the input this is gonna be the type type of email id is gonna have the email name is gonna be email let's have as required and let's give it a class name of background gray 50 border border dash gray 300 text gray 900 small on small screens text small let's put around it large and then for the focus we're gonna do ring dash primary let's put this on another line uh primary 600 like so and this needs to be ring instead we're also going to change the focus dash border dash primary so it becomes blue 500 and then this is going to be a block 
width for padding of 2.5 and hopefully that would be it for the fence input this is a self-closing tag and also maybe we can put a placeholder and then i'm gonna do name at your company.com something like that really or let's say your email at your email goes here.com let's go back and uh, this is starting to look good now let's go back and create the other input which is going to be our email we can copy the whole thing from here paste it and this is going to say instead of for email this is going to be for password this is going to say password and then instead of type email this is going to be password let's copy this change the id to password name to password and then the placeholder can be just uh, some characters that I've copied from the internet, which are just like dots. You can go to your character map in on Windows. I'm not sure how you do it on Mac, but uh, you can copy them and paste them in here. Save them. And now we should have the password, but this does not seem correct. Maybe we can put a little bit of gap between them on the form here. So class, and this is going to be flex gap of four. Let's have a look. Uh, and this needs to be flex column. All right, that's looking a little bit better. And now we need to create a button, the last thing here. So at the bottom here, we are gonna create a button. And this button, let's close it first of all. And this button is gonna have the class name of with full text dash white, background black, font medium, rounded, large, text small, padding to the X five, and then padding to the Y of 2.5, and then text. Center. The type for this is going to be a submit. Then we can just put login. Save it. And now we have the button here. And our form should be exactly the same as before. So if we go to the dashboard, we are currently logged in. And I didn't, I don't have the logout button. So I'm going to delete the cookie from here. But now if I refresh the dashboard here, we go to the login. And now let's try to log in with admin at admin.com and then password is going to be password. Press login. And as you can see, we are authenticated and we are in the dashboard. And with that said, we are done with the login. In this section, I'm going to show you how we can create a very basic register page just for the people that want to know. It's not going to be amazing, but I'm going to do a very basic one. Let's go back to the project. And this is me kind of like doing this as an add-on. So you might see some files that you haven't seen. So let's go back to app admin. And then where we have the login, I'm just going to create a new one. So it doesn't have to be under admin. You can create it in your front end if you wish. But let's do it here. I'll probably disable this so people can register, but just so you know. But the code will be in the GitHub anyway. So from here, let's do new file page.jsx and let's look into it. We'll need to import redirect because when we register, we want to redirect. So import redirect. And then this is going to be from next dash navigation. We're going to do import Prisma client just so we can do a query here form at Prisma client and then we initialize a new client. So const Prisma equals new Prisma client like so. And then we're gonna also insert bcrypt because we need to be able to hash the password. So const bcrypt equals require and then we require bcrypt.js, that's it. Now let's do export default async function and then page. Inside here we return and I'm just going to do an empty fragment and then inside here we're going to do a section. In fact, let's just swap this to a section. So we're going to do a section. Let's style this section a little bit. Class name is going to be equals background dark and then, and then inside here we're going to create a form which we need to submit like so. And then this form is basically going to have the step that we need to register. For example, let's do a label. And then this label is going to be for the name. And then inside this label, I'm just going to put uh, an input. And then this input is going to have the name of uh, name. The type is going to be of text. And then the class name is just going to be of 
text black just so we can see what we are typing and now I'm going to copy this label and paste it inside here in the password let's do it like that and then this is going to be password the type is going to be password class name is going to be text black and then we need finally a button and I'm just going to say register that's it. Let's have a look at all the brilliant forms. So under, uh, we should be able to do re register. And we have for name and password. So now we need to do the form action. You could do this in a totally different file. We've already done it a couple of times. And essentially, go here to the form and we say action. Okay, this is going to be an asynchronous function. So async, like so. And then we need the form data. And then this is a narrow function, open curly brackets, close them. And this is going to be a use server function. So use server. And then we're going to get the name. So let name equals form data dot get. And then we get the name from here. And then we do the same for the password. So we do password, copy this, paste it here. And then, oh, we also need an email. Sorry about that. Copy and paste email this is going to be name email type email and that's it okay save now we have now we have email as well perfect okay so let's do email email and save now we can check if we don't get the name we don't get the email and we don't get the password then we can do throw new error and then here we say please fill all fields and i'm not gonna do anything fancy in here you can use that if you wish to but this is very brutal uh way of doing it and then we're just gonna say well check if user exists const user equals await and then prisma dot user dot find unique and then we can find this unique user by doing where and then from the form we can check email and then email this is the database field and this is the field from the form here now if we and now we can throw an error if the user already exists so if user we can do throw new error and then this user already exists and then we can hash the password if it doesn't we can do const hash password and then equals await bcrypt from above and then hash and then i explained the hashes earlier but we need to pass the password from the field and then the round of 12 and then finally we create this record await prisma user dot create and then inside here we can do pass the data and the data is going to be the name which comes from the form as well so we don't need to pass anything else then we do email and then we do the password but the password we need to provide as the hash password instead of providing the form one otherwise it's going to be in plain text and then inside here you can do something else like uh, console log new has been user has been created and then we can do redirect to maybe the I don't know home page or whatever or, or login login okay this should finally be done and now if I do rat email is going to be rat at rat.com password is going to be password password one two three let's click register if this works it's gonna sign us it's gonna go to the uh, sign in here and if i go to my users then we do have the record here password was hashed as well which is great so that's gonna be it for this section now we can start building our dashboard first of all let's log in so login the default username was admin at admin and then password this should lead us to the dashboard here we are and we can start building it so let's go back to visual studio code and then from here we can open source app admin 
dashboard. Open the page here and we can clear this out. Let me zoom in one more time and let's start by building our header. So first of all, I'm going to wrap everything into an empty fragment instead of a section like so. And then inside here, we're going to create a new header. So let's create a header component. And I'm thinking of creating this component inside the components folder and just giving it a name of admin. And then inside the admin, we can create our header. Maybe we can grab the original header from here. So let's copy the whole thing and go to admin. And then inside here, we can do another file header.jsx and we can paste this in here. Now I'm not going to have all of those icons. It's going to be fairly basic. So I'm just going to add image. And then from here, we're going to have the logo, which is absolutely fine. When the logo is clicked, that's going to go to the main website up here. So we're just putting slash. We're grabbing the logo from our folder. And then I'm not going to have a search or anything like that. And instead of nav, maybe we can create a link to visit the official uh, website. So we can do slash like that. But then but then the logo was going to visit that anyway. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, that would do. And then we can just say visit main site and I'm going to put a character which is going to be like a arrow icon which is ampersand hashtag 8599 and you can google html icons and you can just copy the tag if you wish to and I'm going to remove the mobile menu as well. Let's first of all test this. Let's go back to our header. Let's go back to our dashboard here and let's import it. So we need to go to the top here and do import header and then from component admin slash header like so. And now we can insert our header inside here. Save it and make sure that this works. Our header seems to be working, but uh, maybe we can align this a little bit better so it's on the right side. And in order to do this, let's go back to the header. And um, where we have gap four item center, maybe we can just do justify between. Just right between, save this. And let's have a look. Okay, this is now visit the main website. It would have been nice to actually have a logout button. So maybe we can replace this with a logout button or have one inside here. Um, in order to do this, we're going to have to create it inside here. I've actually got an example if we go to the login page. So login page, if I didn't delete it. Here at the top. Sorry, it's at the bottom this time. I think I commented out. Here we go. We have the form that I commented out. So let's go and paste in here, uncomment this. So control and slash for me, right click, format it. And this is basically a form that's going to do the sign out, which I showed you earlier when we were creating the login. And in order for this to work, we need to bring the function, which hopefully is going to be still here. Here it is. We actually need to, I'm not going to remove it just in case somebody needs to reference, but you can definitely remove it from here if you're not going to use it. So let's go at the top of our header, paste this. So we have sign out just that. And this is from up of like so. Let's just see what we get. It's not very pretty, but you can also add an icon. And hopefully if you click on this, this will sign you out. So now I need to log in back. Password, login. And I am zoomed in a little bit just to let you know. And now let's build the rest of the dashboard. So if we close those two, let's go back to the dashboard. And now what I want to do is I want to create a quick overview of how many games we have, how many categories we have, and some other stats that you might want to add. I'm going to create a div and this div is going to have the class name of container. Margin to the left and right is going to be auto. Margin bottom is going to be eight. And then padding left and right is going to be four. Minimum height is going to be a custom one. So in brackets, five, sorry, 50 rem. And then I'm going to do padding bottom of eight. Do I have that margin bottom? Mm, I do have margin bottom, but let's see what that does anyway. And then relative and then margin top of 10. I think that would be fine. And now I'm going to create a grid. So inside here, we're going to do another div. And this div is going to have the class name of grid and then grid calls of three. This is where you can control how many boxes you have and then gap four and a margin bottom of eight. Now we need to create those boxes. So first one is going to be div and then inside here, this is going to be flex. Whoops. Flex, flex, call, gap to justify center. Text center, border and then border accent. 
then we're gonna have rounded hash md and padding for all around so inside here is what we're gonna create a b for both and then this is gonna have a class name of text dash excel to make it slightly larger so this is gonna be the game length so let's say 10 for example just for the demo purposes and then inside here i'm gonna do a paragraph and then this is gonna have the class name of text small and then this is gonna say total games like so let's save this and let's have a look how it looks okay if i zoom out it should look like this so we're gonna be having the games in here and now essentially what i'm thinking is we can copy this two more times like so and then this one is gonna be the categories length so let's say we have six categories and i'm gonna do total categories and then this is going to be another stat for you to add. So I'm just going to put hash and then let's just say more stats. Save it. And now if I go back, this should look fairly nice. And now I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so we can see a little bit better. And now we can get, get the data from the database. So what I'm thinking of doing here is instead of using the normal queries that we've been using, uh, you could reuse some of them since I'm recording a video I don't want to keep going back and changing things and iterating so what I'm gonna do to be safe I'm gonna create another file like this just for the admin queries so I'm gonna do new file admin queries dot js and then I'm gonna copy the stuff from the top here in fact let's copy one query just so we have it and then paste it in here so let's have a look at the first query so we're going to need the total games. And luckily for us, here we go. This could have been reused from the other file easily. You don't really need to do anything else. You can just import it from this file here and it would work. But uh, just so we are safe here, I want to have them separate. And in order to use this query, we can go here in our dashboard and say import. In curly brackets, we say get all games from lib and then this is going to be admin queries like so and now we can get the data and i'm going to do const games and then this is going to be equals await promise all and then inside here i'm going to put the actual query of get all games like so now games should be accessible and that doesn't seem right oh we need to remove this and now games should be accessible so if we grab games where we have the number here we can replace it with games.total sorry length save this go back and now we should be able to get all games which appear to be 12 so if i go back to the database here you'll see that we actually have 12 games and this is working for the total categories we can do something very similar so if we go back to admin queries we can copy this and make a new one and i'm gonna say get game categories and then inside here we're gonna do prisma category and then that and then find many that's pretty much it now let's insert this so inside here we can do get game categories and now we can use it we can just attach it here i'm just gonna put categories and then we can put the query with a comma here categories get game categories and now we can use this as well so i'm gonna grab categories and replace this number with categories oops categories dot length save this let's go back and now we have seven categories which if we go to the categories here you'll see that we have seven of them for the more stats i'm gonna leave this for you to decide then we can continue with the rest now for the next bit would be to display some of the games so we can click on them edit them add more and so on let's create a new section so this is finished here and i'm going to create a new section here so let's create a div and then for this div we're going to have actually this div is just going to be empty and it's going to wrap everything inside so inside this div i'm going to create some sort of a header where we're gonna say games and then where we can where we can display a button to add new games so div open and close it and then inside here we do class name of flex justify between and then gap of four margin bottom of four and then inside here you can do h1 and then class name is gonna be font display for headings and then this is gonna say games like so and now we need one more 
this is going to be a link to href and this is going to be your button to create new games and essentially i've already decided that this is going to go to dashboard slash game and then add then this is going to have a class name of text small border border accent padding y of two padding x of three and then rounded xl then we need to close this and let's just say plus add new game you can add an icon if you wish to but i'm gonna keep it simple if i save this hopefully why is this not refreshing it doesn't seem to be refreshing save it oh oh it has refreshed it but it's adding it here at the bottom for some reason so maybe i have a broken div or something let me have a look yep i created this container so this needs to be inside or container here as well sorry about that so this is one section here and then inside this container we can create our second section okay so this div needs to be wrapping and then we have our fragment okay let's have a look now save it and now we have it working okay it was refreshing now we have games and we have the button here which will lead us to add a new game and now we can display the games here so we can click on them edit them delete them and so on to display the games we've actually already done the query here so we can use that so we can add everything inside this div just after our heading here and let's create another div and this one is going to be the class name of grid grid cause of four gap of four margin bottom of eight and then we can loop through the games so games dot map and then we map uh, through a game like so this is an arrow function and then inside here is where we display the games does this look all right i think so and this is going to be a link a href and then this is going to have the link of in single slender quotes slash dashboard slash game slash and then the game id so from the database we get game.id and then this is gonna have a class name of flex gap of four hover of background accent secondary and then rounded md make sure that you close this link and then for the link inside here we're gonna create a div but also this link needs to have an id because it's the first element so let's do id sorry no key i mean so key equals and then inside here we're gonna do game.id that would be fine and now inside here we can create another div and then this div is gonna have the class name of width whoops of width 16 height 16 background slate 100 overflow hidden and then round it md like so okay this is where we're gonna add our image for the game so let's do image from next.js and we probably need to insert it here so import image from next.js slash image and now we can use it uh, this is a self-closing tag make sure that you do that and now for the image here we're gonna do the source is gonna be equals and then in curly brackets single slender quotes slash game slash and then dollar sign game dot image like so and then this is gonna have the class name of object dash cover and then weight of full height of full and then old is gonna be game dot title width width is gonna be 64 and then the height is gonna be 64 as well and then we can change the quality to be maybe like 40 or something like that it's up to you i think the last thing that we need to do now is to create another div after here after the image and then this div is going to hold the um, id of the game and the title so we're going to do a div with a class name of flex flex co gap one and then justify center center and then close inside here we're gonna do a span and then this span is gonna have a class name of text small text accent 
and then inside here i'm gonna add the id of the game which is gonna be game.id and then we need to put the title in here i'm gonna put it as an h1 we don't have to be fully semantically correct in here uh h1 and then game dot like so let's save this and let's have a look i'm gonna zoom out just so you can see a little bit better but if we save this now if we refresh the page you will see some of our games but the uh, quality looks awful actually i think i changed it to 40 but that looks pretty bad the refresh now still looks really bad maybe i need to make the images a lot bigger than 64 maybe let's double them 128 and 128 and maybe the quality let's have a look now so the images were probably way too small and and also i am zoomed in a lot which could play a role into it but yeah these look decent now and as you can see we have the ids of the games the link to the dashboard slash game and then the id of the game so we can edit it and do whatever we don't have too many games that's why i have a couple we have the cover is working and that's all good i'm not sure how responsive this is but uh you can always make it responsive yeah that's not very responsive if you wish you can go here and where we have grid calls you can do grid uh calls of two but this needs to be let's say medium is gonna be four and on small screen it's two so that's gonna make it a little bit better yeah here we go that looks better but uh you can readjust this saying this our dashboard is pretty much done now we can focus on the next bit in this section we're gonna do the add new game form and then this form is gonna be reused to update the actual games as well so this is gonna be a tough one but let's begin if you go back to the project make sure that you close everything that we don't need and then from here let's minimize everything go to source app admin and then from here we're going to create a new folder inside the dashboard which is going to be called game this is going to handle the submission of a new game updating a game and deleting the game and i'm going to split this into kind of like three different areas the first one being the add uh, route so add so essentially we're going to go to game slash add and then we'll be able to add a new game but also i'm going to have another folder inside the game which is going to hold all of the forms and i'm going to wrap this in brackets like that and then it's going to be called form so we'll do this in a second but let's focus on the ad for now if we open the ad folder and create a basic page so page.jsx let's open it and focus on this for now i'm going to zoom in and then we need to do the export default async and then function function page like so and then we can return and i'm going to return an empty fragment like so and then inside here we can also include our header for the admin so i'm going to do import header and then this is going to be from component admin slash header now we can grab this and insert it into here so header self-closing tag and save if we go to this page now let's say add new game save them and if you go back to the website and if you click on add new game this should link to slash dashboard slash game and then add if you click on it hopefully you will see the page here and we have add new game let's do some of the styling first of all it's only a little bit and then we'll focus on the form so for the styling let's remove this and it's only a little bit here so it's going to be a div and this div is going to have a class name of container mx auto margin bottom of eight padding x of four min height of a uh, custom value of 50 rem padding bottom is going to be eight relative i don't even know why this is relative now i think i changed it but empty of 10 let's leave as it is and then we're gonna have a link so e a a tref equals and then this is just gonna go to the dashboard and then this is gonna have a class name of text small and then i'm gonna do another html icon by doing ampersand hash 8592 close and this is gonna be a narrow and then we can just put back like so 
I'm just too lazy to insert an icon from uh, the icon pack that we installed. That's all. And now we should save this and you should see the back button here, which is great. We have it. And now let's go and create our title here. So div, this div is going to have the class name of flex justify between and then gap of four margin bottom of four. This is going to have the title, which is going to be an H1. And then I'm going to give it a class name of font display as this is going to be a heading. So add new game like so. I think that should do the job. Yeah, let's have a look out how, how this looks. Let's go back. And if we zoom out a little bit, this is how it should look. We should have a back button and then we have a title of add new games. If we click back, we go into the dashboard and if we click add new game, we go to the add new game section here. Uh, sorry, page in here. I'm zooming in so you can see a little bit better. Now the next bit would be to create our actual form. And because we're going to be adding a game, I actually want to be able to pass the category. So when we add a new game, we should be able to select one of those categories available from the database. So I'm thinking let's, we might as well do this now. So we don't have to deal with this page anymore. Let's go to admin queries. Uh, this is going to be in lip admin queries here. And let's create a new one. Keep it a very basic. And then this, I'm going to copy a new one here. And in fact, we already have this one so we can reuse it. Yeah, let's reuse that one. So import. Get game categories from lip admin categories and now we can use them inside here we can just say const categories and then this is going to be equals await and then get game categories from here if you wish to display it to try it out you can do you can just do pre tag and then inside here you can do json dot uh, stringify and then you put the categories to and no no like so and now save hopefully if you should be able to see all of the categories here obviously they are a little bit messy but if you get the result that's all you need so let's remove this we don't need them and now we can pass these categories to the form so they're available in there and the reason i'm doing it from here needs to be because the form is going to be a client component and although we could create an api to fetch the data i think passing it through the to the component is just the easiest way saying this let's create our form and maybe we can call it game form so first of all we need to create this component and i'm going to go back to the dashboard game form here this is where we're going to be creating our form let's create a new file and call it form dot jsx and then for now we're gonna do export default function and then game form and then inside here we're gonna grab the in fact let's not do anything else right now let's just do return and then i'm gonna return in a div just saying form for now form component that's fine now let's go back to the add here and we can import our form. So inside here we can do import game form and then this is going to be from at app admin dashboard game form and then form. That's it. Now we can grab this and insert it into here. So like that because this is a component. Let me save it and now we should be able to see or game form inside here if we save the file save save and here it is at the bottom and this is again i think i've done it outside the container i've done this twice now so let's put it inside the container here and then it will come up here we go form component so our form is popping out in here which is great it should look like this and now let's have a look at the next bit so we might as well pass the categories to the form so they're available so I'm just going to do categories equals and then in curly brackets, whoops, curly brackets, categories, save it. And now we should be able to grab the categories from the form by just doing, by just doing uh, like that categories. And you should be able to display it here if you wish to. So uh, we could just do json.stringify, but you'll know that it's going to 
work pretty much to and then now save it and now all categories should appear here and then we can use them for like a drop down menu to select whichever category we want to insert the game into so this is good and now things are gonna start getting a little bit more complicated from here just to let you know save this uh remove the game queries make sure that you save it and uh, the art we don't need anymore we, we can focus on the form we need to convert it to a client side component so let's do use client and this should still work just like before yep but i did remove everything okay no worries and let's start by creating a very basic form just so i can explain how this is going to work and then we'll build on it so let's start with creating a form with the class name and this is going to have a flex flex call on that screen so we're going to have flex row gap eight and then we have an action so this action is very important and this is going to be called form action like so and then let's close the form and basically when we submit this form we're going to trigger a function called form action in order to do this we're going to be using use form state and this use form state is going to allow us to show the state of the form for example if we update something we might want to show a message updating or deleting if you get an error we might want to show that and so on in order to create this we need to insert it from react so import and then from here we're going to do use form state and then this is going to be from react dom like so and now in order to use them we can grab it from here and we can say const state and then form action is what's going to be triggered from here and then this is going to be equals use form state we're going to have a function which is going to be called create game and then we're going to have an initial state so so don't worry about this i will explain it First of all, the initial state is going to be empty. For example, we can initialize it here. We can just put const initial state to be a message of no. So when we are deformed currently, we don't have any messages and we don't want to get any errors. We don't want to display anything. We just want to have a message no. So this is going to be our initial value. But then when we submit the form and we trigger this create function, we're going to be updating this value to something else. So essentially to display this message, we can use the state. So if I grab the state here and somewhere around here, let's do state.message. And at the moment, we're not going to get anything, but let's set it up for now. And then inside here later on, we're going to add a custom message with a paragraph and we're going to put state, state message. And then the state message is going to be state message. I don't think that this was necessarily, maybe we can just remove it like so. And we'll deal with this later. At the moment, if you go to the website, it's going to break because we don't have this create game function. And this is actually a form action. So we're going to have to create it. If I go back to the dashboard game form, that's why I created this form section here. So we can add all of the logic inside here together. We need to create a new file called action.js. And then inside this file, we're going to have this function, which is going to be export async, async function. And then we call it create game. So copy this. And then we're going to have a previous state. We probably won't use this and then we're going to pass the form data like so we can probably just uh, console log the form data so console log form data like so save this and now we need to insert this action into this file it's going to get even more complicated but i'm going to try my best so we need to import this great game so we can trigger it from the actions so import and then insert here create game this is going to be from at slash app slash admin slash dashboard slash game slash form slash action actions sorry let's rename this action to actions because we're gonna have many of them so like that save them and now let's focus on the form okay it's so far so good if you go back to the website nothing should break if you have all of these 
things set up. Let me show you. Nothing should break. Save them and we should be good to go. So every form needs a submit button. Now you could do this button in a totally separate file, but I was thinking that we might as well add it in here just to make it a little bit easier. So essentially this is just going to be a, like a kind of like a component really. So let's create a function and we can call it submit button. And then from here, so when we click the button, I also want to create a state for this button so we can change it. So for example, if the button is called save, then maybe we can, when we press it, we have saving dot 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 with a loader or something like that. In order to make this work, we're going to import use form status. And this is going to be imported from React DOM like so. So now I can use this inside or submit button here by doing const and then in curly brackets pending. And this is going to be equals use form state like so and close it. Now let's return our button and then this is basically going to return a button like so and then this button is going to be special with the type of submit and let's make it on a new line here like so so it's easier to see then this is going to have a area disabled while this is pending we want to disable it we don't want somebody to spam on it and that's why we put the pending here and let's make it pretty so fill full text white background yellow 500 font medium rounded large text small pad into the x of 5 and then pad in y or 2.5 and then text center and that should make our button pretty uh i've double closed it here so let's remove this one here and then inside the button we can use this pending value to do for example if this is pending we can say saving but if it's not we can just put it as save and you can put an icon here whatever you like but now that we have the button we can insert it into a form so our form is literally called submit button so if you copy this and go to the form here at the bottom submit button and close it save this and now if i go back you will see that we're getting an error so uh, use form state from react done previous definition if you state redefined here oh did they oh yeah sorry i've got it yeah sorry i've got it twice that's why uh excuse me here let's remove it and save it and now hopefully our button should be working yep so we have save and if i click on it it's gonna break because we don't have any messages just yet don't worry about this we're gonna solve it now so to get something for now you can literally go to the function here and you can even like do return and then we can just return uh let's say status of success obviously this is faked at the moment then we can do message and then let's say game has been added and then we can do you know what uh maybe we can change the color later but we can do color and then the color can be uh, green and i'm going to show you how this is going to work later on we need a comma here and that's it save this and now if we go back and we press the save button you should see that game has been added awesome so we can change the state of this to whatever we like now one thing that we need to start doing is to actually build the form so if we minimize this button just so it doesn't get in the way we can focus on actually building the fields but before we go too crazy I wanted to show you how we can actually get the value from the field. So for example, let's create the most basic field that we can think of. For example, we'll do an input. And then this input is going to be the type of text, a name of, let's say, title. Uh, we're not going to do anything else here. And then, and then that's it. I think that's fairly basic. This is a fairly basic input which is going to pass uh, the title. That's it. So now, if you remember here, when we submit this function, it's going to go to actions and it's going to grab all the data and then we're going to console log it. So essentially, if I go here and although it looks very ugly, I can say rat and it doesn't appear because I need to change the color. But if you grab it, you could potentially just do class name of 
text black just so you can see and now rad as you can see in here we've got it and now i can submit it and if we go to right click inspect console because this is a client site the form data will be in here you want uh it's not going to be in the console here it will be under in your browser because this is client site now to display the actual text you could go here so for example we can do const title equals and then form data dot get and then we get the title we do need to console log it so let's do console log that was the whole idea let's go and resubmit this to rad and now you'll be able to see form data and then rad which means that we have the data available in our action and we can submit it to a database and do whatever we like. The next bit is going to be a little bit boring, but we're going to have to build this form. Essentially, we don't need any of this. We already know how to do this. I'm going to leave the title and then save this. Let's go back and let's start from the top because I don't want to miss absolutely anything. Let's wrap everything into a div. We create a div with the class name of large weight 18. And then inside here, we can create another div. And then this div is going to have a margin bottom. So class name equals margin bottom of four. Okay, here we're going to do a little paragraph. And this paragraph is just going to have a class name of block margin bottom of two text access text accent and then uppercase like so. And this is just going to say upload thumbnail. Like so save it and then put the thumbnail. It's going to be a little bit complicated, I guess, but let's do label. I just want to make it look a little bit better. Let's do label HTML for equals and then image URL. And then this label is also going to have a class name. Let's put another line. Flex, flex, call, items, center, justify center and then justify pattern of to make sure that you close this label and then inside here we're going to wrap everything else for our upload button which is essentially input with the type of file but we're going to make it a little bit more pretty so i'm going to create a div with the class name of flex flex call item center justify center pattern of two and now I want to add an icon, which is a photo icon. So at the top here, let's add all of the icons that we need. So import. First one is going to be photo icon from Hero Icons React 24 outline. And then the second one that we're going to need later on is going to be archive box icon. And let's insert the first one. So inside here, we can insert the icon width of 40 height of 40 class name is going to be margin bottom of four close this and then we're going to create a paragraph which is going to say class name equals margin bottom and then text dash sm that's it inside this paragraph i'm going to create a b for both and then this is going to say click to upload and then after this b I'm going to do all drag and drop outside this P tag. We're going to create another one called P and this is going to have the class name of text dash XS. And then this is just going to say what file formats we can allow. For example, PNG, JPEG, WebP, and then the size, which I don't actually remember, but let's say 300 by 300. We'll figure out later on just for the demo. The last thing that we need to do and the most important thing is to create the input. So input and this input, whoops, input. And then this input is going to have the type of file. The ID is going to be image URL. The name is going to be image URL. And then this is going to accept image png image slash jpeg or you can allow all of them and then image slash webp these are the only formats that it's going to allow and then this is going to be a class name of hidden 
So we want it to work, but we want it to be hidden. So this looks a little bit nicer. I believe that this is everything for this. So let's save it. Let's go back. And now you should see... And now you should see this. And now you should see this. It looks a little bit wild because of the button, but we'll figure it out later on. And maybe we can just add a little bit of border to this label here. I've actually, yeah, I've got it wrong here. So this needs to be full width. Height needs to be 48. We need to add a border and a border accent. Okay, that should make it look a little bit more presentable. Okay. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to do here, and then do border dashed rounded and the cursor pointer background is going to be black and then on hover we want to the background accent secondary that should be it and now this looks a lot better and when we hover over you can either drag and drop an image here or you can select it and then select an image available let's go back to this and essentially the next bit if i zoom out once it's going to be exactly the same where we have the margin bottom four. We can copy this and paste it just after here. And then essentially we're going to have another one and this is going to be for the zip file of the game. So let's just change a little bit. Instead of upload thumbnail, we're going to do upload game. Instead of photo icon, we're going to do archive box icon. That's absolutely fine. And then here click to upload or drag and drop that's fine and then instead of these i'm gonna do maybe zip ra or seven zip like so probably just gonna use zip to be fair but uh when we look at the input now we just need to change the input as well maybe game url and then let's just replace the name here to game url and then this is gonna accept dot zip comma dot ra comma and then dot seven zip and that's it and this is also gonna be hidden and now we have to input Things are going to get a little bit faster now. This was a little bit more complicated. And this looks odd because we're going to have a second column in a second. Speaking about second column, I believe that this was the first column here. So we can finish with it like that. And then now we can create another one. And we can do div with the class name of, let me zoom in, with the class name of full width like so. All right. Let me just see whether we need to put the import button in here and maybe the submit button needs to be in there as well let's have a look how it looks yep that should be fine it's just going to be full screen or we can even put it below everything else but this is already big enough so form is going to be stacking up here once we create one by the way it's going to get a lot easier we're going to group them into divs so this is going to be the first input and this input is going to have a label html for equals title and then this is going to have a class name of block margin bottom of two text xs and then text accent and then uppercase like so close this label and this label is going to contain the word title after the label we're going to create the input just like before let's close it here and i'm gonna and let's start building it so type is going to be equals text let's move a little bit just so you can see so type text id is going to be title name is very important is going to be title this is what passes the information this field will be required and is going to have a long class names of background black border border accent small text small or small screen so we're going to have a small text rounded large and then on focus we're going to do ring primary of 600. Let's add some more classes. This is going to be a block element. We're going to have the width of full, padding of two all around, and margin bottom of four. And I'm going to set a default value. And this is going to say game. This is going to be overwritten later on in the tutorial. So save this and let's have a look how it looks. Okay, this is looking nice. So we have the title here and when we focus on it, it lights up and we have game title and we can write, which is great. The next stuff is going to be copy and paste. And that's why if you've used any of the other CSS libraries, they essentially kind of like create one button, make a UI library inside components. For example, you create a UI folder and then you add them inside that folder and then you import them. 
And then you kind of have a component that you can insert, but I'm just going to be copying and pasting here. I don't want to overcomplicate things. Saying this, this div is what we're going to copy for the next one and then paste here. The next thing is going to be the slug. So HTML for slug, copy this, replace this so slug. And then all we need to replace is the ID to slug, the name to slug, and then the default value maybe we can put slug for now. Everything else looks good. The slug is also required to save it. Let's go back. We also have the slug now, which is great. And let's copy this and paste it. This is going to be the description. And this HTML4 is going to be description. Let's copy it. This is going to be text area. And let's see what we can save from here. So we're going to have an ID of description, a name of description. This is going to be required. Uh, the class names we can save from here. The default value we can do description like so. But we do need to add two more. So rows equals three and then columns equals 50. Save this and this is going to be a description here. Perfect. Now the next bit is going to be our category. So this is going to be, let's copy this one here because it's an input and then we we'll save it here and we change this to category copy and then we change this to category with capital letter and then we change the input to select instead so let's do select and let's see what we can save from here so id is going to be category name is going to be category type is not going to be text because this is a select now the food value can be select category and then normally select is not self-closing tag so we need to remove this and we need to close it like that and now we're gonna have options in here for example option and then option one is gonna be arcade let's have a look so we have the option here and we have arcade now what we can do straight away from here is that if you if you remember earlier in this tutorial we actually pass the categories to this form. So if you go back to the add page, we query the categories and we pass them to the form. Therefore, we have the categories. And now uh, inside from here, I can grab the categories and where we have the option, we might as well do it now. I'm going to remove this and I'm just going to do a quick loop of the categories. So we're going to do categories, question mark dot map, and then inside here, loop through the categories. So category as singular category one. And then this is going to be a narrow function. And then inside here, we can do the options. So option. Each option will need to have a key for React. So category. Now that needs to be category. And we can grab the category ID from the database. So ID. This will need to have a value of category.id as well. So when we select it, we know what we are selecting. And then the option here, we can do category.id, but unfortunately I could do title for now and save it and that will work. So we're gonna get all of them from the database. But uh, later on in the tutorial, when we update the game, we wanna select, uh, for example, if we are on one of the games here, we want to know which category was already selected when we update. For example, if this game was uh, Nintendo 64, when we try to update it, I want this to be selected. And we'll come back to this because we are not going to be able to do it just yet. So we'll come back to this, but the important bit is that we get this from the database. Okay, that's cool. Let's have a look. The next bit would be, let's copy this one here. So the slug. All right, paste it. So this one is going to be whether our game is published or not. And we are actually going to have to change this a little bit. So instead of label, this is going to be changed to paragraph. We don't need the HTML4 here. And then this is going to say published. Okay. And now we're going to have two radio buttons. I'm going to remove this and create a div to wrap them and make them look nice. So div with the class name of flex gap or four and then inside here we do div class name flex gap of two now we can create our inputs radio buttons in this case so input and then type is gonna be equals radio 
the ID is going to be published. The name is going to be published. Let's copy this. And then the value is going to be set to true. And self-close this. We can add a label for this on the bottom. So label HTML form. And then this is going to be published. And then we can say published and save. We have published here. And then uh, we probably need a little bit of space later on. But maybe we can just do it in here. Class name of margin bottom four. That would be fine. Okay, now we can do the other one. We can copy this and save it here. This is again going to be radio button, but this time this is going to be private. So let's copy this, change it here, change it here, and change it here. Save it. All buttons should be good to go. So now we have published in private, and that doesn't look good. Let me just have a look at what I've done wrong. And it's because I meant to wrap this inside the four. So gap, gap, so flex, gap four. Yeah. So those two need to be together and the flex needs to, basically the flex is going to put those on one line and then we're going to have a gap between them. Save them. Now this should look a little bit better. As you can see, we have published and private. If I click on them, uh, you should be able to click on it. And one thing that I spotted is that they're both click now for some reason. And this is because the value probably needs to be false. Oh, but something doesn't seem to work here. Uh, they're both getting selected. Type of radio. Oh, and the, the reason that these are not working is because it's because they're radio, but they need to have the same name. So I've put it as published here. And maybe we can put it as published in here. Publish is probably not the best name, but let's keep as published. Let's have a look. And now if we click on it, yep, now they're working, which is great. Okay, that's fine. And you'll be very happy to hear that this is pretty much the boring stuff out the way now. And all form is working. And later on, we're going to do a delete form as well. But now let's handle this form and make it work. Before we move on with the form, there are two things that I noticed. First of all, in the form where we have our button, I actually mistakenly removed the correct thing that I was trying to do. And instead of using form state, this is going to be used form status. So we need to import this as well. And I'm going to import it here. So, so in fact, we can import it next to the state here. And this is going to be use form status like so. And now we can use this instead of use form state. And I think that this should fix the problem. Um, here we go. If I submit this, we have this is still working, which is great. And yeah, no errors in the console, which is exactly what I want. And the other thing that I wanted to swap is the file names because here I have image URL. Technically, yes, we will save the URL to the database, but uh, this doesn't represent the input correctly. So I was thinking of maybe just changing it to a thumbnail file. So let's copy this, paste it, paste it. And then the same for the this one here, which is the, and I've mistakenly put this as well. So this is going to be the game file. So I'm going to copy it. And basically the input here, we just need to replace the ID and the name, just so it makes a little bit more sense. Saying this now, let's go back to our actions. And first of all, at the moment, this is just going to be working as a client. So when you submit the form, you should be able to see this in your console in the browser. This needs to be a server action, which is going to allow us to also connect to the database and do the queries instead of creating APIs and so on. So at the top here, we do use server and that's it. Now this is going to be a server action. So before we do anything more complicated, I want you to know how you can grab the data from the form and have it nicely created in an object which you can insert into the database. And then if you wish to choose something else rather than the S3 bucket to store your files, you can do that. I did try Cloudinary because it was kind of easy to set up, but unfortunately they only allow you up to 10 megabytes for files on the free tier. Maybe if you pay, then you can upload more. I'm not so sure. That's why I ended up using S3 bucket, which I'm going to show you in a second. What we need to do is we already know how to get the data from the form. This is pretty much how you get it. And we just need to list the rest. We can copy this old shift down and we can change this to slug. So let's copy, paste. 
Then we're going to do one more description, copy, paste, then category ID. Because when we submit the category from or form, we are actually going to be submitting the ID instead of the name. And the reason for this is because when you store this in the database, we're actually storing here, we're actually storing the ID. That's why. And then if I go back, this is going to be category. You can check this from the form super quickly. So category, yep. So the name is category, which is exactly what I want. Just to double check. And then we have published. So this is going to check whether this is published or not. I'm not sure whether this is the best name, but it will do the job. Published. And then get data from published. And then because this is going to get data as either true or false, but it would be a string, I want to convert this to true or false as a boolean. So we can do equals 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 and then true. And then I'm going to show you how this works uh, in a minute. The last thing that we're going to do is the image. Let's copy this. And this is going to be thumbnail file and then i'm going to grab it from here and put it inside here we definitely don't need this part and then we can get the game file so game file from here copy and paste it and that's it so now we can put this into one object that we can console log to start with just for testing purposes so i'm going to do const game data equals and now we can start adding all of the data so the title it's going to be here we have the slug, we have the description, we have the categories. But since the categories is a little bit different, as I showed you earlier, we're going to have to insert the ID and we're going to have to convert this uh, string of a number to an actual number. So to do this, we can do connect because we need to connect it to the database as well. We need to connect this to the actual category table. So connect ID and then pass int and then we put the category from here category id sorry and we put it as 10 to make it an integer so that's absolutely fine and then the last thing here that we need is whether this is true or false in terms of published and that's it so i'm not going to be adding the thumbnail file just yet because this is going to be handled later on but saying this let's console log the game data so I'm going to do console.log game data. And also let's console log just one of the files just so you can see how it works. Console.log. And I'm going to put the thumbnail file for this example. So save this. And now if we go back to our website, time one, two, three, one, two, three, Atari publish, get a image of a cat, save it. And then game has been added. Okay. Okay, here we go. So now we have our first uh, object where our data is going to be. So we have the title, which is a string, the slug, which is string, the description, which is a string. We have the categories, which, which connects. And basically we've grabbed the ID of two because we selected number two here, Atari. And then we have published as true. As you can see, this is a Boolean instead of a string. And then I console logged the file, which gives us the size, the type of the file, the name of the file which is cat.jpg and then when it was last modified so one thing that i noticed is that the form only allowed me to import .png and webp which is interesting i'm pretty sure that i allowed to insert more than that so let's do webp and we'll find it and maybe it's because we need to add jpeg as well so let's copy this and let's try it so i'm gonna do instead of this we can do jpeg like this save it and let's try one more time and here we now we have jpeg as well which is uh, cool they come up and that's cool and then uh, this is only going to allow zip ra and seven zip which is great now that we know how to grab the data from our form we can remove these and literally the most basic thing here you can do now is literally insert this data into the database and obviously we haven't handled the thumbnail file or anything like that, but uh, just as a minimum, you can literally either create a query inside your, for example, lib admin queries, or you can create it inside the actions, which is what I'm going to do. So in order to do queries, we need to import our Prisma client. And I'm going to do it here at the top, just so it's all in one file. And now I can literally do a query to Prisma and insert this data if I wish to. Just as an example, 
what I'm going to do here is await prisma.game.create and then we literally put data and we pass the data from here. This is how simple it would be to create a new record. But there are a couple of things. Now we do need to insert or terminal file and or game file because it's probably just going to throw an error. And for testing purposes, maybe we can just do image is what is called in the database. And I'm just going to put cat.jpg. And then for the file, I believe it was called game underscore URL. Okay. Game underscore URL. And then this is going to be game.zip. And that's it. Just because we're going to handle this a little bit later, I don't want it to break. So if I save this and if I was to reinsert this form, ah, uh, that doesn't matter. If I was to resave this, because the message didn't change, it's probably going to be just there. But that doesn't matter too much. Um, we don't have a console log. Let me refresh the database. And as you can see, we have another record here of test123, test123. And we're getting all the records. And we're getting the category of Atari, which means that we're halfway there. Now, the next bit will be to handle the image upload. And unfortunately, this part is not the easiest. And as I said earlier, I tried different providers like Cloudinary, but unfortunately, there was a limit. And also, you've got to be careful what you store, I guess, because you need to be storing games that you can legally use, of course. For storing files, today, I'm going to be using the S3 bucket from Amazon. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any other alternatives, but the S3 bucket is industry standard. It's actually super cheap to store files. And there isn't really a limit as far as I know of what you can do with it. And it's fairly, and it's super powerful. Also with that, we're gonna set up CloudFront, which is a, essentially a CDN. So your files can be accessed easily throughout all over the world. Now this is gonna be tough, but what you need to do is if you want to follow along here, go to AWS and then create an account. And then from here, search for S3. I've already got it added inside here as my favorite and then click on it. At the moment, I have two buckets here. This one was for testing purposes. So I'm going to have to create a new one so I can lead you through the process. So let's create a new bucket. So we need to name our bucket and mine is going to be called the next game station or something like that. And then go down object ownership ACL disabled recommended. Let's do that. I'm going to untick this block all public access go down and we need to acknowledge it then bucket versioning this is going to be disable and then if you scroll down a little bit more default encryption is going to be server side encryption with amazon s3 managed keys and that's pretty much a create bucket and now we have our newly created bucket in here which is the one at the bottom here and if you click on it then from here you should be able to start uploading files if you wish to you can do that manually it's really up to you but let's click and upload an image super quickly. So I'm going to add a file and I'm going to add this cut and I'm going to add this cut and then just upload it. Okay. Now that we have this file, let's click on it. And if I, and if you have a look closely here, this will give you a URL of where the image is hosted. And essentially we'll need this URL to be saved in our database here. Instead of this, we're going to be replacing it from the storage bucket. If I was to click on this URL, you will see that we have access denied at the moment because nobody can access this image just yet. And we'll need to change the, some of the access in a second. So let's close this and let's close it. Let's go to permissions. Under permissions, if you scroll down a little bit here where we have bucket policy, you can click on edit. And from here, you can change your bucket policy now this is super powerful and if you wish to, they do have a policy generator. I'm going to click on it and show you super quickly. But essentially from here, you can generate whatever you like. So if you can select S3 bucket and from here, you can do all of the actions that you want. So for example, get data access, that there is just too much really. And basically if you go through this, this will generate for you a policy, but also there is another way. And if you close this, if you go to policy examples, from here, if you scroll down a little bit, you will see a lot of examples that you can use. For example, this one here, um, there is a lot basically, but have a look at these if you wish to. Okay, I'm going to copy and paste a bucket policy that worked for me previously. The only thing that you need to change in here, which is very important, is the bucket ARN. Copy this and then from here, you need to replace this your underscore bucket ARN here and you can leave the slash and the start. So now 
if we go at the bottom then we can save it he's adding this twice let's let's try one more time save it yeah why is it doing this here and okay let's try one more time yeah that worked it was just adding that but here is the final version which was successfully added i don't know why he kept adding this part twice regardless our bucket policy is now here and if we go back to our bucket which is the next game station click on the jpeg and then click on the url now you should be able to see your image of that you uploaded earlier as you remember earlier the access was blocked saying this the next thing that we need to do is to set up cloud front you don't have to but it's going to give you a little bit more protection and you will have a cdn if you search for cloud front i've already got it here as my favorites click on it and then from here we're going to have to set up a new one and as you can see i was testing a few days ago but essentially we're going to create a new distribution from here the origin domain name is going to be the next game station that we just created then that's going to be fine the name is fine from here we can put origin access control setting recommended so but can restrict access to only crowdfund that's fine and then from here we need to select or we need to create a new origin access control so i'm going to click on it and then that's fine that's fine signing request recommended this is fine let's create it and then it says you must update the S3 bucket policy. Okay, we'll have a look the, into this in a second. Let's scroll down a little bit. Enable origin shield. No. The full caching behavior you can change from here if you like. But essentially here, compress object automatically. Yes, that's fine. Uh, viewer. So the viewer protocol policy is going to be redirect HTTP to HTTPS. And these are fine restrict viewer no that's fine everything here is fine cash policy is fine i think we're pretty much done here the only thing that i wanted to talk about is the waf so the application firewall if you enable this it will cost you quite a bit but obviously it's nice to have for uh, protection and you can toggle this use monetary mode as well to make it super cheap for me i'm not gonna enable this and continue for the settings here we're going to use all edge locations for best performance and we are pretty much done everything else stays as default here and we can create our distribution so this is actually going to take some time because obviously the files will need to be distributed this will give us a url which we can use for our application i'm not sure whether we're going to need this just yet but let's copy it and i'm going to have it ready just in case we need it for something i can't remember whether we're gonna need it or not so i'm gonna copy it here as you can see here it says deploying and this is gonna take some time so don't try to access your files just yet uh, until this is deployed i'm probably gonna pause the video and come back in a minute okay now that our cdn has been deployed this url if you copy it this is why i was copied it earlier just in case i lose it and i don't want to come back here but anyways what I wanted to show you now is that if we go to OS3 bucket and if we go to the next game station, for example, and because we uploaded an image earlier of a cat, so this was the S3 bucket URL here. What you can do now is replace the file name with the CDN instead. So put this in your URL and then slash cat.jpg slash cat.jpg like so. And as you can see, all cat comes up which means that all CloudFront is also working and we can almost start using it now. The last thing that we need to do is to give access to our code, to application, to be able to upload photos to the S3 bucket. And the way to do this is through a IAM, it's called, Manage Access to AWS Resources. Click on this and you can create a new user that will manage the access. Now I'm going to create a new one. So let's go to Users. And then let's do a new one. So create a new user. And then here, this is going to be the next game station user. Then we can click next. From here, we need to attach a policy. So at the moment, I've got these policies created for my previous website. But essentially, to create a new policy, you can go here and uh, attach policy directly. And then if you go for S3, this will bring Amazon S3 for access. Attach this policy here. 
go next and now we have it attached to the user and then we can click create user and essentially this user should now have access to the s3 bucket now if you go to the user here this is important you have your ERN number here if you ever need it but also we need this access key so create access key from here and then you can just click other in here and that would be absolutely fine and then click next i'm not going to give it a description click create access key and then this will give you your access key and your secret key so i'm going to copy this just so i don't lose it because i believe that once you close this page you probably lose them so let me copy this and i'm going to put access key and then this is going to be secret access key so let me show it to you paste it in here and then click done oh you can even download it sorry i didn't see that so click done and we should be good with the s3 bucket now in order to use the s3 bucket we're gonna have to use a package called s3 client if you go to google and search for s3 client from here you'll be able to see the full documentation and how you can use this this is super powerful you can do all sorts of stuff and this is the official sdk for the amazon s3 bucket so the first thing that we need to do from here is to install it in our project so let's copy the npm and then let's go back to our server here and close this control now to delete everything right click npm install at aws dash sdk slash client dash s3 and then npm run dev Let's go back and from here you'll be able to see all of the commands that you can use uh there is quite a bit but the one that we're gonna probably use is called put object command here it is and this will give you pretty much everything that you need to know about it what is gonna give you max attempts restricted mode i was just wondering whether it's gonna give us some sort of like a demo code that you can have a look at but as you can see in here you have all of the options if you wish to mess around let's go back to our project and let's go back to actions js we're gonna have to import the s3 client that we just installed so import and then we're gonna import the s3 client and then put object command which is what's gonna allow us to insert the object to our bucket and then from from at then aws client s3 i'm also gonna add a redirect for later on just so we don't have to come back here so import and then redirect i've already showed you how this works but this is going to be from next slash navigation like so save it and now here i don't want to go backwards and forwards all the time what i wanted to achieve is that when we update a specific record we're going to pass the id so let's say I was to update this Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, this would have the ID of one. And when I click on it, we'll obviously make this page a little bit later on. But when I click on it, we're going to pass the ID and we'll be able to grab it. And so if we grab the ID of the game, we're going to be doing an update command. But if you don't grab the ID, then it means that we're going to be creating one. So essentially, later on, um, I'm gonna grab the ID from here so grab ID to update but for now maybe we can do const ID is equals no let's see whether this is gonna work and then I'm gonna do if ID then we're gonna update the game but if we don't have that we're gonna do else and then we're gonna insert the record first of all we need to make sure that when we add a game we don't have the same slugs for the game because otherwise that's gonna break or your else sorry here the slugs and let's do that so check if slug check if slug already exists so const existing game equals await prisma dot game and then dot find first and then inside here we can create the game by doing where by grabbing the slug from the form so slug and then slug which is grabbed from here and then we can do comma not id question mark and then id passing to convert the id to an integer like so and then this is undefined 
and this is wrong this needs to be outside here sorry about that that's it so we check for that and then now we can grab this and we can say okay, if existing game then we want to return a an error so return and then here we're going to do exactly the same thing as when we return the success data which is only faked but in this case we're going to do status of error and then the message is going to be slug already exist please choose a please choose a different slug or different one i don't know and the last thing that i'm going to do is uh, change the color for the message from tailwind css so color and then this is going to be red and i'm going to show you how this works and that's it let's test this super quickly before i do the next step go to the database here grab a slug that already exists in the database and paste it under the slug here and then just fill the form if you wish to then click save and then it should say slug already exists please choose a different slug now let's have a look at how we can change the color of this and i'm gonna go back and basically we've provided a status of error and then color of red now you can do this however you like i was thinking that this is a simple way of doing it but one thing that we need to do is revalidate the form so we can update this so to revalidate the form we need to import revalidate path like so from next cache and then copy this and then inside just before we return something we revalidate this path by doing slash like so and save it now if i go back to the form and then from here we can grab the state message we can grab the state status we can grab so let's do this is only for testing purposes and then we can grab the uh, color so state dot color so what you can do now if you go back and if you save this you will see that slug already exists please choose a different slug status error and color red what this will allow you to do is pretty much to restyle this the way you like for example i'm gonna style this paragraph super quickly equals curly bracket in single slanted quotes text small and then margin bottom or four now we could bring or state color inside here but unfortunately since when we build our project this will not exist unless you've used the same color somewhere else tailwind css will not generate that color so one way of doing this is by doing it with inline style so style equals and then with two curly we can put color and then here we can put our status color which in this case will be hopefully red or we need to remove the curly brackets here we go and that should hopefully return color red and change the message let's refresh grab a slug that exists put it here save and as you can see slug already exists please choose a different slug status error and color red of course delete those two because these were just as an example here and that's how you can style your messages to whatever you like let's go back now and then after if the game exists basically if we pass through this so if the game does not exist we continue and then we can create our record just like we've done inside here so i'm gonna grab this copy and paste and to be completely honest this needs to be at the top level so this needs to be below our forms here so we have access to it so now i can copy it and go back and here we can create our game so create new game by grabbing the data from the game data and then we're gonna do upload thumbnail and then we're gonna do the upload game here as well and once this is done we also want to revalidate it so i'm gonna do revalidate and then this is gonna return exactly the same thing as here so we're gonna return instead of a status error in this case we're gonna put success and then i'm gonna say game has been added and then you can even bring the name of the game that if you wish to but i'm gonna keep it simple and then instead of color red now let's try one more time this will not exist i'm gonna save and now we have game has been added status success of color green okay the next thing that i wanted to do here is let's right click format i'm gonna zoom out a little bit and maybe we can wrap the whole thing inside here inside the form into a try cache statement so i'm gonna do try open it here and basically we open it and try all of this 
here we do catch and we put an error we're gonna zoom in we're gonna revalidate the path if we get an error and then we're gonna return and let's do status of error the message is gonna bring the error and the message and then the color is going to be red. I think that should do the job and then format. Okay, now we have everything into a try catch and everything is working well. That's all good. And the last thing that we need to do is to handle the upload thumbnail and upload game here. We need to do this next section now because it's going to lead to the next bit. So essentially, when we do update a game, sometimes you might not want to update some of the details. So let's say you are happy with the title, but you want to update the description. So you'd like the description to stay the way it is. And the same with the thumbnail and the upload game. So we can check whether they are already here or whether they're empty, and then we can set the value. I think that it's a good time to do this right now because it's going to lead us to the next step. There is no easy way of doing it while I record it. To do this, let's go after the game data here. And uh, this is going to be a long one, but essentially I want to check whether this image exists. So I'm going to grab the thumbnail file here and we're going to do if the thumbnail file and and thumbnail file instance of file and and thumbnail file dot name and and thumbnail file dot size is bigger than zero then we can put let's say console log first of all log and we can put something like setting image two and then we can put the thumbnail file dot name this is going to be the name of the image that we put just for the bugging options here we can now insert this thumbnail file into our game data object in here by doing game data dot image because this is what's in the database image and then equals then the thumbnail file dot name like so awesome now we're going to do exactly the same thing for the other file in this case we're going to have game file and i'm going to replace all of these so replace 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 and replace instead of setting image this is going to be setting file to and the last thing that we need to do here is change this to game url like so from like so and we should be good to go this is going to help us with updating as well and now let's build our function which is going to upload the thumbnail so essentially i'm going to create a new function here and let's say await and this function is going to be called upload thumbnail and this needs to be thumbnail file like so, so we can pass it to the function. So now we need to create this function. Let's go maybe at the bottom here. And what I'm going to do, just so you can see what's going on, I'm going to minimize this and we're essentially creating another function inside here. And then this is going to be async function. The function is going to be good upload thumbnail. We're going to pass the thumbnail file here. And then we can do if we get thumbnail file uh, sorry no if we get the thumbnail file and and thumbnail file instance of file and and thumbnail file dot name and and thumbnail file dot size bigger than zero then we want to try and upload this to s3 bucket so try and then i'm going to do const buffer equals buffer dot from await and then image and then the thumbnail file dot array buffer and then we're going to do a wait upload to we're going to trigger a function that's going to be called upload file to s3 to s3 and then inside here we provide the buffer and then this is going to be thumbnail slash dollar sign the thumbnail file the name and essentially what this is going to do it's going to pass a folder name of thumbnails this is where we're going to store them and then this is going to pass the file name dot name which we upload so for example cat.jpg and it's going to be stored in this thumbnail folder which is going to be neat for us the other thing that we need to do is the catch so the catch is going to be error and then we're going to do console.log error upload in thumbnail And then we can list the error inside here. Now we need to create this upload file to S3 bucket. Let's copy it and let's create it around here. So we're going to do async function and then the function name is going to be called upload to S3. 
we can pass the file and the file name. So the file comes from the buffer and the file name comes from here. And now we can do const params. And this comes from the S3 bucket documentation, by the way, I'm not making this up, but basically we need to choose the bucket. And then I'm going to do bucket. And now in order to find your bucket name, uh, let me have a look. No, we do not have that. So in order to find your bucket name, you can go back to the S3 bucket here. S3. And here it is. This is your bucket name. So mine is going to be called the next game station. I'm going to copy it. And mine is located in the EU West 2 as well. So remember this because this is going to be required in a second. And we can put this in an environment variable. So let's go down to .env. And we can put this next underscore AWS underscore S3. And then bucket name. And then this is going to be equals the bucket name here. So I'm going to copy it. And we might as well add the next stuff, so the region. So next AWS underscore S3 and then underscore region. And this is going to be equals the region from here. So EU West 2 for me. We are also going to have the uh, secret access key that I showed you how to get earlier. So let's do the same things here. Underscore key underscore ID. And then this is going to be equals my my key from here and then the last thing that we need is the secret one so underscore secret underscore access underscore key and then this is going to be equals my key from here like so and save it we should be able to have access here so we can do process dot env dot next underscore aws underscore s3 underscore bucket underscore name like so the key here is going to be the file name so i can grab it from here in single slanted quotes dollar sign i'm going to do it like this or you can uh, import no let's do it like this and we need to pass the body which is going to be the file from here that we pass and that's it you can also uh, put content type, but because I'm going to be uploading images and JPEGs, I'm not going to do that here. And now that we have the parameters, we can use or put object command in order to insert the data. So inside here, we can do const command equals new, put object command. And then inside here, we return all of the parameters that we just created. And then we do try catch. And then inside the try, we can do const response equals await s3 client, which we're going to have to create in a second, dot send, and then we send the command from here. So don't confuse this. Whoops, here we go. It's already done it. So don't confuse this. Maybe we, we'll put this as a small letter. Don't confuse it with this one here because we'll have to create this in a second. That's absolutely fine. And make, maybe we can console log it. And then this is going to say file uploaded successfully. And then we're going to put the response like so. And we're going to return the file name. Name. And then for the error, I'm just going to throw an error like so and that's it so now we need to create this which is gonna have basically or region or credentials and so on so we can create this uh, above here so let's do const s3 client equals new and we're using the new here to create a new s3 client but we need to grab it from here so this is going to be the capital letter one new s3 client and then inside here, we can pass all the parameters for our client. So region. And then this is going to be process. Dot env dot next underscore AWS underscore S3 region. Credentials. And then for the credentials, we're going to pass the access key. So access key id 
And then this is going to be similar. So I'm going to do process.tmv like so. Grab the axis key ID from here, paste it, comma, and then we're going to do secret access key. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing. So process.tmv and we grab the last secret key here. And if this works straight away, I will be highly impressed. So let's go back. Let's go back to the GitHub. Sorry. Let's go back. Let's go to the S3 bucket here. And as of now, we only have one file, which is cat.jpg. If I go back to my website here, let's try to create another record. Make sure that the slug is unique. And then we can do test. I need to insert an image. And these specs 300 by 300 are wrong. I just don't know what it was. But select an image like so, and then click save. Okay, so game has been added. If I refresh, we should get another, yep, we get the new record here. And we get, and the image is still cat.jpg, which we'll have a look in a second. But if I go to the S3 bucket here, let's refresh. You will see that we are getting the thumbnail here, folder. So I'm gonna click on it. And then we have cat.jpg. Oh yeah, sorry, this is, I uploaded the cat.jpg. And that's why I saved it as cat.jpg. Okay, this is actually working. Okay, so now if I was to grab the my distribution domain name here from the CloudFront, and let's put it inside here. Let's do image source equals, and then we put put in here, and then I can do slash, and then the folder and the name. Let's say here. And let's close this, save it. Let's go back to the website. Uh, this seems broken. Maybe we need to put HTTPS slash slash. And then now we should get the image from all CDN, which is great. If you get a course error by, uh, and your images are not showing up, what you will need to do, let me show you super quickly. And I'm kind of surprised that I didn't get it. But what you need to do under next config here, where we have the next config, you can allow this external URL by doing this. So image remote pattern protocol HTTPS, and then you need to replace your CloudFront. So mine needs to be set to this one here with HTTPS, and hopefully that should allow next to use this URL in your. Uh, if you're having problems, for some reason I didn't, but anyways, that's all looking cool. And now we can do exactly the same thing for the upload game. Essentially, because this is a zip file, we're going to do another function. So let me go to actions and then one sec. We're going to reuse this, by the way. But uh, if you go here, let's create an, the other function, which is going to be await, upload game. And then we pass the game file here like so. And now we need to create this function. So I'm going to create a, let's minimize all these. So upload thumbnail, I'm going to create it here. So async, let me just have a look super quickly. Maybe we can copy all of this. Yeah, sorry, we can copy all of this. Let's just put the name here. I'm going to copy all of this, um, paste it. And now we can just change the function name. We can change the file that we passed. Instead of thumbnail file, we're going to have to do game file. And now we're going to have to change it everywhere. So game file, game file, game file, game file, buffer, game file. The upload to S3 is going to be exactly the same function, so we can reuse this. But instead of using this, I'm going to put it as ROM because we're going to be uploading ROMs, uh, game ROMs. And then this is going to be game file dot name. And then instead of error uploading thumbnail, error uploading game here. Save this. And I believe that's pretty much what we need to do here. So now, if I go back to my form, and if we do another slug, new slug new game these images are so big but i'm gonna drag a new new game okay i'm gonna drag this one here new game and then let's drag a file needs to be zip so i've got a demo one here i'm gonna grab it and then let's press save saving it's gonna take a while now because we are actually uploading files game has been added and now if i go back to my bucket here Hopefully you should be able to see a new folder of ROM, which will have all demo game zip. Also, 
if you go to your database and if you refresh, you should have the new game.jpg here and you should have demo-game.zip. Honestly, this is the hard part. Now we're going to have to create one more page where we're going to be able to update the games and it's not going to be that hard now. It's going to get a lot easier. Okay, we're so close now. I'm going to close this because I don't need anymore. I'm going to close the S3. In fact, no, I'll leave the S3 bucket just in case for later testing purposes. Saying this, this probably needs to be turned into black because it's hard to see, but that's fine for now. Okay, so now we'll need to create our next page, which is going to be used in order to update an existing record. We're going to be reusing the same form and we've already set up most of it. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to set that up. So we're going to go back. And then from here, if you remember earlier, we basically put on every single record, if you hover over here on the left corner, you'll see that we're going to be querying the games by ID. So Cadillacs and Dinosaurs is one, Asterix is two, Disney's Hercules is three. If I click on it, it's going to go to another page with that ID and we need to grab it. First of all, we'll need to create that page. If we close the form here for now, and let's go to, so we're inside game. And we need to create a new page in brackets we can put slack inside here we're going to create a new file called page.jsx and we need to start with the and we need to start by doing export default async function and then this is going to be called page and then we're going to grab some parameters from the url in a second so essentially here let's return something first of all and then i'm going to return an empty fragment and then we need to also set up our header just like before actually on the add page here we can potentially copy the header from here paste in here and copy it from here and paste it and that would be okay to test now if i go back here and if i click on the first game we should be able to go to the next page here and we have the URL of game and then one now let's do the top bit of our page and i'm gonna pretty much copy this here so i'm gonna copy it and paste it inside here the form is not gonna work just yet so let's comment it out for a sec and then here where we have back this is gonna go to the dashboard that's absolutely fine for the h1 we're gonna change this to update game and then after this i'm gonna make a link which is gonna lead us to the actual game just for ease of use so a href and this is gonna be equals and then here we're going to do in single slant quotes we're going to do slash game and then the slug of the game is going to go here slug of the game but we don't have this just yet so let's save it like this and then let's give it a class name to make it a little bit better so class name is going to be equals text small border border dash accent and then padding of y2 px or free and then round it dash excel and then inside here i'm gonna say view game and then i'm gonna create an arrow like so go back and here we go view game and this is a backwards arrow so maybe i can just do html arrow go to this website here and i just need this one here we go oh you can just put r like that let's try this one save it and yep that looks a little bit better or you can just use an icon so now we're gonna have to get the parameter of the game which is one in this case in order to do this we can grab it from parameters so here we can do const game id and then this is going to be equals parameter dot slug like so because we called this slug so that's how we're going to get the id and in this case we should be able to get one i'm not going to console log or anything like that but now we need to create a query which is going to query the database by id so i'm going to write it right now const game data equals and then await and then we can call this one get game by id and then here we pass whoops by id and then here we pass the game id but we need to convert it into a integer so pass int and then we put game id and then and then that's it of course you can do a lot more checks than this but i'm kind of like being a little bit brutal with some things so to create this let's go to our lib 
admin queries, and then we can create a around here. I'm going to make some space or let's just do them underneath. Sorry. Let's create some space. And then this is going to be very similar to these. So I'm going to copy this and change the name to get game by ID. And then we're going to do return await Prisma game. And then instead of find many, we're going to do find unique. We need one record. So find, find unique, find unique. But we need to grab the ID, which we are passing from here. So essentially, I'm just going to put ID. And now we can use it in all query by doing where id is equals or id that we're passing and then we want to also include the category because this is going to be very helpful so include categories to true like so and save it that's pretty much it so let's now insert this function inside here so this is going to be import get game by id from at slash lib slash admin queries like so and now we have it here and we can use it and we can get the data once we get the data we also need to grab the categories so for the categories we've already done this so i can just literally do get game categories this is going to be helpful and we can do a const categories equals await and we need to include the get game categories from here so get game categories and then get game categories like so and that's it now you could definitely do this so it's not blocking you could do it just just like the dashboard where we have this we could convert it like that so, so essentially you do game data and then you do categories in here and then you'll get the function from here replace this one could have just typed it to be fair in the first place but uh here we go and we're good to go. Now we should have access to the game data and the categories so we can pass it to the form so we can get the current data when we are updating. So what I mean by this is if we uncomment our form, first of all, make sure that we insert this form at the top, import game form. And then this is going to be from at slash app slash admin slash dashboard slash game slash form and then slash form that's it and now we can use it and now here we're going to pass the categories we've already done that and now i'm going to pass the game data as well and then for the game data i'm just going to call it game and then this is going to get the game data like so if we go to the game form now we've already passed categories previously so we can do the drop down if you remember gain okay gain we're not getting in anything here. We need to put game. Say it. Okay. Now the categories we have already. And this is, by the way, this is now the update form because we just inserted the form here. And we should have all of the data available for us to do whatever we like. For example, what I wanted to show you first of all, if we go here, let's try to display all of this. So I'm going to do json.stringify and then here i'm gonna do game data no and two save it and now you should see that we're getting the entire game here uh to make it a little bit prettier we can put it in the container like so so it doesn't go all the way on the screen and now as you can see we have all the data for this specific game if i was to go back and i don't know where my button is yeah it's here now but if i was to go back and click on this secondary game here you see that we are getting the second game here asterisk which is great so now what we can do is insert those values into our form so when we click save uh it updates them so maybe you don't want to update the title we'll just leave as it is and so on to do this let's go back and we've already done most of the hard work here we need to find our form and then because we already have the categories we just need to grab the game from here so let's grab game the game data and now we have the game data in here and we can grab game and let's start from the top here so for the file upload we've already handled this because we are pretty much somewhere we're pretty much checking here whether we do have a value and if we don't submit a new file then we don't set it so we can leave as it is this won't update but for the rest 
let's go down a little bit more, upload game, same. But here we need to start changing the default value. So here, instead of game title, we now put game from the database title. Perfect, save this and go back. And as you can see straight away, we have the title. Awesome. Then we go down and maybe we can put comma just so this doesn't break. But now I'm going to copy this, go to the slug here and put game.slug. Uh, this is going to be description. So game.description. So category. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more difficult. So essentially, let's have a look. So this particular game is arcade. Okay. So let's find a game that is not okay because this is the first value. Um, are they all arcade? Yeah, they're all arcade. Maybe this one. Maybe this one here. Uh, this one is Atari. Okay, perfect. So let's go to another one, which is Atari. So I don't want this to be the first value. I want to see whether this works. So we need this to light up instead. In order to do this, we can do category. Tato is what we're going to display at the end. But let's remove this for now. And let's do category ID. Dot ID. If this is equals game dot no, categories. And we select the first object and the ID. Or if game dot categories. First object is the same as the title. Then we display the category title. So a little bit hard to understand this one, I guess, but uh, now, okay. And the reason that this isn't working is because we don't have a default value here. So we need to change it. So game dot categories, copy this categories. We select the first object and then dot the ID. So now the default value should come from the database and it should select the value from all options. Let's have a look. And I think now if I go back to this one here, we are getting Atari as you can see, and this is because this is coming from the database. And if I go to Cadillacs and Dinosaurs, it's going to put a case, but this is also the first option, which is kind of like hard to see. But yeah, Nintendo 64, which means that this is also working. Now for published and private, let's do that next. Let's go down. And we can't actually set this because if you were to set this, we'll have to use use state because radio buttons work a little bit weird. So I would rather put, I didn't really think of this, but I'd rather put something like game dot, uh, published. Let's have a look. I'd rather put, I'd rather set this game dot, uh, question mark dot published to be something like this. Or, or we can put it as non-published. So this is true or false, basically. And then not published. I'd rather set it like this because otherwise we'll have to use US effect and all that. Uh, it doesn't look very nice here. But yeah, maybe you can style it a little bit better. Save it here. But as you can see, uh, maybe we can say this game is published. One second. This game was published. This game was, is not published. Maybe we can do something like this. It saves us writing new state and messing around with the inputs, but they will still work to be fair. Okay, we are pretty much done now. The only thing that we need to do is to save this. And the last thing that we need to do here inside the form is to pass the ID to the actions. So earlier I said that when we update a game, we can do it through the ID here. So we're going to have to pass the ID. And when we do, when we pass the ID from the form, then we can say, okay, if this does have ID, then we can update the game. If it doesn't have ID, then we're creating a new one. To pass the ID, we can go to the form here and we can add hidden input pretty much anywhere in the form. I'm going to add it here at the top. This is going to be a normal input with the type of text. The ID is going to be game ID. The name is going to be game ID, and this is how we're going to grab it. The class name is going to be hidden. And then the default value is going to be coming from the database as game question mark dot ID. That's it. 
that's how we pass it. This needs to be self closing tag. Save it, and now we should be able to get the game ID inside our actions right here at the top by doing form data dot get, and then inside here we put game ID. Now, if the ID exists, this code is gonna run. We check, and now we can update the game. So let's have a look at what we need to do. So let's start with await prisma dot game and then dot update. And then inside here, we're going to do where or ID. So ID is equals pass int like so. And we'll put the ID and um, we put it like that. So if this is a string, we convert it to an ID. And then we just pass the game data. Just like before, we grab it from here, all of the data from the form. So game data, sorry, it's going to be data. And then we pass the data inside here and that's it. We can now update it, but also we need to trigger the upload thumbnail function just in case we have an image. So await upload thumbnail and we need to add the file. So uh, this was thumbnail file and then await upload game and then file now game file. That's it. And then we need to revalidate the path. So this refreshes the form and it gives us some sort of message. So revalidate and then we revalidate the same URL. And the last thing that we're going to do here is to return something. So I'm going to copy this return here, paste it, and then I'm going to say return success. And then let's say game has been updated. And then we can put this as green something that CSS understands because this was in last style. If I was to remove this from the form, we'll remove this from the form later on. So we have, let's go back. So we click on Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. We say we want to update the title and we put one, two, three and click published, save. Game has been updated, status success, color green. Great. Let's go back here. Now look at the Cadillacs and Dinosaurs. Let's refresh and we get Cadillacs and Dinosaurs one two three let's try another one i'm gonna do and as you can see when i go back this broke the image and this is purely because we'll need to replace all of the images on our website to come from the s3 bucket which is normal now the euro will not be the same but that's absolutely fine let's try to update asterisk i'm gonna put new new description published save And this keeps bringing cat and dot uh, game dot zip. So we probably messed that up. So let me have a look. Yep. We messed that up because I had it here. Sorry about that. That needs to be removed. And now if I go back, let's go and update this. So if I save this and refresh, this should stay the same, the cat and the zip, because they have not changed. But if I upload new ones, so let's upload a new one. And I'm gonna just click on this new game and then I'm gonna select Mario for example just because I don't have another one. Oh no, De demo game will be fine, it's different. Now save this, saving, all saved, you should be able to see that uh, image changed in here and then the game URL also changed in here. If I refresh it, you'll see that they changed which is awesome and now if I go to the bucket, hopefully in the ROMs we'll have the demo game, we do. Hopefully in the thumbnails, we have the new game here. One thing that I have to mention is that if you insert an image with exactly the same name, it will just replace it. So I just insert a new game. And if you look at the date at the moment, it's 12, 24, 51, 24, 51. Remember this. Now, if I put another one, the same name and publish it, let's refresh this and this should change. So what I'm trying to say is here we go 25. So what I'm trying to say is that you need to have unique names for the JPEGs and the files because they will be replaced. Now it will be a lot more complicated to uh, get the names from the S3 bucket and do the same thing as we've done for the slug to check whether it exists and so on. But that's gonna be a lot more work and I don't wanna do that. Saying this, we're pretty much done. The last thing that we could do is to create or delete function somewhere. 
let's go back to the form it's not gonna look pretty but i'm just gonna add one just after this form and this is gonna be form action and then equals this is gonna be delete form action the method here is gonna be just post it's gonna be a little bit different we're gonna have an input which is just gonna be a type of hidden and then this is gonna have the name of game id and maybe i should have done this for the top one as well but then it doesn't matter so value is going to be equals the game dot id from the database so we can delete this specific record let's close this and now we need a button it's not going to be very pretty but i'm just going to say the type of submit and then this is going to say delete game maybe let's save this it will break because we don't have this function that's fine let's create it so we need to go to actions and uh, maybe at the bottom this is getting wild maybe at the bottom here export async function delete form action and then the form data here we're grabbing and now delete logic here before we do the delete logic here we need to Im insert import this so at the top of our file here where we have the create game form we can do delete form action and that's it so now if i go down here and if we go to the website we have the lead game this could be changed to something else maybe like class name of 500 text white padding of two and then maybe rounded, large, text, small, and make it a little bit better, maybe move it somewhere else. But other than that, it should work. So let's save this and let's go to the action now and let's do the logic. So for the logic, we're gonna first of all to check if we get any form data. So if you don't get a form data, I'm just gonna throw an error. You can handle this a little bit better now. And then I'm gonna say, no form data received if we get the id const id is equals form data dot get and we're getting the game id from here and now we can do if we don't have an id then throw a new error and we're gonna say game id is missing and you can make these better by the way and now we can do lastly await prisma dot game dot delete and then inside here we can select which game we want to delete so where id is passing and then id and that's it now we should be able to delete the game and we can redirect back to the dashboard to the dashboard slash dashboard like so and save it okay so now let's go to a game that i do not want so all of these are broken so new game here let's delete it gone id of 17 here let's delete it gone 16 let's delete it gone and so on here as you might notice the images are broken and this is purely because we're gonna have to i didn't know what image provider i'm gonna be using would have to go back to those images and just replace them pretty much on our entire website it's not actually that bad if you go to we've only got like a couple of pages so if you go to dashboard and then uh no, dashboard we need to go source app admin dashboard and then page inside here where we have the images so essentially the best thing that we could do is to grab our CloudFront URL. So I'm going to go to CloudFront, this one here. And then this is going to be our CloudFront URL. And I think the best thing to do is to pretty much put this as an environment variable. Maybe we can put it as next public image underscore source. And this is going to be equals HTTP and then the URL. And then essentially we can grab this and replace uh the if you go to the dashboard here super quickly sorry about that and we can replace this with the process so dollar sign process dot env and then dot 
next public image source. We need to close this and then we have the slash here and then we have the image name from the database. So now if I save this, potentially um, invalid source prop on image host name not configured under images in your next it actually is configured so this is i'm actually glad that i'm getting this so let's have a look i'm gonna go to next config yeah it's because i put https and we've got as the protocol here so let's save this do i need to refresh manually maybe okay so now as you can see we have a central place where we can control or see the ennis and if you ever change it you can change it from here and it's going to work through the entire website and as you can see now these are the images that work which are actually coming from our cdn and those no longer work because obviously you can't find them in our s3 bucket technically speaking if i go back to the website we will have to replace some of the images luckily for us there are not many and as you can see they're already broken here so if we if i was to go to the component and then maybe game category here. I would do exactly the same thing as here. I would replace it to process dot env dot and then the public image source here. And then we'll probably need slash save it. And now we have the cat. The cat is a little bit bigger than what it should be. And I guess this is also wrong. 339197. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, the image is a little bit too big, so that will need to be fixed. But you get the point now if I upload a new game. Let's do that super quickly. I'm going to go and open this in a new row. So login dashboard. So let's create a new game. Let's call it. And we are getting an error here because this does not exist. Okay, let's fix this. Put a question mark here and drop them. And yeah, we're going to have to put question marks everywhere because they do not exist. And game ID. Yep, let's find that as well. Uh, game ID here is fine, but this one is question mark. So because they don't exist when we create a new record, obviously it's going to break. Uh, so you have to put the question mark. Okay, finally, let's put a new game and i'm gonna try to find the super mario from here so so public public game let's put this one here i'm gonna grab it all right so now let's try to add a new game uh let's select the game here i'm gonna put this super mario one so new mario new Super Mario. This is Super Mario. I believe that Super Mario needs to be Nintendo 64. Published. Make sure that we import a file for Super Mario and then save it. And by the way, you could check whether you get an ID and remove this button because it's out of place here. Game has been added. Let's go back. Now we have Super Mario in here. I'm not sure why the image is not showing. Did I select it super mario 64 yeah let's go back to the s3 bucket mario is here thumbnail super mario is here so it must be something else if i refresh this uh maybe go to nintendo 64 we have new super mario here and it seems to work here is the picture as well and if i click on it we should start playing Okay, it's all working, as you can see. It should start playing in a second. Here we go. And I'm not so sure why the Mario didn't work here. One second. So if we go to the dashboard one more time, make sure that you save this. It's because I put, I've put the full year around here, but then if you look at the bucket, GitHub bucket, we do have a folder called thumbnail. And I reckon that's what is breaking. So you, you can't find the image basically. So thumbnail and then game.image. And now if we go back here. Yep. So now our image is working. But why did it work here? So let me have a look. Um, surely that shouldn't work. So that should be like thumbnail. Maybe it was, maybe it's cached. But who knows? But yep. Seems to work now anyways. That's pretty much it. I'm going to close everything.
just as an add-on here, I was thinking that when we edit a already created record, so for example, New Super Mario, we can definitely display the image inside here and we can definitely display the file that has been already selected in the database. Obviously, we can remove the JSON from here. So let's do that super quickly. If I go back to the Explorer source app admin dashboard and then game, it would be then Slack, open the page here and we can come and add the JSON. Stringify here. So this is the first thing that looks a lot better. And now if we go to the form and then form.jsx from here where we have the thumbnail, maybe above it, we can display the image just so we can see it. So in this case, it's going to be image and then source. For the source, we're going to go to the .env file here and grab the next public image source. And then inside here, we can do curly brackets in single slide and quotes. We can do dollar sign and then we can bring the process dot env dot and then the next underscore public underscore image underscore source and then our folder was called thumbnail. And then we need to bring the name from the database. So dollar sign curly brackets game question mark dot image. Make sure that you close this tag, give it an old if you wish of let's say game question mark dot title and then give it a width and a height and now as you can see i have the image of super mario here of course you can style this a little bit better let's give it a class name and just push margin bottom to four and then round it off medium for example save this go back and this looks a little bit better now those boxes are way too big and the size isn't correct but uh, what you can do is for the for the box here, maybe we can just make it a little bit smaller. And then for the size, it's only a text here. It doesn't matter too much. You can upload whatever you like. But 258 times 150, it's going to be something around there. And now this is going to be a lot smaller. And then for the upload file, we can do something similar. Maybe where we have the upload file here, we can do curly bracket game and then dot question mark and then dot game underscore url and then for this maybe we can just put file and then you can start this however you like and then this can be 40. save it and now we should be able to get the file here from the database which is great this is looking good and the last thing that i'm going to show you is if we go back let's say we click on add new game of course, we can't really delete this. Potentially, there are two ways of doing it. If you don't pass an ID, maybe you can check for the button and just hide it. And also, you can do the same thing for the image here. Uh, as you can see, it just appears as broken. So for the image, I'm just going to show you super quickly. So you can do this uh, in multiple ways, but I'm just going to do curly brackets, game, question mark, dot image. And then I'm going to do question mark. And then we need to grab this. And then inside here, we're going to do, so if the image exists, we display the actual image. But if it doesn't, we can, whoops, we can display a message here saying paragraph, no image available and save this. So this is a very basic way of doing it. As you can see, no image available. But if I go to a record where the image is available, you will see that it works. And you can do the same thing for the delete button and so on and the last thing that i want to mention is that if you go to public super quickly and have a look at the uh, images for example categories you could potentially go to your s3 bucket create a new folder here so create folder and you can call it category create the folder and then inside here, you could potentially drag, so category, you could potentially drag the categories and then you just have to replace the URL just like I have inside here on the front end and then you can deploy your project and that would be fine. When you deploy your project, make sure that you transfer all of your .env files to your hosting provider and then obviously when you choose a database, you're just going to replace the URL of the database here and then you can just do Prisma Migrate and if you need to see the database, you do Prisma Seed to the new one and that's pretty much it. If you wish to, I could make another tutorial to show you how easy it is to for this to publish. So that's going to be everything from this tutorial. I hope that you found it useful. If you did, 
please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. So some of the areas in this project are a little bit rough, but you can always use AI to help you improve some of the sections, some of the error handling and so on. But anyways, I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you make something cool, make sure that you share with me and the community. Thank you and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Bye.